We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure... Okay, we are live. <laughs> Sorry. So, I think we're live anyway. I never can tell when we've gone live and when we haven't gone live, because so I don't watch the live feed. So, But uh, this is our weekly hangout on firearms, rights, laws, everything in between, everything that's firearm related. Uh, we've got quite a few new faces on the panel tonight. Or the video roundtable. So I want to start off by going left to right and letting everybody, everybody introduce themselves and state whether you have a YouTube channel or not. Hey, I'm the P38 pilot. I just started up uploading videos on my channel tonight. Are you actually a pilot? No. <laughs> False <laughs> advertising. Yeah, P38. <laughs> I am the Animal Jones. No one cares about you, so we'll move on to me. And I am <laughs> Marshall. <laughs> Damn. All right, Texas. Uh, I'm Texas Surplus Pro, and I do have a channel. I am Young Gun Garage, and I do have a channel. I assume it's called Young Gun Garage. It is called Young Gun Garage. That is absolutely correct. Don't look for anything too entertaining right now. That's well, I'm sound. never enough ammo, and I've thought about making a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> You've got one. It just sucks. Yeah. And uh, I'm a Strict Nine noob, and that's my channel as well. And I just put my first one up today. All right, I'm uh, the Hellbilly Customs. Uh, I have no videos on my channel right now uh, since I'm actually in South Korea right now. Better than being in North Korea, I guess. Yeah. Are you, where are you at? South where, Korea. Where, where in South Korea? Uh, up in north. north. Oh, so you're not near Seoul or anything, then? How hard uh, would it be to get a North Korean bayonet? Uh, you know, if we have to go over there, I'll get one. I'll send you some cheese. Go trade some North Korean for some bayonet for some cheese. <laughs> if it actually comes to that, you won't. You, if, it, if it comes to that, you won't have to go over there. They'll just be walking over to the border and handing them to you as they surrender. So, <laughs> oh, so I figured you that's why I can get some Chinese AKs too. So, no, they have their own AKs. They have some really cool variants though. Mm -hmm. Can't wait for those parts kits to hit the market. That'll be awesome. Awesome. All right, Creeper, you're up. Hey, this is uh, Stone Guy Two Two Three. I have a channel. I'm just uh, got some videos up. We'll start putting some more out there. So uh, stay tuned. Appreciate you guys watching. All right, I guess it's my turn. One bad marine. Somebody just locked it in on strict nine. Okay. Well, no, I was just. I was just uh, I was just muting him. There was a lot of background noise. Okay. Mute yourself. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So I'm one bad marine. Uh, I do have a couple videos up. I am looking for input from my subs for new ideas on new content to put up. So send me a PM. It might help me out. Mm. Okay. Well, since uh, now that everybody has introduced themselves, uh, does anybody in the topic in the con in the uh, Comments have a topic. Anybody on the round table have a topic they want to talk about? I'm sure there's lots of people have questions about what's going on in the Senate. I'm sure they have other questions about other gun laws, all kinds of stuff. Someone keeps asking me about my appearance in uh, Ab Superman's video today. I have not seen the video, so I can't really comment on it yet. <laughs> well, why don't you why don't you start us off with the Senate thing, uh, maybe because you you still always be uh, up to speed on what's going on, so you probably know better well, than we to do. Be honest, I have not paid any attention yesterday or today to what's you know. I don't think anything's happening today, of course, but I haven't paid attention. But a lot of people were panicking about thinking that the power that's the the there were certain factions that wanted to portray what happened as oh we've passed a hurdle we've shown that we have more of a chance than everyone thinks we did, and that's not what happened at all. All that happened the other day where a lot of people voted on having a discussion because a lot of people came to the conclusion that not having the discussion was political suicide because you would just be labeled as the party that did not let the families of these slain children speak. You didn't let them have their day in court, so to speak. So they decided it's better to talk about it first and then vote against it. You know, Now that doesn't mean, you know, like, whoo, it's over. It's not over. You know, you still got to pay attention because, you know, they lie. 
So even the ones that say they're not going to vote for it could vote for it. But uh, its chances of passing are almost nil. Its chances of passing the Senate, even the left in the Senate says that they have a very small chance of getting it passed there. Passing in the House is almost non-existent. So, and it's much better for this to come for a, to, for a vote and fail than it is to be filibustered or anything like that, because if it's filibustered and doesn't come to the floor, they'll just rally, try to demonize those that uh, stood against it, and bring it back. Yeah, we don't want it to be a mi mi miter, a miter. Martyr, Martyr, yeah. yeah. I would rather see it voted on and failed than I would see it filibustered. Well, I can't say I've heard that perspective on it yet, but I like it. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's you know... What would the Republicans have to gain by filibustering it? All that would come as midterm elections is they were the party that denied these people their day in court, that wouldn't even listen to the, the families of slain children, that I, I, cared I, more I, about the NRA than they did these families. I wholly agree, but there was a little egg on the face in that they said they were going to filibuster it and they didn't follow through with it. So you got well, sort of two sides the, of the same sword that they. Well, only certain the, the parts party, parts the party didn't say they were going right. to filibuster yeah. it. A few grandstanders that want their own personal have their own personal agendas and mm -hmm. like people like Paul who want their that want to be a superstar even though they have no merits to be a superstar. Right. Said they want to filibuster it, but those guys are playing their own game for their own personal gain. So. Could it become an executive order? No, the president does not have that kind of power. Uh, what was that? What was that term they used when he wasn't doing executive orders? Well, they they use some other term for it, but it is a, it actually the term they use is a recognized legal constitutional term. It's just a little different than executive order. Right. But it's the same thing. An executive yeah. directive or yeah. memorandum or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. It's like a, it's basically the same principle, so it's not really yeah. any big difference, but. Well, one of them could be blocked by Congress, and the other one could not. I think that did differentiate it a little bit. But also, you got to remember, the, the President of the United States, is under executive order, can only exercise powers granted to him already by Congress. He can't do anything that is outside the powers of his office already. Right. So he can't enact gun laws mm -hmm. through executive order. Even when they did it under Bill Clinton, he couldn't. People have this mistaken and you still see people today that think that the, the original assault weapons ban was an executive order. No, it wasn't. It was passed by Congress, you know, and signed by the president. The only aspect of it that was done by executive order dealt with importing of certain items, and that's yes. the only thing the president can affect is importing. Yeah, but, there, I mean, he does have some influence, because when he tells directors of administration, this is the way I want you to go within the discretion of your office, mm -hmm. they've been taking it to the extreme, which some of us don't agree with. But. Yeah. We have to change the rules before that's going to change. Like one thing I think we need to talk about that's really bad that I don't think is getting enough press uh, is the Colorado trying to limit sheriff's powers. Oh yeah, uh, that's a really bad thing because that's this your sheriff is representative of your county. He's like your guard at your door for when your state oversteps its bounds. Mm -hmm. The next person in line of your line of defense is your sheriff. To right. say, no, this is wrong, I won't enforce it, blah, blah, blah. And that's the way it's meant to be. The sheriff is the ultimate legal authority as far as enforcing the law in your county. And they're trying to strip them of that power because the sheriffs are rebelling against the state. So what they're trying to do is consolidate all the power back under the, the governors and the president, you know, the federal and the, and the high state government. Because people that make this distinction between their state government and the federal government, well, you know, that distinction is a dog's hair's width. Because your federal, your state government is in the same bed with the same corporate interests as the federal government, and but unfortunately that doesn't trickle down to the sheriffs and the and the late the the county representatives. So they're trying to strip those representatives of their power. Yep. Yeah, that's it's a dangerous dangerous path that they are on. No. Yeah, unfortunately, a, if they got it through or whatever, there's other places that might try and follow suit. They'll say, oh, look what they did. We can do it, too. Well, if you've been following, um, you know, some of the more left-leaning media, they've been, you know, sort of applauding the efforts by states at the local levels 
and have you know gone so far that reporters are like thanking public officials for doing this, is that this is for the greater good, mm -hmm. which is really frustrating because the the whole the whole concept of like journalism. I'm a journalism major, is to sort of be a watchdog and like look out for the little guy and be a whistleblower, and they're doing the exact opposite, and it's really aggravating to watch. No, that's not what media is. Media now is corporate marketing. Is all yes. media is. And it's they don't hire me, journalists; they hire faces that they think people will listen to, and then they tell them what to say. Oh yeah! If, if you pay attention to even some lawsuits that have been in the last few years, like the journalists that sued Fox News because they were t said they were being forced to lie on air, and the court said, "Well, you know that they own the network; they can lie on air if they want to." And the fact that you don't want to do it, that doesn't mean they can't fire you. Right. Yeah. So. But it, it, I mean, it is, it is amazing, though, just the stances that some of these networks are taking in terms of, like, not equally showing either side of the issue at all. And, I mean, it, it is also interesting to note how low all their ratings are now, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, news ratings have notoriously been low for a long time. It's like when, it's like back when Fox News was getting the high ratings, back when they were getting really high ratings after 9-11. And they're talking about how high their ratings were. Well, if you looked at them, though, their high ratings we're still lower than like the lowest rated sitcom on network television. Oh yeah, Fox News on a good night does like 2 to 4 million. Yeah, so it's like that's, that's still crap call. ratings, you know. <laughs> so it's like yeah. out of the the hundreds well, of millions of people in the country, how many people are that actually watching news? Okay, so I got a question because I don't track that kind of data very much. If that's what they're pulling, what are, are the MSNBCs and CNNs and well, all the other media less than a, pulling? Less, way less than a million people. You got to think oh, there's yeah. hundreds. You got to think there's hundreds of millions of people in this country. Okay, so, so if you extrapolate it to how they I'll, fare I'll, against I'll the rest exactly of people in their market how, segment, are they on the top or are they in the middle? They're on the or CNNs on the bottom. CNN, for example, and Piers Morgan's time slot gets about five hundred thousand viewers on a really good night, which is pathetic. And mm -hmm. 10 years ago, when Larry King had that time slot, had 10 million viewers. Right. I heard he had 8 to 10. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's like we, like I say, people always seem to, they live in their myopic little bubble, and they start to think that everyone is like me. It's the same thing as the people who think, well, there will be a rebellion when they do this. No, there won't, because most people don't think like us. And it's the same thing with the news. We think because we follow the news and we pay attention to what's going on, that most people follow the news and pay attention. Okay, to I got I got a perfect example of that. I walked in. I walk into a Cabela's store. Or on my way into the Cabela's store, there's the the signs up about the you know you can have two boxes of ammo or whatever restriction on ammo because of the ammo shortage. These two people, I'm assuming they're gun people because they were coming in to buy ammo based on the discussion I ever heard as I walked by. They didn't even know there was anything going on, even after we'd had rallies, after it's been in the media and everything else. They, they're like, oh, is there something going on? I mean, they were just totally clueless. Yeah, it's, most you people know? do not follow the news. Most people, if you ask most people, have you watched the news? Here's a, here's a statistic I saw a few years ago, and this was sad. But, I mean, it said that more people got their news from the Colbert Report and... The Daily Show, then all three major news networks combined. Was that mostly targeting young people, though? It was no. It was probably everyone between the age of eighteen and fifty. I think is what the mm. statistic was for. Because um, that more people actually watch the Daily Show and the Colbert Report combined than any shows on the three major news networks combined. Ah, it's so I'll sad. tell you, it was uh, in my my journal or one of my uh, communications club courses. Um, the professor asked, like, how many people in this class actively watch 24-hour uh, news network or the evening news? And literally four of us raised our hands. And then he posed the question, how many of you, like, regularly read a newspaper? Two of us raised our hands out of 120 people. Yeah. But if he just said, how many of you watch The Daily Show? Right, yeah. Then you would have seen half of you would have raised your hands, yeah. <laughs> The only thing that gets really mass coverage is if something goes sideways with a mass shooter, unfortunately. And then everybody's covering even, it. Even that stabbing at Lone Star College actually managed to make the, the national news, but it didn't get nearly as much press. Because it wasn't a gun. Well, because if you start saying, let's ban knives, people are going to freak out. So. Right. <laughs> 
Which is so hypocritical in so many ways, I think. But it's just like... Well, think what, about what? Europe. I mean... Well, holding a knife doesn't make you a killer, but holding a gun does, so... Apparently. That's, fine. that's right. Apparently. Well, the, I, I, if, I didn't, if I got my details right, he was using some sort of either X-Acto knife or one of those extended knives. It was an X-Acto knife. It was a box cutter. I've heard those have replaceable blades, so as soon as they become less than surgically sharp, you can just replace the blade for pennies. You can buy them on the internet. Well, we yeah. should limit those capacities. Hey, down I, I, have, I have... Yeah, I mean, do you need more than three X-Acto blades at any one time? No, I have I have blades that have titanium nitrate titanium yeah, nitrate almost. coating on the edge. Those must be the assault assault blades. What we need to start uh, doing is why do they have to be so sharp? What are you cutting? Saying, we need, need to, to start making so blades that dull a lot quicker. So if you cut two or three people, they go dull, and you can't really cut. People need jobs. We could have sharpeners on every corner. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but if we had people sharpening knives in every corner, wouldn't that increase the likelihood that people are going to stab each other? Well, there'd be deaths everywhere, but we'd have to have more doctors. Huh? Let me tell you one thing, though. If holding a gun makes you a killer, then my mother was right, and I'm not good at anything, because I have a gun every day, and I ain't killed anybody yet this this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guns <laughs> cause crime, then mine's broken. Yeah, mine are defective. I'm oh, going to yeah. take them all back. I shot my AR-15 today and didn't oh, kill anybody. Did you get a video of it? Yeah, actually, I did. Good. I Good. Is it worth posting? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure that part out, you know. So. I've never understood the mentality of people that will come on and go, post a video of you shooting your gun. I've never seen anybody <laughs> shoot a gun before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, would you also like to watch a video of me knocking a tennis ball against the wall for half an hour? Because it's just about as exciting. <laughs> Some of us are better at it than others, so they want to see the better people. <laughs> So check this out. I always relate everything in my everyday stuff to firearms, but we were out at a, a what do you call it, a state sale, and somebody asked somebody else to grab a sticker gun, but all that the group heard was gun, and all the people there started looking around or whatever, and then one of the people that worked for the estate company or whatever says, oh, we don't have real guns here, you know, that would be bad or, you know, whatever. I was hoping you had guns so I could buy one because I've been looking for one all day. <laughs> and yeah. the people looked at me like I was crazy or something, you know? They thought you were trying to kill them. Yeah. I don't I know what would happen if I told them I was crazy. Carrying. So I had been if looking I told too. them I was carrying two guns at the time, they'd have probably called the police on me or some shit. Yeah. That's the estate sale loophole. Yeah. 40% of all guns are trafficked that, traffic that way. Mm -hmm. I had to resort to using my uh, emergency carry gun today because I left the house today without putting a holster on. So. Get the one out of your trunk? So you just carry it around your hand all day? I've done no, that. No, I just got the... I've got my Smith & Wesson M&P 40 compact in the car in an 8-square tactical holster, so I just slipped that in my waistband and went. What condition is it if instead of even holstering, you just carry a gun in your hand all day? <laughs> that's better than tactical I think that's, that's way that's more tactical than that's condition probably, that's probably tactical condition felony in most yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well actually I think theoretically until you scare somebody or create panic or alarm you'd be okay yeah, you just gotta be you careful not to point with it and more. stuff well, see, that's what they do in Portland since they kitten outlaw open carry like they tried to do because they were told that nope that's a federal state law and you can't override state law with your city law Mm -hmm. So what they started doing is every time anyone carries a gun in Portland, they just they start disturbing, disturbing the peace. Yeah, yeah. I haven't uh, done it over there, but I feel like doing it one of these days just for GP. We've got a community like that in Ohio in this area that's very um, wealthy, and it's it's a good community. But yeah, they they have been known for uh, similar acts of disturbing the peace, um, and they they stick to that when they see something along those lines. I just, I just want to, you know, we kind of made a little pun on the uh, loophole to, there, but you know, I was, I was going to tell you guys that initially when this whole thing started, even as big of a gun advocate as I am, I was kind of okay with the, uh, with the universal background when I first heard about it because in my area, or with the, with the, what they're calling the gun show loophole, because in my area, it's just common practice uh, for these thugs to go to gun shows and find dealers. That is uh, extremely insensitive of you to call them thugs. Well, 
<laughs> don't hurt their feelings. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when I when I go to the well, go but show, until you... somebody cause, does actually does something what? wrong, though, they're still citizens. So, but yeah. still, let's get it yeah. straight, though. Even though he thinks they're thugs, I'm sure I'm sure he still thinks they're very very sexy. <laughs> Creeper. Creeper. Yep. Jesus, I'm never, never going to live that down. No. Nope. It's hot. I can't help you. You send me text messages like, wouldn't you want to do this, this, and this? And I'm just like, no. <laughs> what every, is that? I've never what figured out yet why every. I've never figured out yet why every PM he sends me starts with, what are you wearing? <laughs> I, hey, Yan Yankee, I told you you're a very Did attractive you? man. So everybody knows he's attractive. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. I, I just I wait. I, you know, I, I wait for the day that you do another video in women's clothing. Hey, there's one coming up, so don't wait. Don't have to wait too long. Oh, but anyway, getting back to the point, what I was going to say is, um, you know, when I see when I see these guys that, and and yes, I'm profiling. Sue me. But when I see these thugs go in there and they, they, they seek out private dealers so that they can purchase a gun without a background check, uh, without even presenting ID in some cases, um, it's, it's frustrating to me as a law-abiding citizen to see this go down. And it's like, well, shit, man, if I have to get a background check and I have to abide by the laws, I feel like everybody should have to. But now, on the flip Hold on side... There. A lot of the, half the reason to go into a gun show, though, is to buy from just regular people and not have to it's be restricted to so buying from a shop. So literally the same thing you're saying about those guys is the reason half people go to shows. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, and that's and that after listening to you guys talk and I, and then Yankee brought up a good point about well, if if they did pass this and the um the thug or the gang members j had their girlfriend who was legal to buy just buy it and then hand it off to them, you know, regardless if it was a straw purchase or not, the criminals break laws, but, you know, that would completely bypass the the law right there. So well, that a lot of criminals thinking, just have their girlfriends or whoever walk into a gun store who have clean records, buy them exactly. a gun. Exactly. And so I well, think like about people that are like, I'm going to be a criminal next week, so first I need to get my gun illegally, right? No, that's not how it happens. People mm -hmm. buy guns and then... You know, bad or things happen and people become just, criminals. Like I did a video just, just last night. On, I did a video on that just last night where I took, I took, I looked at like four or five different studies on how criminals get their guns, and you know, some of them, most of them said, you know, a lot of people make the mistaken assumption that the number one way they get their guns is theft, but that's usually not. Usually, most of these studies show theft is like the third or fourth most most popular way they get their guns. The other ways were. Uh, the first way that they get guns, the most common way, is a straw purchase. Guns that are used in crimes. Uh, that you track those back, there were straw purchases, which is an illegal act already. So someone's already willing to break the law to get that. They're not talking like straw purchases like gifts. They're talking like where they, a criminal actually has someone else perform the act for them because they know they can't. Not just, you know, someone bought a gun for their husband and so their husband went crazy later and shot somebody. That's not a straw purchase. Uh, the second most popular way was uh, unscrupulous dealers. Dealers that sell for profit and, break and violate federal law. Uh, that's usually, I think that statistic comes mainly from the ones that are willing to do that for like the major cartels and stuff. So that's kind of a pumped up statistic because most of those guns are going across the borders and stuff. See, I don't see how that happens. You, anybody who's been to a gun shop or oh, knows anybody at a gun shop, you got to log every book or a gun coming in and every gun going out. So if you're getting yeah, it from a distributor or a manufacturer or wherever, wholesaler, they're going to yeah, have it yeah. out on their books. So you're saying some gun shop is going to be like, oh yeah, oh, yeah I'm missing has, 300 guns. The ATF has done, the, uh, if you read the study, there are stings where they cite stings as examples where as many as three, 500 guns are not accounted for. Yeah, I know people so, that are importers that have thousands and hundreds of thousands of yeah. guns, though, so it's not hard for 300 barreled actions to be misplaced yeah. in a you know, warehouse yard full of guns. But these, are, but these aren't, these aren't of guns. situations of guns being misplaced. These are unscrupulous people, ATF catching them, selling, hey, here's 500 guns under the radar, you know, here's the cuffs. Las Cruces, New Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. Three so, gun shops got busted selling guns to illegals to cross the border. Yep. So I mean, two years ago. But the point is, that's already illegal. Right. And, you know, that's not like right. that's going to be stopped by universal background checks. And it's, it's not stopped by anything that's already in place. Here, yeah. here, I got something to bring up about the whole background check thing or whatever. And it doesn't have to be a huge part of the conversation. But what about the fact that the NICS is voluntary for the states right now and not even mandatory? So that's awesome. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm okay with thing. that. Most states I know, do their I know own it's thing a great and... thing, but that isn't brought up as they go towards making it yeah, a but do we... mandated thing. Nobody's saying, hey, it's not even the, you know, what we have isn't already mandated and the, not all the states are participating. So, you know, why do you have to go there? You should be saying that people are free and we've been free for as long as we've been a country now to, to own property. And now you're mm -hmm. telling us that because of some orchestrated uh, panic that we can't own the property that we've been able to own freely for all this time. That's the issue. Yeah, I, I do totally agree with you. Julie. There's no way to button up NICS without all the things that we all fear, registration and, uh, you know, here, numbers here's, and here's, lists here's, of people. Well, here's a better better way to look at it uh, or get my point across. How about the fact that they're blackmailing the states with funding withholding or whatever to get the ones that are participating to use the NICS in the first place? Maybe that would be a better topic of discussion. Well, my know. favorite part was The that. only states that don't use NICS right now think that NICS isn't stringent enough, though. So the states that aren't using NICS is because they've got even more yeah, we have uh, elaborate here. stuff, <laughs> more strict <laughs> The, the bill, as it sits, the Schumer bill, increases, it's a, it will cost taxpayers about $400 million over the course of three to four years to give grants to states so they'll improve the NIC system. So, you know, here's something I wouldn't mind them doing. I don't like this whole mandatory backgrounds thing for private sales, but if they wanted to use some taxpayer money to set up a 1-800 line that if when I wanted to sell a gun to someone, you can call that 1-800 line punch in their information and it'll tell you if they're a felon or not. Right. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I, I, That's cool. I, was, That's I, think it, I think that they could set it up at the you know at least one in every county or whatever, a place mm -hmm. where you can go and just type into the computer and it, it can't give you any details about the person, but if they you put it in just their, say, it'll just say yes they are say yes or no. It'll just, just like say yes they're, they're a resident just have a computer terminal just open for use just, just for that. Yeah, you just put in their, their information and then, you know, that they willingly give to you if mm -hmm. they're buying a gun from you. And if they don't, then you could have reason to choose not to sell to them. Right. Uh, but, uh, but let's face it, if you're willing to sell to them without checking them out, you're probably willing to violate the law of sell to them anyway. So then does that machine print out a receipt that's notarized with a timestamp or something? No, or you could just, uh, you, you, could, you could either get it in for the information could be mailed to you or, right. you know, like, you know, you, it generates a... Something with the address on it that's mailed to you automatically. You know that states this person. And all it would have to state is this person is legally able to possess a firearm in this state. But they build so, that like a web page. It sounds to me like for that to exist, it would They'd immediately create what you were afraid of uh, with the universal no, no, background no, 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 no We're not talking guns. We're not talking any numbers on no, the guns. No, I'm talking about. The, the the situation that you keep bringing up when we talk about the universal background no, checks, because where not, now where's your receipt for this gun? Where did you no buy this gun? There's no requirement of that. It's right. it's it's man, we're doing it's, this it's, without the requirement. It's I not think our legal is the requirement. argument. We're it's, something, it's a tool that we could use as sellers right. to cover our oh. asses. Yeah. Right. Okay, I didn't hear that that, that part. Yeah. Uh, not something that's like required by law, something that's just something we could use as a tool. Like like I said earlier when I mentioned, and I always give away my next videos on these chats. I always just talk in detail about what my next video is going to be. Right. So, so my next video is like, why not give felons red driver's license? Okay, so here's so one. Now, I want to keep going with that, though, because I think it's important to not give them an inch, and, and I think I see a, a bad a negative thing to that thing that you guys are creating. Or that I, you know, that, that theoretical thing where you can check someone. Now they know how many guns you're buying because they're sending something to your house. Huh? Correct. We're not doing it at a house. No, we're no, talking no, about no. Setting up, uh, You just said they were going to send the information to your house. Doesn't have anything to do anything with a gun. There's no gun listed. One gun, ten guns, fifty guns, Smith and Wesson, Taurus. Nothing. It'd just be a station all where it's, you could. All it states is this person checked you to see if you are a resident in this state with not a felony right. record. Right. Yeah, and you could do a bill of sale okay. yourself after that yeah. if you want paperwork. Okay, so here's here's a question I want to put out to the community. In the there doesn't even have to be a receipt because once I hand someone a gun and I know they're not a felon, well, then it's not going to come back on me to sell them for a felon because they weren't a felon when I transferred that gun to them. No, do they have to have like a driver's license that you scan or something? Because then what's to stop a felon from heard. saying it's his brother? Well, there's th that's not your fault. Okay. Yeah, you're acting in good faith, and you're checking somebody out. Right. You know, you can ask them for a driver's license there. I never sell any. Someone doesn't show me photo ID, you ain't buying a gun from me unless I've I, known you for years. Hey, I, I helped yeah. get a guy deported, and he had four, you know, what would be considered four lawful pieces of identification with his picture and different names on it. He happened to be of Hispanic descent. Yeah. But uh, 
Sometimes no, you forget your name. You stand in line again at the driver's license. Yeah. <laughs> but now here's a here's a question to put out to the community as far as this, you know, dealing with people and the different gun transactions, whatever. And I, it's something I need to look at myself. Is when you do a private transaction, do you check to see if the firearm you're purchasing has been stolen? Because I know that I think our state and Oregon. You know what happens here when you do that? To check it. You can ask the police that, and if it is stolen, they'll say thanks for the gun, and you no longer own the gun, so you just bought well, a gun and gave it to the police. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about beforehand. Before, yeah, right. Before before you actually take possession and pay for it is what I'm I saying. have done that. I, I don't have know done if you're that. able to do that. I, yeah, you can do that here. I've done that twice, both times because the guy was really, really shady that I was buying the gun from, but I really, really wanted the gun because it was a hard-to-find Colt firearm that I wanted. Uh, one time, the gun did come up stolen. Right. The gun came up stolen in uh, uh, Portland, some guy. But yeah. the way reason that I knew it was going to come up stolen already and didn't even have to finish the phone call, as soon as I told him what I was doing, he grabbed the gun and took off. Right. I told that story before, but... As soon as he heard I was calling the sheriff to check the serial number, he grabbed the gun. He, he grabbed the stuff, took off, left the freaking gun. <laughs> and and then hurt. I put the gun in the safe. Uh, you know, I had to run there and I come back. He came back and got the gun, and my stupid employee gave him the gun out of the safe. Right. <laughs> wow. That was when you had your bar or whatever. That was when I had my bar over in Portland. And I had to tell the sheriff my employee gave it back to him. And luckily they were like, well, well you know, you didn't take Someone just left something in your bar and came back and got it legally. You're not responsible for that. So right. I was like, well, thank goodness. Because I was scared I was going to get charged with possession of a right. oh, Traffic, <laughs> Trafficking and stolen firearms, even though you didn't intend to. Yeah. Here we have to go through a private uh, FFL. We do private bar transfer, so I don't really have to worry so much here about sure where? Uh, California. Sorry so let's, 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 let's take all this. Uh, and wait 10 you, days. If you took all the. the Possibility of of a uh, backdoor registration, and like Yankee was saying, where if they if the bill if they passed a bill, it would it would make you a felon by proxy if you couldn't you know produce paperwork showing that you had you know purchased this firearm. If they just made a a, a singular focused bill requiring everybody that purchases a firearm from a private individual to be to have a background check, would you guys be a Opposed to that? Yes, hundred percent. Yeah. And I have a question: Who's to say you can't? If you have these, no, how are they going? To, and how are they going to get? How are they going to record that you actually ran a background check on somebody? No, it would be require require you go to, going through an FFL. That's there what I'm saying, be, and that that yeah. sets up the whole scenario that I stated right. before. Okay, I want to put something out there about this. You know, people going to the FFL thing or whatever. I know a I know a gun dealer up north. He said in the last year they'd gone through his books three or four times and recorded every single transaction that he'd had to take back with them. This is you know the ATF or whatever, whoever's <laughs> monitoring them. And uh, you know so to, so I mean as much as they say oh if you do a next check or whatever it's not going to be held. But the FFL transactions are being recorded, and they are gathering it. I, well, the FFLs have they to can they gather it, and you're in a border state, right? You're in Washington. Yeah. Well. See, and the well, problem welcome is, to a border the company state. has to hold it for 20 years, right? A minimum of 20 years. Right. The problem, the problem with what Kevin was talking, or uh, uh, Creeper That's or Stoner guy was talking about earlier was. Uh, <laughs> no, it's Stoner guy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I well, thought, I thought that was his name forever. I thought his he name was that. Stone Guy forever. So it is it's Stone. Better than, it's better stone than Creeper Guy. guy. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> the problem with that is like, and I have tried to explain this to so many people, and I've even you know, and I'm like, this is not just coming from me. I'm not this smart. This is from a friend of ours who's a federal court, ju- ex-federal court judge now. Mm-hmm. But he explained to me, and I was we were talking about this concern, and he validated it. And he's like, yes, it's very much this is a concern because if they get it set as a precedent. That any gun you buy has to go through an FFL. Well, then if they come and they say, "Hey, I thought you, I think you just bought this gun yesterday. Where's your FFL?" If you can't prove it, they can charge you with illegally purchasing a firearm. And then it will, the burden of proof would actually fall to you to prove you bought it before that. And people say, "Oh, no, no, no! You can't ever be charged with a crime that you committed before it became illegal." Well, that's not what they're doing. They're charging you as if you bought it yesterday. And then they say, "Oh, well, the burden of proof can't fall upon you." Really? Have you ever been charged with being in possession of a narcotic? If you can't prove you have a prescription, you're going to jail. 
So the burden of proof I still falls saying, on you to prove that no you have the right. There's and no there's way there's they could write it into the law where they could it's, never they could never do that. They could, but now we'd all have to prove that we bought our guns whenever we bought them at whatever time. And it's creating a criminal loophole against us. As much yes. as they talk about our gun show loopholes and everything else, it's coming. Yeah, all they, they have to do is wing rocks at us. It doesn't matter what they suggest or how like asinine it is or what complicated way they have to come up with to enforce it. They can throw anything at us because they don't know anything about you know the subject. They, they don't know comes, anything and, about and firearms. What it does, is it how they're shift, sold. It shifts the burden to us as the defendant to prove we didn't commit a crime. I mean, I know that happens in a lot of people. Act, people actually think that doesn't happen, but it happens every day in every courtroom in the United States. You know, if you owe a debt and you paid it and you didn't get a receipt, good luck because the court's going to see that as you didn't pay your debt because you didn't get a receipt. Even though you did, it's up to you to prove you did with a receipt. There are laws that require you to re obtain yeah. proper documentation. And there was even in one of my videos, someone came on and said, well, why wouldn't you buy a gun without documentation? If you have a gun that you didn't get documentation for, you deserve to go to jail. And I'm like, see, that's going to be the attitude that's going to be in a lot of people's mind that are on the jury that convict you. Right. This is, this is well, it's on the mind of the people that are supporting these idiots that are voting for this crap. Yeah, and it doesn't, this isn't murder. People keep thinking murder charges where they have to pr prove within a preponderance of the, you know, with, that, with, with no, there cannot be any reasonable doubt for you to be convicted. All they got to do is, they just have to, t in, in a court case like this, all they don't have to, like, this is a murder charge. With, with a uh, charge like this, all they got to do is get to where it goes like this. Right. Okay, they, well, right. there's, a, there's like a 1% more chance that we think he's guilty than innocent. And boom, you're guilty by the jury. Right. Uh, it doesn't even have to go that far. I mean, like, take, look, we'll take our state for example. Let's say I I open carry somewhere. Yes, they in South Carolina, leave. also, if you okay. get caught, no, no, no. Hold on. No, no, I'm answering someone in the thing. If you okay. get caught, if this federal law goes into effect, that will be in South Carolina, also. Don't think you're yeah. immune because of where you're at. Federal law is federal law. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So in our state. Let's say I open carry into a business. They had signage up I didn't see or whatever. They asked me to leave. I tell them, well, your signage sucks, so I don't want to leave. And then I get a trespassing charge. Now, the police are there. They give me the trespassing charge. Then they have my weapon. They're like, well, where did this gun come from or whatever into your scenario? Now they've got me on a criminal charge with a firearm. Now they go to my house, and now I've got... You know, not, not only do I get that charge, but let's say I have four other guns that I can't document under their approved way or whatever. So now I got four more charges on top of what I started with to boot. Yep. And so even it's if probably they, safe to assume at that point they're going to seize all your firearms. And even well, if they know, and here's here's a little thing, and here's one of the things my friend said to me. Uh, he said right now, even if you're 100% innocent and they have no evidence. And you have no evidence. He's like, you'd think in a court of law that would be your word against theirs, and since they can't prove it, you would be innocent because you're innocent until proven guilty. He's like, how hard is it? He said, look at all the cases that have been overturned in the last 10, 20 years because prosecutors use dirty tricks. And these are just the ones that got caught. For every one that gets right. caught, there's 50 that don't. Mm -hmm. He said, so how hard would it be for a prosecutor to say, you know, I've got this guy sitting in jail right now who's wanted on 10 counts of breaking and entering and two counts of assault. I bet you if we broke that down to, you know, trespassing, he'd testify that he sold a gun to this guy yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that, that could very easily happen to you. And then you're fucked because you've got nothing to dispute that. Not, not yeah. that my brother didn't deserve the time in, in jail, but he sat six months getting picked up for somebody else's string of burglaries because he looked a lot like the guy and had a record. Yeah. You know? Well, now what G Web just posted in the uh, in the side chat was kind of a interesting uh, theory or interesting uh, maybe a way around that. It says if the serial number was manufactured before the bill passes, no, you wouldn't. Every if I buy a gun tomorrow, that serial number was probably passed was probably made before the bill passed. Right. Well, and the thing is, it's about possession, not. Like well, some sort of, well, and that's uh, and that's the whole, whole actually, problem. actually, it's not. It is about possession. It's about possession and when you took possession. Right. Those well, are the things so, that are specifically so, in so the law. We had a discussion arm, about this the other day. About the only way to get past a lot of this stuff, especially if they do a grandfather clause, because it's going to set you up for having. How to could you do a grandfather clause? Well, I know it, it's setting it up where you almost have to voluntarily register to 
Right. right. They're going to go, hey, it's no big deal. Just fill out form, blah, 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 to, at your local gun shop. They'll verify okay. that all your guns are owned by you, and you're done. Now, this is where you and can... Now you're, owned, now you're fully self-registered. Now, now here's where Yank and I were talking about this the other night. There is other ways to get around that, and we'd have to get the word out. But you can, for all intents and purposes, make up a list of the guns, a list of what you did them, did with or where you acquired them, and send it to yourself in a um, or, certified or better, yeah. letter that you don't open, and that gives time stamp uh, proof in court. Right. But it's acceptable to, to do it. Or, or better yet, just I'll make a, a list of. Just or better firearms. yet, just make a list of your doc of the, the firearms you own at the time the law passes. Right. Serial numbers, makes models. Take it to a notary, have it notarized, and file yeah. it away. Oh, it seems yeah. like a lot of work. I don't want you guys to worry so much, so I will offer to just take whatever firearms you guys have that you're worried about. Just send them to me. <laughs> we'll take care of those for you. I knew you had an angle on that. Uh, You'll dispose of them legally? Yeah. No, I'll keep them, but... Well, that's well, disposing of them legally. He'll, 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 take, he'll take all the hassles away from us by, by taking it on himself. Yeah. One of videos, you, you'll see them occasionally. I'm going to start a gun cleaning service. <laughs> we'll, I'm going to start a gun you. detailing service where people send their guns to me to be detailed. And then I, in the small print, it says that the fee is the gun. So. <laughs> we return pictures. Uh, yeah. That's a good idea, though, getting it notarized. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nothing notarized is going to hold up in court. You'll, you'll see that all the time. I mean, I know if you see it on Judge Judy or whatever it is all the time where they'll just bring in notification. Even she'll be like, how do I know you didn't write this yourself? Yeah, so. Right. Yeah, that's why we have a notary system to authenticate stuff. I was even, notaries, say, like, even notaries, I mean, I've seen notaries do stuff, and then later on they find out, well, the notary's license wasn't current. Now you're, because their license wasn't current, your document doesn't mean bupkis. So that's yeah. part of the reason I like the send it to yourself program. Or get it notarized and send it to yourself, however you yeah. want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Somebody's well, asking how many notaries would be down with that, but tons of them because, like, everybody's yeah. wife is a notary. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You get, and most of you, most of you out there, if you have a savings account in a bank, you and get free notary service. Right. Yeah, yeah, your mailbox insure, place has a notary, you if you got a car or something, or like, car everybody you know has a notary. Yeah, most, every insurance most, branch has a notary. Most military officers are notaries, so, I mean... In the military, you can just Again, you send me your gun, I will send you back a notarized piece of paper. So yeah, I'm not understanding the that service I'm not understanding the logic behind if a serial number was manufactured before the law that it somehow would protect you. They're thinking of like you know no, a after machine gun that was no. built before the law or something like owning them is okay, but no. Well, yeah, but even those have to be. be but even those have hand. to be registered. If you have a gun that's grandfathered in, like a machine gun that's grand, that, that that's grandfathered in or something, a weapon that's grandfathered in in all these states. Do you think you just get to hang on to it? If they come to you, you get to say, oh, I had this before the law passed? No, it's you okay. have to it's actually go register it. Yeah, well, I think that's what the guy was trying to say, that let's say, just hypothetical, every they get every gun company to make a, the serial number start with J after the law passes. So if they come to check and you have a gun that that's got a J way. serial number, you have to have proof that you... You but what about, the one, that, but what about the one that doesn't have a J that you also just bought yesterday? Well, then, so, according to what this guy's saying, is it would be grandfathered in, and, and it was, should be written no, in the law that there would not, be no not, way they could do that. They're not no, because they don't care about that you own it. They want to know how you got it. Yeah, their grandfather, they they're grandfathering. They're legislating the purchase, not the firearm. It's not like they are that they're illegalizing a certain brand make of firearm. They're illegalizing how you obtain it and how you own it. Which, which I brought up as well would, would cause problems in terms of if you, if somebody owned the firearm for like 40 years, well before the background check system even existed, and there are a large number of firearms in this country that never went, that were just passed down or handed around through family, how do you prove that you legally obtained that without, and like the bill specifies that if you have a gun that was like a family heirloom, that it has to be down, written in that legal binding will that don't you tell, were the one don't that was tell, supposed to don't take tell, Don't tell, are you ready for it, that she'll freak out. <laughs> it's, no. it's in the bill. That's it exactly is. She what it says. She up now, it isn't. But, uh, don't what tell about that. getting They've been uh, changing it by getting, the minute, so it could have been in one version and not another. Out, yeah. Well, this, also, this is on, oh, let me check actually. You're right. Are you it's sitting on your roof? No, I'm outside my front door. <laughs> oh, you crawled out you the window. Wanna, you want to see the, see if we can see the neighborhood a little bit? <laughs> he says he he says he willingly smokes outside. I just think his life doesn't let him do it in the house. 
<laughs> no, I don't smoke. I don't smoke in my truck or the car. I do smoke in my Jeep that I work in, but it's a work vehicle. You know, the bill damn, still, well, that's how that conversation. The went bill down. still states that yeah. you need to have. Uh, it needs to be in the the certified the will or document. Yeah, a legal will or document. the operational or operation of law. It yeah. says. So. What it, what All right, so gun law talk is, is the gun law talk is saying that the, it's an ex post facto law that it's illegal that they can't charge you for something that you would have owned before. Own it, but again, it's the proof that you owned you it or the you took possession it. of it before. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, and then right. somebody else, John Hendon or whatever, said, "Why are we talking about how we're going to comply with this? Because we're trying to. If, if we don't talk about it, no one's going to talk about it, and we've got to get it straight in our heads so that we know how to." have a rational conversation or an effective conversation right. with somebody whose mind we might be able to. So this is, a, this is a good time to point out something about these Hangouts. I mean, we've got 12 different people here with varying numbers of, of subs. Ten. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I had a brain fart. But anyhow, we have 10 people here with their sub bases, and if we tell people, then they tell people. We can get the word out to a lot of people, and that's why we talk about this stuff in these forums. And we're we not should talking go watch about, cartoons or something and drink soda. And yeah. we're not talking about why you should comply. We're we're using the ways you would have to comply as, as a way to illustrate the negative effects of this bill beyond right. what they say it's going to have. Uh -huh. And also trying to give you tools to prepare in case it does make it through. Because I know people love to use the word ex post facto because they know the word, but that does not apply if they're charging you with buying it yesterday. doesn't matter if you did buy it before the, before the law was passed. If they charge you with buying it yesterday, ex post facto does not apply. Well, couldn't they, couldn't they write in something that, okay... They won't. How, how do you <laughs> legislate against that? How do you say in the bill, okay, no one can use this bill other than the way it's written? Well, the way it's written is you can do that. So. And saying, well, let's be realistic, it's not going to get past the House. Well, you know, what, it, why is it even being brought up? If we've no, got to be aware of what's going on and we've got to talk about it, in my opinion, the, so that we can stop the, this from happening again in the future, hopefully. Right. Back to the whole uh, serial number thing. Let's begin. Firearm with J. You a firearm with J, you have to show proof. Okay, a firearm that does not have a J in it. What if they write it in the law that, a that court will not even because, hear the case? Because they're not going to write that in. Because that's basically going to say every gun that's out there still can still be bought any way right. you want to buy. It. That's not what no, but at least what he's saying it does make sense, Yankee. He's saying that it's if you started sense. tomorrow when the law passes, that all guns have to be yellow. So any yellow gun is it can be stopped and. You have to show a receipt, and everything older is good to go. But that right. doesn't stop the trafficking of the va There's already millions of guns in the oh, country. Oh, no. Well, none of they're, this is going to be effective not stopping because a certain people type can of be gun. totally legit exactly. to buy a gun and pass a background check, and then two years yeah, from then gonna, become in a situation a where they become a criminal. Yeah, yeah. it's not going to stop right. anything so, from but, being But the way you're all trying to word, though, doesn't, stop, doesn't deal with the issue at all. It doesn't even stop us from purchasing. It would just stop us from purchasing a new gun. Right. That's not right. right. Well, it's, I mean, it's got to start somewhere if they're well, going to do it. I think that there should be well, universal gotta... background checks on all the guns that have the little chips in them. And every time somebody buys one of those guns with a chip in it, they should have to have a universal background check. And then leave it at that. I don't want those chips in my I don't want a chip either. Well, exactly. Nobody's going to buy that gun, so who cares? It'll, it's totally yeah, ineffective. It's totally useless. I am, fun, I am for this happens. because it drives up the value of the guns that don't have a chip, and I could make money off of it. I do yeah, like that. Well, well, wasn't H&K putting RFID chips in their guns? Uh, no, no. they their customers. You forgot. You messed up. Oh, now, see, I haven't even heard about this. I'm out of the loop on this. Are, are y'all being serious about? Well, see, it was Chiapa that was. They've going been to do talking it, about but... trying to make it happen. There's no possible way for it to actually. The technology doesn't exist. Plus, no one would want it, and it's ridiculous. Oh, well, 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 they 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 do it. I, I beg to differ. They have an RFID chip they could put on the inside of a grip panel. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's put it on the inside of the grip oh, panel. Oh, so you can't panel. steal it from. Uh, two, two giant magnets as you leave the store with it? Yeah, they have yeah. that technology. They don't have the technology that in a real-life situation it'll make a gun work or not work. That does no, not no, exist. No, That's fantasy. No, not, not to make it work or not work, but to identify it? They can. Yeah, to identify yeah. it in a, like armory or whatever? Yeah, they have RFID chips that are... Yeah, they could just, they could just like embed one store. in the grip frame and make it illegal to remove it, just like it's illegal to remove the serial number. But yeah. the serial number does the same thing, so why would... Exactly. I think they could eventually have the technology that disables, uh, but it would have to be a very specific design. And I mean, I can think of a million ways to do it. I just I thought they could do anything with nanotechnology. 
Now you're now you're getting into the now you're getting into the micro stamp argument. Yeah, if we're gonna have any kind of technology in a firearm that's small, then we should be talking about different ballistics or different projectiles or different ways of you know moving a projectile, not ways to make stupid idiots that don't know anything about guns happy about the way we shoot our guns. Yeah, yeah right, don't, right. don't give them any ideas. Nobody's, nobody's. People that have watched my video, from judging from the people that have watched my videos, I can tell you nobody is happy about the way I shoot my guns. <laughs> what? Now, what? My grip is about wrong. That. I stand wrong. You know, everything's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about that, I bite my is. tongue when I watch your shooting videos. <laughs> What's that? No, the military has a projectile that is. It's it's programmed in some sense to, when it when it hits a when it goes through a hard barrier. It's set to explode after it penetrates a hard barrier. Those are bunk busters. That's a reactive device or whatever. Yeah. Okay, that's not a that's not a like a programmed thing. That's a react. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, there's yeah. things that you can. I think you, right like whether you want it to blow up in the wall or through the wall or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. I thought they had some way to program that projectile to do what you and whatever intended purpose. Yeah, you, you can you do. can set it. It it basically tells. The bullet, how long after it hits a barrier? After you know, before it's a carryover it from wasn't that a carryover from the OICW program? Be. It was from Robocop yeah. when we had to shoot the Robocop. We're, we're, start, we're wandering <laughs> away from our topic a little there bit. There you go. You you put uh, you limit the capacity of the magazine to five rounds, so you have room for the battery, and then you have a small mechanism inside that will disable the uh, striker from being um, past the uh, the striker block. Uh, similar to the way a Glock does when you pull the trigger back all the way. Then you put the RFID in your hand. I'm sure that that other person is uh, joking in there, but someone's saying that we actually have guns that don't fire if your fingerprints don't match. No, we don't have those. So, uh, <laughs> you yeah, have those in the no, or something. But there, I, was, um, I mean, there was a there was a magnetic gun or a gun that wouldn't fire unless you were wearing a ring. That would. Uh, yeah. Well, that would have to be something like there'd be a block in yeah, the trigger if, way that the magnet if, pulled the block if, out of the way. But. The thing is, is they could come up with a trigger disconnect technology of that nature or whatever. Then they mm. set it up so if the police were in your area, you couldn't shoot back or whatever. So the gun of the future is going to have a microchip in it that has to match the microchip that you have embedded in your skin, a fingerprint right. reader, a breathalyzer, uh, and a special <laughs> ring thing on it. So that you have to do all those things. A mood ring fire. activator, yeah. so you can't shoot angry. So when someone comes at you, you gotta pull your gun, make sure you've got your ring on, blow into the little tube. Uh, you left out the part with the the. If it saves just one child. Give it a semen sample and then fire. You left out the part where it has grand jury support to set, tell you whether or not you're going to be justified in shooting at that point. Exactly. Or not. I, I mean, they I have a new this. 338 Lapua rifle that you have to be. Uh, the way the system works on it, you have to be perfectly on target before it'll let you pull the trigger. You can pull the trigger all day long, but if you're not on target, it won't let you. Right. That already so, I mean, exists. They're already part way oh, there. Yeah. So. How do they Hoss has a video up about that thing. That's a system with the scope and the in the round, and yeah. you just lock it on, and then mm -hmm. you just move it and fire when well, it tells you to, and game, hit whatever the target. That game, that's a very complicated. System. That's a very complicated machine. They have a vehicle though. system where they. Gun. They have a vehicle. No, it's almost system. a prototype, I think. Yeah. They have a vehicle system that identifies targets, and you punch the screen on the target that you want it to shoot at, and it will direct fire at those specific targets. They already have that. Oh, you mean them drone thingies are coming after us with? Yeah. Some people no, say, some, someone's drone. asking, Dan, <laughs> someone's asking, is that someone that's in the chat here? Dan I think so. Killick? Who's Dan Killick? Well, he's down at the yeah, end. I can't see him anymore. I can't see you. <laughs> yeah, I'm having internet problems. Oh, he says, do you think the current background check, well, well you asked to ask the question. It's your question. All right, do you think the current NIC system can withstand the influx of background checks if the bill passes? I mean, yeah. I had bought a Good point. No, they don't have enough December. people running it. In what right after Christmas time, they they were already like, you know, hours worth of wait time. So there's, yeah, there's no way they could deal with every. Tra they have no concept of how many firearms get bought and sold. And now if you you know take every single firearm and call it a firearm and make it go through a check, they have no concept. And that's Most the worst part about any kind of submission to this crap is they're going to figure out how many guns people have. 
They're going to know every time a transaction takes place, and it's going to blow their minds. And if you think they're rabid now, they're going to go nuts when they figure out how many guns are really out there. <laughs> Most they are going to go insane. They Hold think on. 10 guns is yeah. borderline psychopathic. 10 guns. They don't. They, these are people that don't understand firearms. I, yeah, I, I, I've got I another video say, come. I'm, I'm, I would hey. say that the manufacturers reporting, they know pretty close annually how many firearms are They have out. no concept of how many of those yeah. get sent out of state, how many of them are not destroyed, how really? many of them get built. They have no clue how many guns are out there, trust well, me. I even saw a report one time where they were talking about how the FBI used to, or the F, uh, Center for Disease Control used to estimate how many firearms were on the market. And one of the parts of their formula was how many firearms out of every hundred were destroyed every year because of wear and tear. And they estimated like three out of, or like I think it was ten out of every hundred, were destroyed by wear and tear. And they stopped doing that because they realized that no, that doesn't happen. It's not that you know, ten percent of guns don't wear out every year. Guns right. last for a lot longer than people thought they did. Yeah, but they, you do have some of those gun buyback programs where they take all the broken ones that people don't. Not just get some garbage off the street. That's good, you know. They should just. Yeah. That's like that's a buy your garbage program. I should have taken. Yeah. Them. I have an old, a single barrel, a break action shotgun right here somewhere that doesn't work. I should take in and make some money off of. And they recycle program. Hey, like twice as much as the damn things are worth too. I, mean, I know. I can a, sell it on. I could sell it on the forum for twenty-five dollars, or I could get a fifty dollars uh, Red Robin gift certificate or something for it if I took yep. it and traded it. In. Or <laughs> That's they, a what? hell of a lot of taxpayers' money going to buy these guns that are worthless. You know, they're worthless. Yeah. And I have been a part of a, a gun buyback. Not a part. You know, it wasn't like I organized or anything, but I just happened to be on duty when it was going on, and I had to be there. And here's the two things that they almost always do: they bring in a bunch of junk guns that aren't worth anything. And then, at the end of the day, they go to the armory and they get all the confiscated guns and all the new ARs that they just bought or the, or the new rifles they just bought for the department and lay them out on a blanket so the media can come take a bunch of pictures of uh, guns. That they're getting off the street. That they're getting off the street that really weren't guns they got off the street through the buyback program at all. They were guns that belonged to the department and guns that were confiscated in the evidence room. In fact, I've seen pictures before from gun buyback programs, and there's two things someone pointed out to me once. One, you keep seeing the same pictures for different stories of gun buyback programs. Like they're using stock photos to make them look like they're more effective than they are. And two, uh, this was years ago, about seven years ago, someone on the, the highroad.com said, Does anybody see anything wrong with this picture? And it was right from Detroit, and they had this big picture of all the guns they just bought back on the gun buyback program. They all had evidence tags on them, so they weren't. No. They didn't get them back for the gun buyback. They went to the evidence locker and pulled out all the confiscated guns that were being held for evidence and made it look like they were successful. Weren't they talking about doing a uh, magazine buyback if that whole thing goes through too? If you want, oh, dude, I got a whole stack of like, <laughs> news weeks over oh, here I can get rid of. I was trying to figure out. So it has to be a mess of like how to make Magpul mags out of cardboard or something before one of those happens. <laughs> yeah, they're so dumb. They probably take anything. Yeah. I thought yeah. this video. This kid, this kid made a fully functional 1911 out of paper. It was pretty cool. I actually made a video that I decided it was too stupid to post, and that tells you something. If I didn't post a video that I thought was too stupid, <laughs> but I did a buyback. I did a program where I was going to have a recycling service for all the spent high capacity mags that people had already shot empty. <laughs> Yeah. Just send them to me, and I'll recycle them, and you can go buy yourself some new mags. Because we all know you can't shoot them more than once. That's right. It's just sad. Those are the nice. kind of people that are making decisions and talking about this topic. Oh, that's I'm the same saying, one I mean, that thought AR people, stood for assault rifle. Well, up she's there, a little yeah. ignorant of the terminology, but at least she doesn't think an island's going to tip over if you build a, a military base on one side of it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's the kind of people that are representing us, though. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. What does it mean? Is the right. well, they're never called People representatives over. anymore. They're always policy makers. Yes. So there's yeah. there's something that we can try and affect. Let's work as a country to make an amendment that all of these politicians have to fire every type of firearm before they can even consider making a bill related to firearms. No, or they should at least take a, a course. <laughs> One week course or something. I don't want to pay for all that ammo, and people that are lame don't even like what doing it. You don't have to drive every car to make car legislation or anything. Yeah, but you have driven a car. Some of them haven't driven a gun. <laughs> Maybe they should have to have some sort of familiarization. I'm down with that, but yeah, yeah that's a bunch of rare ammo. On I, it. I was you taking it. Should educate I was taking it to the nth, before you take it to the nth, nth degree with firing every type of firearm out there. But at least you know a semi-auto, a shotgun, 
you know, some of the basics. We could walk over the Smithsonian, yeah. About. I mean, just educate. If you're going to take your, if you're going to take a firm position on any topic, educate yourself on the topic a little bit first. It's our fault too, though. I was watching something the other day, and the guy was trying to tell the difference between an AR and an M16, and how an M16 can shoot 1,600 rounds per minute, where an AR can only shoot 600 rounds per minute. And first, to assume somebody can conceptualize that, but then to just keep using those stupid numbers like that instead of saying, you know, how fast I can empty a single magazine, which is obviously much more realistic. No one's going to have the type of, you know, ammunition to feed a thing for a complete minute and. Right. You know, saying around, uh, saying a number like six hundred makes you sound like a big tough guy, but I don't you know, even think the you could point do that. Lost. That. You probably couldn't even get that much fire out with a bump fire. No, exactly. So. With a belt-fed firearm, you'd barely get that much. You know, it's like it's it's like saying RPM. You don't actually drive for an hour, you know, or miles per hour. You don't drive for an hour to go sixty miles per hour. That doesn't come across. I don't think with you know. So it's sort of our own fault too. Sometimes we're not right. well, so being like precise. Numbers actually mean anything. Anyone except, for, like, well, except for gun people. Exactly. Stuff. Now, somebody in the chat is asking, didn't Washington State take representatives to the range this week? I don't know. If they did, that's cool. I, I hope they made everybody go and not just those that yeah. felt like well, it. And it should be local, like, you know, gun, pro-gun organizations should be doing that. Right. Inviting them out, at least. Mm -hmm. Then it's the uh, representatives' problem if they decided to not take up the, you know, that opportunity and learn about the thing they're legislating. Right. What we should have done is take them to the range and then get their pictures shooting guns with hookers standing next to them and then <laughs> blackmail them. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Preferably while someone's doing some illicit drug in the background, too. Mm -hmm. Like drinking a 16 ounce soda? Yes. 17 ounce soda? Yeah, oh, high capacity crazy. soda. That's crazy. <laughs> Sorry, 16 ounces, perfectly legal. 17 ounces, whatever. Mm hmm. It's like Dan's uh, state. Well, you can't. You can have thirty rounds, but not thirty-one, right? If that was a question. <laughs> no, I mean, is that is that? Am I right on that? Yeah, up to thirty-one. Up to thirty-one. Okay. Anything you can have a forty, a seventy-five. How about giving a lecture on on how unreliable the the majority of the over 30 round capacity feeding. Uh, like a beta are. mag. Okay, I've gotten three different people that have sent me PMs now asking about the Glock 30S. I have not even seen one yet. So. Mm, I never even heard of it. The Glock 30S? Center, it's like it's not the old Glock single stack, it's the new Glock single stack 45. It's the one are we allowed to talk about 30. guns in these chats like this? Yeah. No. I guess so. Weird. You scare me when you talk about those evil black things. With I've never seen one yet. Their... I hope to see one because I would like to own one. But I, I know really a couple of people that own them, but they bought them on Gunbroker and paid a premium. Yeah, you can never get them for cheap. I sold though. all my guns because they're evil. Hmm. That's pretty cool, though. I'm, I'm glad to see Glock made a, uh, a thinner single stack gun. Well, I mean, they've had one for a while, but it was a nightmare. So they're hoping the new one won't be as big a nightmare as the old one. Hey, Stone Guy, I was watching one of your videos. You shoot in competitions, right? Yeah, I do. I think you'd be a better shot then. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Oh, oh, oh man. Uh, that's come hard. on. In his defense, he didn't say he wins competitions. He says he's I'm, shoot, I'm shooting. I'm shooting a, a round disc about the size of your fist at 25 feet, and I only missed it like four times. Come on. Only four. Uh, anybody, <laughs> anyone can compete. Mm, yeah. I'm just busting your balls, dude. If anybody uh, wants know, to buy me a Glock 30S and send to me so I can test it, I would more than happy to do it. I'm not sending it back, though, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Right. But that would be a straw purchase because somebody else bought it for you. No, it's a gift. I'm not giving them shit for it. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of sending guns across state lines, did anybody see the Anderson Cooper, like, uh, yes. gun show? Yeah, yeah where they trafficked. Guns across the country and bought guns. And I don't think they quite did, but yeah, they definitely made it. They did the sleight of hand to make it look as though it's that you know you can. Well, I guess you could do it if you wanted to break the law, but you know they didn't actually break the law. I don't think. I think they bought the pistol in the state they were in and then went to two other gun shows and bought a long gun across state lines. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, is all they did. We they never but, showed what all their licenses were either. Well, well assuming that they, they started and ended in Georgia and they bought the pistols in Georgia, that's legit. So assuming they're from Georgia, then they went to yeah, two other right. gun shows and then bought a long gun. I was about to say in Georgia, you're allowed. We're allowed to sell long guns to neighboring states. You can 
yeah, federally you can yeah. buy long guns out of state unless you're in a state that prohibits it, and none, none of those states do. Right. It's, it's got to be, it's gotta be a contiguous. It's got to be a contiguous. Contiguous. Not state. always. I mean, Most, not sometimes, be, but not always. Long yeah. guns can you can typically do those, but the pistols are only federal. Yeah. Like I know when I went back to West Virginia last year, I saw a rifle I wanted to buy. They could not sell it to me because I was not a con uh, you know a, a border state with their with the state of West Virginia. Had that happen to me in Tennessee? Yeah. They Which said was they, very could upsetting. they could transfer it to Washington for me, but I could not buy it and just take it back with me because I wasn't. If I'd have been in a state that was touching West Virginia, they could have just sold it to me. But right. nobody wants to touch West Virginia. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I think I think not if, what if you if keep saying to me in your private messages. Anything to be challenged as far as cons the, the how constitutional it is is saying that you can't you know exercise the Second Amendment in a state that doesn't touch your state. Pretty much, like yeah. there's nothing. Yeah. How is that constitutional? Well, I mean, I just think it's an odd period because you know I remember when I come back, I come through customs quite a lot. And never once do they ask me, "Am I a Washingtonian?" They ask me if I'm a U.S. citizen. So I right. think my rights should be continuous throughout all 50 states. Right. I uh, yeah, I agree with that. Definitely. Of course, I'm an but I am an extremist, though. If you could buy a gun in any state, you could go to another state and get mad and then buy a gun and cause violence. Mm -hmm. Now, now that's, that brings up a good point, though. Luckily, the laws are there and prevents that from happening. That brings up a good point. It's probably a good idea because every time I go to Mississippi, it does make me mad. Oh, that like, brings I'm going to go buy a gun point. and I'm going to shoot. Oh, wait a minute. For um, the, uh, you know, like all these federal laws that are trying to be passed, obviously the state can not necessarily supersede a federal law, but the state can choose to make their own laws, such as New York make and Connecticut have done. They can make a law stricter, but they can't make a law less restrictive. Well, right. they can, they can, can they also, Well, they can ignore, I guess. They, they, also they can initiate cannot, new laws, right? They also cannot um, violate the Second Amendment, technically. But, but the thing is, you get, once the law gets in place, the states are bound by federal law. That, I mean, there are strict rules in place that says no state law can supersede federal law. Right, but now okay, right, but then you get is, states like New York that put all these crazy laws in effect forever. But that's, but that's yeah, them that's, making that's, that's, does anything about it. That's all that's, about them putting a, a stricter that you can increase. Like if the federal government says no one can own more than five cats, and then okay, this North Carolina decides well we think no one should be able to own more than one cat. Well, North Carolina can say no one can own more than one cat, but they can't say no one can own more than six cats. Because they are bound by the federal limit of five, they can go lower if they want, but they can't. Go well, but like everybody's saying, like with the marijuana laws and stuff, they'll sometimes the states will just ignore the laws. Well, that's like that's it. kind of what I was getting now. Uh, expand on that because I, I may be just misinformed. But okay, like with the mag, obviously the Second Amendment doesn't directly uh, cite magazine capacity. So if New York is able to make a new New law saying you're only allowed to have seven rounds in a magazine. How is, I mean, where 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 are they getting that from? How are they able to do that if because there's no federal statute no federal, on that? They're not right. violating any federal law. Once there's a federal statute, then they all have to sort of fall in suit. That's so why, if there was, which is why I if there's say, a federal that's statute. What, that's why we're you know. Which is why I always tell people when. That love to say, oh, the Republicans will save us against gun laws. You're retarded if you think that, because they were in charge of every branch of government forever, and where are all the federal laws that state you have the right to own this, and you have the right to own that, or you have the right to have this many rounds, or where are the positive gun laws that came from all that time they had control that the so states now, would not be able to, be able to supersede now? Could an individual state require a... Well, obviously, it wouldn't be universal; it'd be a statewide. But could the, could an individual state require a background check on every firearm purchase? Yes, yes. That's some what, states do. That's they already what, do. That's yeah. what uh, Lars Zul's dealing with. In yeah, there's, sure. like there's no private sales in some states already. Right, exactly. California. Like California, you have to go through an FFL if you want to sell a gun to your friend on the street. You got to go to the FFL and have it done through there. And so it and seems to be they really, too. just so like they, they want really to do federally. Want that's a universal background check, and it's working perfectly. In California, there's no crime there anymore, not even violence. Yep, nothing. I walk around all the time. So it seems to me like if these, if you know, all these lawmakers and everything really wanted to push the issue, they could really just, you know, try to reach out to individual states 
and get each individual state to jump on board instead of passing it federally. Well, that's they, that's the initiatives that they're pushing right now. Uh, someone's asking who's worse, the GOP or the Dem for gun laws? Well, let's look historically. Uh, someone did a thing not too long ago. Historically, the majority of anti-gun laws have been passed are worse. by the right. So they're both the bad, right and the left. So if you're fooling yourself into thinking one's on your side, all you're doing is swallowing their fucking dick as they shove it down your throat because they're not doing anything for you other than fucking you now. <laughs> you're just believing that you're choosing to believe one side lying to you. Is all you're doing. I'll be right back. I have to take my grandma out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you can't wake up by now and understand that neither side is on your side, no political was, party's on your side for this. Yeah. There was a question in the chat. I knew this I was the wrong chat to let Grandma listen to. Yeah. <laughs> there was a your question grandma's in the chat. Yours. Your grandma's what? like, oh, I used to get 50 cents for that when someone did that to me. <laughs> <laughs> there was a question in the chat about um, what, what, in the, what happens if states don't listen to the fed, federal government about what they want them to do. Cut off funding. It involves taking away their funding. They'll Did take away that? their Obamacare. Who's typing so loudly? Uh, I think it'd be this guy. Guy. Has Nick. Yep. He's got hammer fingers. Yeah, I got a loud keyboard too. I am gonna get you a soft keyboard, Yankee, just because you're a loud typer. <laughs> Sorry about that. You think with all the you think with all the hair and semen embedded in this one, it would have a nice cushioned padding in the backing of it now, but it doesn't. <laughs> so well, here's, a, here's, here's, a, here's an interesting question. It says, if guns that have non-detachable magazines are okay in New, in New York, does that mean I can weld a 75-round drum to, into an SKS and feed it by click only instead of being able to change mags? I don't know. You'd almost have to get a lawyer involved with that one, but if if that met the letter of the law, you might be able to do it. I don't know because a lot and of the call laws it a New York were, SKS and start selling the crap out of them. One thing I remember: you. most of those laws that are written that way say magazines or any feeding device. So anything that fed, like even a clip or a or a belt that fed or ammo belt. in, would be would be included in the ban. What if I you can actually have a firearm though that takes multiple magazines in the one firearm? Each one would only have. Seven, but you maybe could put four if you could figure it out. I was wondering about that double stack forty-five. If that was a way to get around the, some of the wording of the law, because it's two separate magazines. It's one gun, though. I bet you it's two, it's over. <clears throat> well, it's registered as one gun, but it you you know what I mean, like the two, the double barrel forty-five. Oh, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but I'm betting they're going to say seven rounds per gun, not per feeding yeah. device. Yeah. It's registered as one firearm, even though it has two barrels. But congratulations on them for making that ahead of time so that they can screw with their stupid law. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope that somebody buys eight of those just to piss them off. <laughs> <laughs> if they sold me guys, one really cheap, I'd buy it. 18 guns. Nope. Yeah, it's only nine. Come up earlier in the chat was about the uh, universal of everything, like say this current gun bill gets uh, passed through the Senate. Do you guys think it'll get passed through the House? No. no. Yeah, let's rewind and watch chat three weeks ago. You think it'll go to the Senate the floor? No. Exactly. Let's keep assuming. Yep. I'm not assuming anything. But yes, so what they I assume that ten, round, ten guns is too many for any of us. How about we hope? I, I honestly believe that that it be amended maybe, but I think that there's a good chance that something's getting signed by President Obama that we aren't going to like. Okay, I can get an Apple keypad, one of the silent ones, for $49. So I guess I should probably go do that this week. Oh, wow. That's cheaper than you can get it from Apple. So hey, make make sure you don't carry if you go down to the, the Apple store down at that mall where the shooting was. Which one? Which mall? Um, they don't the Apple store right next to the... Um, Applebee's? I always forget the name of that one. The one where that... Applebee's? No, no. The shooting happened there not too long ago. <laughs> Clackamas Mall? Clackamas. Yeah, there's an know. Apple store down there. Is there an Apple store there now? Yeah. Pretty now, sure. do they have a sign posted that says no firearms allowed? I'm not sure. I, have, I have, didn't look that close. I was carrying in there the day that sh that about two hours earlier, though, but the day that shooting happened. M missed an opportunity. No, I avoided a problem, if you ask me. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't want to get shot. 
this kind of this kind of goes to what Dan would, was talking about. How would, how would you been? Uh, I guess I shouldn't say that. This kind of goes to what Dan was talking about last night with the uh, with. Um, no, I was. I want to go call names, but a manufacturer that uh, chose not to move out. Obvious. Okay, well. Remington. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, now, do you guys, if you see a a a, a small business or even a even a corporate business for that matter that has signs posted that says you know no no firearms allowed or you know whatever do you make it a point not to patronize those uh, those businesses or do you just put your gun in the car and go to in be anyway? honest I never see a business that does, that has that I don't ever it never something I never encounter now, are we allowed to say I guess we are allowed to say like for instance uh, K jewelers uh, just uh, came out with a thing and they put a sign on their doors that say, you know, and they even go as far as saying people found in violation will be prosecuted. Um, and, you know, no no concealed weapons of any kind and violators now, will be prosecuted. Now, that, that all depends I on... I buy all my men jewelry at other places. That all, all, that, <laughs> that all falls back on your state law. Is for, If your state law only says that carrying a firearm where they ask you not to is not a felony, it's only a misdemeanor, then that's all that will happen with it. They can't make more, more uh, effect of their not wanting you there than what the state of law, state law. Well, obviously, yes. Yeah, so just for topic individual. here, real quick. Did anyone answer that question of what do I need to convert a G twenty six into a G twenty seven? No, I didn't. Okay, I the, the, the answer is you need to get a G twenty seven. You cannot convert a G twenty six to a G twenty seven. I learned that. I the opposite way around. I, I, I would do it that way. I one's a nine millimeter and one's a forty, so that's not yeah. going to work. You can convert you the forty to a nine if you change the extractor and everything, yeah. but you cannot yeah. convert the, the nine to the forty. Yeah. I put in the chat box our personal chat because they can't see it. No clue. I'm a Glock turd instead of Glock. So turd. if I get a Glock 27 <laughs> and I put a Glock 26 slide and barrel on it and magazine, I can use it. No. One, no, but you have to change. You have to change take the trigger too. Yeah, you have to take the 27, change the extractor and the barrel right. and the ejector, and then you're fine to go. Okay, so if I take the ejector out as well, I mean the whole trigger, just for the sake of argument, the whole trigger assembly, and drop in the one that's out of my 26 into the 27's frame. You're doing yeah, that. The frames are the same, but now you're wasting yeah. your time because you bought way too much stuff. You could have bought a 27. Have a 27. You just bought a 27. Glock parts. I have a bunch of useless broken Glock parts that are just sitting around, and specifically a frame. And if I could yeah, get a they're exactly the same frame. Handgun, frame same, internals are different. Okay, cool. So I can just buy a Glock 27. But that'll be chaos because the ATF has that listed as being manufactured as a 9mm. Now it's going to be a 40. So I don't know if it's that's, that's morally right for the ATF. Mm -hmm. Do it just uh, because the, the, because the frame would be serial numbered to a 40 or to a 9. Oh, and yeah, that could really be confusing. Then I can actually use my. Yeah. Stuff again. But like you got. Just to be safe, just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and pre-report you to the ATF. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, we mean, have other, we have other, your own good. we have other firearms where you can change the slide and change the caliber. So what's any different with what he's doing than yeah. what that is? No, I was trying to be sarcastic or funny. Yeah. It didn't work. No, I mean that's cool. I because we had kind of talked about that before, and I had asked about going the other way, and you guys were correct, you know, and you told me no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Eric Larson wants to know, wouldn't the G26P barrel be loose? No, the conversion barrels are the same outer diameter in the 20, the 9 millimeter and the 40. Just the inner bore is different. On, I mean, on that, that note, you had the injector, everything. And, I mean, I could literally take and just strip the frame of that 27 that I was going to buy. And then just, you know, if I wanted to, then I could switch it back over to 40. And then I kind of got, like, two guns, and now my stuff's not completely useless. Well, hey, hang on, hang on. The G-Webs, you brought up a good point. I've never even thought about that. Is is that legal? If like for instance, my Glock no, I was just playing around. You can do that anything you want. Like that's that. completely legal. Like you whatever you want. I was just playing around. The only just license just part is we were, part we, were we were we were joking. The only well, license know, part but, is but the frame. Thinking if if I, like my Glock twenty two, I've got a three fifty seven sig barrel that I drop in it and shoot three fifty seven sig out. Nope, you're yeah. a felon. We should start a hands across America, except let's all swap Glock slides across America, and everybody swaps their slides and their lowers so that. <laughs> Everything's just giant mess. Uh -huh. So it's not a big deal awesome. if, if it's serial numbered for a forty and you shoot three fifty seven out of it. There's yeah. no no pure okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the same thing. thing. If like you ask ninety nine percent of politicians, they would agree that you are a felon for doing that. But in real well, life, you're not. 
Yeah. Well, hell, that'll be. The, I mean, that's. I mean, that's probably the next thing they might pass. All serial numbers have to match the caliber intended for that gun. You know. Just gave them the idea. Jesus Christ! What are you doing? They're not watching this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so one of their minions sees it and shows it to him. What about my G33 where I bought a new slide, new barrel, and everything for it? The only thing original was the frame. They're going to be really pissed over that one. Yep. Like, I'm, I'm probably going to build my SIG P250 once the, the parts catch up and turn it into a 40. It's a 9 right now. Yeah, somebody in here says, can I convert my Jennings 9 into a paperweight? Oh, I already did. Yeah, that was probably a good move. I was going to say, the best way to convert a Jennings firearm into a paperweight is to fire it. <laughs> After two or three rounds, it'll be a paperweight. I think even Yankee would agree that's a firearm that's worse than the Keltex he hates on so much. Yeah, Jennings are awful. I've owned them there. When I, like I said, I've told this story a hundred times, but I sold my Jennings not too long ago. Uh, I sold a Jennings once not too long ago, and I said, uh, Jennings, blah, 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 unfired, second owner. The guy contacted me and said, how do you know it's unfired if you're the second owner? And I'm like, because the barrel hasn't exploded. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wasn't that the gun that the chick used at the end of the movie, Shaft? Was it Jennings 9mm to shoot uh, Christian Bale? I don't know. I don't watch I just saw like Shaft for the first time today, so... You talking about there's a, yeah. the new Shaft or something? Yeah, the new Shaft. I saw the new one for the first time, and you guys were talking about the Jennings, and I was like, well, yeah, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, isn't that the gun that the one lady used at the end to kill Christian Bale with? Spoiler. Yeah. G-Webs will be able to confirm that I am the last person you should ask about movies. Yeah. I don't know. I'm the second to the last. I but I haven't seen that movie either, so I'm not any help either. Samuel L. Jackson is Shaft. My answer to everything somebody asks me about a movie is usually... I've seen all the original Shafts. Yeah. Is he one bad black man with jammas, that Shaft? Yep. Watch your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That happened. <clears throat> oh, yeah, there's an international movie firearms database. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah that movie firearms database. So I was just trying to see if that's, I can... That's interesting. Tits. Lots of interesting stuff on there. We got tons it's, of It's good a really questions. cool website. Like, if there's any kind of... Basically, any gun in any movie ever made, they can tell you what it was. Oh, that was the other thing about the shaft. Someone just asked shaft. about the Glock 30S again. Were you not here, or are you just not listening? There was a part in the movie where the guy was shooting another guy. Where the time slide was locked open. <laughs> I was like, well, there's a lot of new people here now, because we just hit, like, 500 right. viewers a minute ago. Okay, so we got a question. CCW and banks in Washington State, legal, yes or no? It is legal by yeah. my reading of the law, but you should always check for yourself because I'm not a lawyer. It's legal. It's legal yeah, in it's, Washington State. It's legal in Georgia, but Anywhere. check for yourself. Well, that brings up what I had happened the other day at the bank. After I CCW'd in the bank, I stopped to talk to the security guard on the way out just because I wanted to sort of screw with his head. But I asked him, does the bank have a policy against people open carrying in the bank? It seems as it were an open carry state. And is it a problem if you CCW in the bank? And he could not answer either question because he never really thought about it. Wow. He's like, I'm getting minimum wage. Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of those things I almost want to push the button at the bank, but I have a feeling if I do, they'll put up the RCW sign on the front door and yeah. screw me. I've, I've, there are some videos on YouTube of at least uh, I've seen at least one video of a guy open carrying into a bank without a problem, but I don't uh, know what state it is. I have to say oh, that it's federal, it's federal it's based. Lawful, yeah. lawful here, but it'd be a be sort of yeah, a. Yeah, that's minor. I have only in, at least in Georgia, any federal building. See, locally, since we've been able to deposit checks with our cell phones for a while now, I have only stepped foot in a bank once in the last year, and that was because I. Uh, was at the grocery store and forgot my wallet, and luckily there's a branch of our bank there in the grocery store, so I went over to them and had and had to withdraw cash. With, and luckily they recognized me because I'm at that grocery store every day. So right. they see, let me take cash on my account with no ID. See, I, it's one of those things I almost want to push the button by open carrying into the bank because I'm a member there and whatever. I think you should. Yeah, but the, it gives me angst. Uh, you should let me fun. film it for YouTube. Right, because when I get shot because somebody comes in overreacting. You and know, I'm no. telling you, if I if it if the video at any moment gets dull when you walk in, and if I think people aren't reacting enough to you while you're standing in line, say, go I'm going to yell, go that, guy's, that guy's got a gun! 
And then my viewership's going to go through the roof. We'll make a fortune. Yeah, as long as I get a cut. Well, I'll make a fortune. You might not be there anymore. <laughs> You'll get cut in prison. So, yeah. I'll give your children a <laughs> Well, I wouldn't be breaking any law. Actually, Yankee would break the law when he, he created panic. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm sure y'all got a gun. Stand out. Stand and run outside and film through the window. He's got a gun. Run outside and film through the window. That's too funny. All right, anybody got any other topics? We seem to have killed that one. Some guy keeps asking asking you to ask G Webs a question about an NFA thing and a Roni. Yeah, I think everybody it. should SBR a pistol just to do it. But I don't know if you like that thing, then sure. I don't see. I don't, I'm the opposite. I don't see any point in SBR pistols. I don't like. If somebody wants to put a stock on it, go for it. Nobody should be afraid of SBR or you know doing NFA oh, paperwork. Dan, and the more Dan, NFA paperwork we do, the more revenue we bring into the country. You know, Dan's got 20. that badass AK uh, pistol. Would you ever consider putting a stock on that, Dan? No, because if I wanted a stock on it, I'd buy an AK-47. <laughs> no, we can't do SBRs here in Washington. That's the one bad law. Uh, the only thing I would ever do is a foreground. That is the only thing I'd actually do to SBR it is a foreground. So, since we're so close to the topic, John Preppin said death something about wins. Just to answer a question in the in the chat, Deathstroke wins. Right. John Preppin says nobody will probably notice up and carry in the bank. I would say that except for the guards at our bank. They ask you not to wear a hat and sunglasses, and they actually ask me to take my hat and sunglasses off. So I'm guessing you might notice that 45 on my side. Just <laughs> maybe. I wish, honestly, and even though I... I'm not a big proponent of open carry. Mm -hmm. I'm not a, not not someone who dera I'm not someone who derides open carry because I don't care if someone open carries. Mm -hmm. uh, but I almost wish, in some ways, they just make a law that everybody, if you want to carry a gun, you just had open carry because then we could all buy nice fancy holsters and it'd right. be worth it for all these nice shiny silver guns I have now. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. I'd be carrying in a drop thigh holster all the time. Just. <laughs> Where my sass belt? Oh, I gotta check this out. Oh, okay, there's, there's 502 people yeah. out there, so you gotta have some questions. Let's see some questions in the. They're still figuring out SBR. Yeah. They're, through it. <laughs> They're like, what's SBR mean? What? <laughs> so the question was, did somebody get one of those Roni things, which is a like a shroud you put your Glock into? It goes off the Glock rail. It is cool makes, looking. It's a way to put a shoulder stock basically on your Glock. And the concept would be if your personal protection, like a bodyguard for somebody, and you need something that like you can conceal underneath the jacket and then still have some capacity, you could have like a Glock with a 33-round mag, still have a fairly capable little sidearm. With a stock, you'd be much more capable. So for that kind of purpose, you know, that's why they made it. Do you think it's worth paying the $200 to turn your pistol into an SBR, meaning you can put a stock on your short-barreled, then isn't it like another three or four hundred dollars for the actual Roni? Yeah, the thing itself is going to cost you a couple of three hundred bucks. I don't know how much they cost somewhere on there, probably more. And then two hundred for the stamp in like you know eight months to wait for it. But again, I say if you want it, what's the, what's the difference? Now you got a cool SBR pistol. You can put a little grip on it. You can stick it underneath a an AR or something. You can put a st regular Glock stock on it. You can have fun with it and take it to the range and educate people that there's a way to play with your guns a little bit more than they might know. Now, now, let's, you can let's, 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 let's face it. You know, I know we all got offended when Daredevil called us hobbyists that are willing to kill children. But and to a degree, a lot of us are hobbyists because, let's face it, a lot of us have gone well beyond our means, our needs for self-defense. And yeah. now buy things <laughs> because we like them. You know, we think they're cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we appreciate them. I, I appreciate them aesthetically. I appreciate them mechanically. And I appreciate the fun I, you can have. I would challenge so, anyone to say they bought their vehicle for strictly utilitarian purposes. Some people yeah. may have, but most people don't. We'd all have Priuses. Right. Exactly. We'd all have some gray, ugly leave electric car. Leave my, leave my Prius out of this. <laughs> and if you haven't already bought your car that you want, you know, you are dreaming of one. So it's the same thing. That if they can't put their mind around it, you know, talk about their what? vehicles, talk about their jet skis or something. What's that gun we sure, looked at sure. a couple of weeks ago in the chat? Because can't you turn a rifle into a pistol without any paperwork? But you can't turn a pistol uh, into a rifle or something. No, Pretty you much. can't. Oh, I guess yeah. I'm over speaking. But I thought the big deal was having the center center file rifle cartridge in a pistol sized package. I thought that's what most of those permits and everything were for in your conversion. 
Actually, none of the, the 1934 gun, or the NFA, the National Firearms Act of 1934, the first and only, well, the first gun control thing we had federal level, mm -hmm. put definitions on all guns, and it does not use ammunition as any part of any definition. Okay. Okay, yeah, no, Just I was FYI. not lying to the person who asked me if I was lying. Here you can see, there's the picture of my Mazda the day I bought it, and right next to it is my Prius. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so you can uh, turn a right. Into a pistol, G Webs. You, you lost points off Wait, the hand card you, for that one. You can do anything you want. You have to file paperwork if you want to take a rifle and chop it down into something smaller. And that car if you is want to used take for a traveling. And it bigger, you're good to go. That car is used uh, for okay, traveling that's, every that's, day back and forth to patients' houses, so it's great for a hospice nurse. Oh, there you go. Within boundaries, you can't be crazy and decide, oh, I'm taking a Glock into a rifle so I can put a stock on it and end there. No, you have to turn it into a rifle, so it's a 16 inch barrel. So the reason we're talking about this in the first place is that little thing he puts a stock on it but doesn't put a 16-inch barrel on it. Uh, I got you. So I what you're you. talking about is the thing where you take a Glock slide and shove it up underneath like a Sten-looking weird pipe I'll that is 16 inches long and has a stock on it. And it's then you can do that so without any paperwork. Yes. Right, okay. Uh, wait, wait, no. The, 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 the Glock stock is actually no paperwork? I thought that was... That was an SBR then. Definitely. Putting a, st glock, a stock onto the Glock by itself would be require registration with Form 1 or Form 4. But if yeah, you, took, if you took that same, what he was saying, what Jeeves was saying, if you, t you could put that Glock stock on there, and then if you attached a barrel that made the 16-inch uh, limit or length, that's right. They don't really make a 16-inch Glock barrel, though. So what you'd have to do is take your frame of your Glock. You wouldn't use the Glock stock at all because that wouldn't come into the picture at all. You take the Glock frame, though, and you shove it up underneath this thing that looks sort of like a harpoon gun. It just looks like a long pipe, except the Glock slide fits into it. Now it looks like a weird-looking gun with a Glock hand pistol grip. And now it's a rifle because it's 16 inches long. It has its own stock on it. Just a weird-looking contraption that has a Glock in it, so it's technically well, taking a pistol into a rifle. And you don't have to have paperwork for that because it's 16-inch barrel. Because it's 16-inch overall 26, so you still have to fall into the definition of a rifle. Gotcha. And if it actually, if you take a rifle, though, and you drop it right down to the definition of a pistol, then that doesn't need paperwork. It's only when you go to an SBR. No, you definitely need to do that in paperwork. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you cannot alter a rifle down without... Going through Form One. Yeah, if you were like in a, but but the, what we did discuss is like if you what if you had like an AR-15 lower and you converted it into an AR pistol, like you removed the stock. And Very much a it. felony, and that drives them nuts. And that's the kind of thing that they don't realize. But technically, if you build one as a rifle and then take it all apart and build it back up as a pistol, you've, you've done bad according right. to stupid law. Even though stupid all the law, and it does laws in either form has nothing to do with the mechanics of a firearm. That's the problem. Is the, their stupid law is just the same as a seven-round capacity in a ten-round magazine. It's totally up to you. You're, you're the one who has to make that call. So uh, if the group wants to take it up, there's a decent question in the chat, and there be some people that might have to skip because of their where they're at. But the question was, what are the laws in your state when it comes to alcohol and concealed carry? And... I'll leave it up to Yankee if he wants to cover Washington before I do. Zero tolerance in Texas. Yankee's not even there, is he? Is he listening? Uh, no, he's not. No alcohol. He was standing over there. Not uh, missing anything? Weirdest. I put up a question that came from the chat. What are the laws in your state when it comes to alcohol and concealed carry? And I thought we might, might do a left to right and left it up to you whether or not you wanted to go over it or leave it for me. Uh, We can do left to right, I guess. Huh? Here, I'll go first and then i got to leave for a second. I'll be right back. Okay. In Oregon, you can carry into a bar with a gun, and if you're drinking, you can't be in possession of the gun if you're under the influence. In Washington, you can't yep. even carry into a bar with a gun if they make more than 51% of their amount of alcohol, or they post it no uh, minors. Live speed. Yep. And you can't be in, in possession of the gun under the influence of alcohol. But there's no rule about drinking while in possession of the gun. Ohio, you cannot. You can go into, you, we just passed this in September. You can conceal carry in, in uh, facilities that serve alcohol now as long as they are not posted. Um, and you cannot uh, consume alcohol while carrying a firearm. In Texas, you cannot consume alcohol while carrying a firearm. If you were stopped by law enforcement and you blew even a .01, you were committing uh, a felony. 
Uh, it's illegal to carry into a bar uh, at all uh, if it makes 51% or more of the income from alcohol. Um, but interestingly enough, you can carry into the state capital, and there is a concealed handgun license express lane. Nice. Um, in California, honestly, I don't know. Nobody here freaking carries. Right. Well, I'm kind of the same boat. I don't drink, so I think we can carry into bars now, but we can't be drunk or drink or anything in Arizona. Yeah, you should be able to do that. I understand why. It's such a big tough about that. But I'll go on record as saying you should be able to do whatever you want as long as you aren't causing a ruckus. And if you do cause a ruckus, then you should go to jail. Right. Uh, I'm in Oregon, and uh, Yankee already covered it, so. Right. Did he go over the part where you can actually open carry in a bar with a CCW? I missed it because my son was in my ear. Um, I think he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. As for it's a little interesting because for North Carolina, as of right now, it, it is there is no drinking and concealed carry, zero tolerance. Uh, you cannot carry into anywhere that serves alcohol. But there is legislation going through right now to make it so you can carry into these establishments, but you cannot drink. Then also, you, if you were drinking, you can switch to open carry and be legal. That's a good option. That's cool. And in uh, Georgia, you can carry into a bar, um, restaurant. Uh, there is you cannot consume alcohol and. It's kind of like Texas. You, if, you know, uh, I think it's a zero tolerance. It's not even like a, not like a DUI where you can be under .08. It's no alcohol at all, but you can carry into a bar, or restaurant. Mm -hmm. so the big thing is the law is not clearly defined for Texas. It just says mm -hmm. any, pretty much, says any alcohol. All right. so. so I guess I got to do Washington's. Um, we are allowed to carry in a establishment that serves alcohol but not in the section that is specifically the bar where it's labeled 21 and over. Um, you can consume alcohol while you're carrying if you get over the state's legal um, alcohol limit which is a .08 or whatever then you can be cited but I'm not sure if it's a felony or a misdemeanor. Um, actually, I'm in Canada, so uh, only people are able to carry here are actually, like I say, prospectors and things like that, and they have to unload their weapons 300 meters from any residence or uh, establishments. So, yeah, no establishments here. So, but I mean, they just shoot them all into the air 500 meters away? <laughs> uh, well, that would be one way to do it, but uh, not necessarily the best one. You didn't uh, tell me you were Canadian when you had asked for a link. <laughs> I didn't ask for one. I said, what are being attacked by a bear? Yeah, by just because you're in here, our bear we, attack chances. We can how, give have him, you not, how have you not been eaten by a bear? We can give him, I don't know. He can, we can give What's him crazy empathy. about that law is who the hell knows what 500 meters is. We can give him empathy that he can't carry one of these with him when he goes out every day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oddly enough, more people are killed around here by moose than bears. Yeah. I can believe that. Yep, having loose gun laws means you get killed by moose, too. Absolutely. Yeah, but now they think you shoot a moose once in a while. You I want to know what the laws are like in Korea. Can they own firearms in Korea? No. Not northern. Well, I know, but we got a guy here from South Korea, so I was hoping that maybe people in South Korea can own guns I think he's from there. Privately. I think he's just living he's stationed, stationed there. there. I still yeah. want to know if you can own them privately in South Korea. He's They're free. They should be able to. He's on a stock picture. I think he's, they make some cool guns in Korea, right? He's gone. I might have to. Yeah, awesome stuff. He just stepped out for a minute, I think. Oh, okay, if he didn't come back soon, I'll just boot him and we'll let somebody else in. All right. Hey, Canadian he service guy. We'll just boot him. You are in my. Honestly, um, out of here. You were YouTube uh, gun channel earlier. Um, you were talking about wanting to start up. You were in my video, uh, my live thing earlier, where we were talking about newer. Uh, gun channels and firearms. Show, my, show my uh, bear channel. gun. You were asking me to show my bear gun. Canadian stuff. What's uh? You guys have concealed carry up there at all? There's my bear. Pistol. No, in his in his answer to the question, he said that they don't have concealed carry. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't actually right, have concealed also, carry. It's also illegal carry. to carry in your car. 
Yeah, yeah no, I want these. Then you say that there was only like twelve open carry permits released last year in Canada or some crap like that. Yeah, last year there was twelve uh, open carry, and uh, like literally one guy didn't file his paperwork last year early enough. And this this is where I get the prospector. He's a prospector, and uh, because he didn't file early enough, they actually denied him for the because he actually had a lapse. And he's has to go out in bear country now, and actually doesn't isn't able to carry a firearm with him. Now, are you allowed to have, get raped for his gold? Are you allowed to have uh, firearms in your house? Yes, you're allowed to have firearms in your house as long as you actually have uh, the proper permits. And uh, with the proper permits, uh, renewed every five years, by the way, um, then you can have them. And, and they you're not allowed can, to have them, and, and not they, not loaded though. And uh, they don't. I was going to say, what? can you load them and shoot people that try and come in your house? No. You can't shoot on me. Yes, you can. No, they don't consider you can shoot people. I thought that you were not allowed to shoot people. Well, I mean, technically speaking, you're not allowed, allowed to shoot people. But the way that, the way that it usually goes when you shoot somebody, I mean, there's a guy here not long ago. There's there's people outside his home throwing Molotov cocktails at his home. He uh, shot and killed one. I think another guy got away. Yeah, I mean. He killed one of them, and he was actually eventually acquitted of the charges. But you're pretty much when you when you use your firearm or any firearm, whether you just wave it around legitimately or not, you're going to go to jail, and you're going to be prosecuted. So they don't consider your vehicle an extension of your home, then? In uh, well, well, it's it's I mean anywhere in in the city, right? I mean if if I I actually you know if say you own rifles and you want to transport your rifles from one location to another. I mean, you're you're not really bound to leave them at home. You can carry them around with you, but they have to be locked up in a case, yada yada yada. And in in transporting them, if somebody attacks you, and there's a threat to your life, you use your weapon, right? And that's that. So I mean, you'd get pre charges pressed on you. You would probably defeat the charges, though. Is the thing. So you'll be very so you're guilty and until you can prove that you had a reason to, to be. Um, yourself. I mean, it really, it's the same way in Canada as in, in the U.S., but where there's no, I mean, you're technically innocent until proven guilty, but the uh, the DA is going to treat you like guilty until proven innocent. Did, did they seize the firearm you use in the event, like if you use it, yeah, during the proceedings? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it, if you, um, they, they probably would keep it as evidence, but I mean, they, they might give it back. I don't know. It all depend. That's messed up. Someone, Nick, just Nick, to answer Nick. a question from the chat real quick, someone asked me if I knew of any packs that will carry a full-size 45, or they said MERS that will carry a full-size 45. Yes, like this Maxpedition bag here that I use will carry a full-size 45. It's got the little zipper top, and if you can see, I don't know if you can see down in there or not, but uh, I don't know if there's enough light there, but there's like a little holster, a little Velcro holster down in there. My full-size 45 fits in here just fine, pulls right straight out. So Max Petition bag does carry a whole full size forty five. I did find. Uh, but does it match your boots? If you're wearing black boots, it does. Mm -hmm. I did find North Korea or not North Korea, South Korea's statistics on gun ownership. Right uh, on. They have about one point one firearms per hundred people. So pretty yeah. pretty low well ownership. Well, at least that's something. We yeah, learned. they have um, five hundred ten thousand firearm esti or estimated firearms in South Korea. 300,000 of them are legally registered, uh, and most of the firearms there appear to be shotguns because they only have 1,700 handguns and 35,000 rifles. Okay, I want to address that something like the someone said winning, in the, I want to address the fact that someone in the chat said Ed Brown is the best custom 1911. Ed Brown is a decent custom 1911 if you like a pretty gun. He's good at making his guns pretty. Less bearers guns will outshoot him any day of the week. In fact, most... Uh, There's... Most there, of my Kimbers will outshoot an Ed Brown any day of the week. There, there's a half dozen custom gun makers I could name that are way better than Ed Brown. Well, we can all agree that Chevy makes the best vehicles, right? Yeah. No. I mean, even Cabot Arms, their guns are way made better than their than Ed Brown's, and they're they're actually production guns, not customs. They're just five thousand so. dollars. I love my Chevy. You would. I have. I have my 2010 Duramax and I love it. You from, from Government Motors. I don't like, you know, like partially stuff. partially funded by the 
the cash for clunkers. I used my old truck to buy my wife a new car, and then I bought a new truck, like most of the people that use the program. If Honda did. made a car, or uh, I'm sorry, if Honda made a gun, what, how good would it be? I don't know, it, it, it would, it would it'd run for a long time. A bunch It'd of people like would really it for many years, and then like a whole bunch of people would like it, and then people would like curve the bullets with it or something, and yeah. kids would like it, and they'd put brakes on it. <laughs> yeah. They they put instead of putting uh, silencers, they put magnifiers on it. <laughs> Loudeners. <laughs> Loudeners. <laughs> there you go. Oh, uh, I don't know. I'm not gonna say this right, but like Louis Vuitton, like handbags, if they made a gun. Hmm. Cost cover, cost ten thousand dollars, and not be any better than a regular gun. <laughs> the prestige of carrying it. Yeah, we'd have to bunch of knockoffs. I bought my mother. I bought well. I bought my. She's like my best friend's mother. We kind of consider her like our adopted mother, and I bought her a Louis Vuitton wallet from the Louis Vuitton store at the at the. Uh, uh, Pioneer Place Mall, which is the mall that rich people go to, and it's also got the Apple Store in the bottom. So yeah, I'm familiar <laughs> with that mall. But uh, <laughs> bought her a Louis Vuitton wallet. Went in and literally brought like the just it's only about this big, you know, it's not a big one. It's one of those fold up women ones, you know, pop open, have the stuff in the front, and then have like the chain first thing in the back. Six hundred and eighty five dollars for a wallet. So Louis Vuitton can kiss my ass if they ever think I'm buying. Yeah. <laughs> you want to adopt the Yankee? You say you did buy it, or you just went to? Buy I it? bought it. I didn't know how much it was till they rang the son of a bitch up. I was thinking, be like, <laughs> yeah, but it had a hundred dollar bill inside for that price. Usually, I buy her Coach stuff. She likes Coach, so I buy her like a Coach bag, and I'm usually like three hundred dollars for a purse. That's a lot of money. So I'm like, well, you know, the purse is three hundred. So what's the wallet going to be at Louis Vuitton? It's probably a little more than a Coach wallet would be. So I was figured <laughs> it's probably going to be around three hundred dollars for a wallet. Six hundred eighty-five dollars for a wallet, and then I was too embarrassed to not buy it after they told me how much it was. <laughs> oh shit! Boulder, or, uh, Texas. That, first of all, that's one hell of a link, and uh, second of all, that's good stuff right there. Louis Vuitton. Yeah, yeah I found a Louis Vuitton themed SKS. So oh yeah. You know, I'll, I'll say this though: the Louis Vuittons that I see in Mexico are much more reasonable for Louis price. <laughs> <laughs> AK-47s, too. Wow. They're gorgeous. They had some rips for a Walther PPK that were Louis Vuitton. Wow. They're absolutely gorgeous. Just, wow. Definitely the ones you put on when you go to the governor's barbecue. Oh, it's weird. I had, um... Someone just have someone drive a truck to their living room. What was that noise? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to move it as fast as I could. It was me. I just stepped out. Oh. Sorry. I have a very rich relative who lives in Texas, actually, um, oddly enough, and uh, she had joked around, I said, well, you should think about buying a gun. Well, no, we live in a gated community, blah, 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 you know. And she's like, it would have to be diamond encrusted. She named off some other handbag name brand. So make them. You know, and like, uh, then, yeah, you show me that link. I'm like, I bet you she'd buy one of those. Go to Gunsmoke. They'll, they'll charge her way too much money to make her gun look fucked up like that. <laughs> That's funny. That really is, though. I mean, some of these are really creative. <laughs> you see any of the bling guns they were finding over in Iraq or whatever when they were going through all the the gold plated AK forty sevens? Those were awesome. Uh huh. And I want to know what they did with those. They should bring them back here and sell them to us. Generals probably kept them, and they went to museums. This is the only picture I can find of it that I have, but someone asked me what was the most expensive gun I've ever bought. Uh, this is the most expensive gun I've ever bought, right here. Oh, wow. It was a Nighthawk nickel-plated 1911 with uh, bone grips. It was in the $3,000 range. I kept it for about three days and traded it in on something else because I felt so bad spending that much money for a gun. I just could not get over the buyer's remorse of buying it. So. What did you I trade some, it for? Uh, traded it in on a. For, oddly enough, I traded it in on a FN57 that my stepfather has, plus a couple of, uh, a couple other guns. So. I think I got that. That actually, that uh, Marlin that I have, that 4570, was one of the things I traded it in on, and another pistol. There's something morally wrong with having one gun that costs three grand, 
but there's nothing wrong with having like 16 guns that total up to three grand. Or, Absolutely. Or there's, yeah. nothing yeah. Two, yeah. there's nothing wrong with having two guns that track, but one gun is too, was too, was too much. For, plus, it was nickel. If it been stainless, that seems like a national scourge. We got to get rid of. Let's, stainless, let's, it's still be in a safe. If it's been yeah, stainless, it's still be in my safe. But also, I got home and I'm like, oh, it's nickel. If the plating starts to wear, I've got a three thousand dollar piece of garbage. This is truly gun. classism. We have to get Yankee over this. It's okay to buy a three thousand dollar gun. It's okay. No, I couldn't get over it. I was. Uh, if I can eat up. If I can ever afford one of those Cabot Arms 1911s, there'll be one in my safe. And to be honest, the bone grips are what made me buy it. I loved those bone grips. Mm -hmm. And people think that's the ugliest part of the gun, but I loved that part. It, I mean, it, the, the finish on it, it's definitely... Nothing like having your hand around a good bone. <laughs> the finish, was, the finish oh, you're not telling that's uh, what Danable anything said. he didn't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> the finish on the gun was perfect. I mean, perfect. It looks really. It just. I, it's just a very interesting. Like everything. Very. very it, uh, wow. Just no words. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful, yeah. beautiful gun. But it was way overpriced for what it was. I, I would, would have to. I would have to say the that the, the that the people that buy Nighthawk Night Customs fall in love with them a lot more than even the Les Bears and Ed Browns from what I've seen. Oh, yeah. on the I mean, do you even 11. shoot a gun like that? Because if you shot it, it would get dirty, and it looks so good. But you don't. <laughs> Oh, like I was not buying that. My... I was not going to carry that gun. It would probably come out of the range every great once in a while when I needed to feel like a big shot. That'd be about the only time that. <laughs> would or the or the governor's barbecue. I mean, it's a perfect. Or, or if we would have had an event like the the the, the, the I, I would like to think that if we had an event like the rally up here, I would have open carried that gun. Uh -huh. But I've got lots of nice guns, and what did I do with that rally? I concealed carried my XDS. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would have open carried that day, but it was so flipping cold, my coat would have made it new. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, it's impressive. Some of them, I've seen some expensive guns, and I mean, the most expensive gun I had owned was, I mean, not that expensive, really. I bought a lot of guns, just not overly expensive guns, I don't think. But I had a custom Breda 92 FS, um, and I haven't seen it since, unfortunately. It was a very unique color design that was exclusive uh, we made and it was a uh, matte silver finish with red dots instead of white um, and the frame was of course aluminum but it was black and um, not inox it was uh, matte silver like stainless and it was very similar to the color of that nickel but it not nickel it was stainless and um, gorgeous gun but I never shot it because it was just it was too pretty you know was, I ended up trading it in, but it was a sandblasted finish. That's how you get that matte finish out of this. I mean, it was a pr very gorgeous gun, and I, I kind of, I don't really miss it because again, it was just a gun that I never shot, and I like to shoot my guns. I don't really have safe queens. Yeah, this um, is a this is a bead blasted finish. I bead blasted the finish on this gun. So you got that machine over there, right? Yeah, I've got it right behind me. You can see that red thing with the holes in it. That's not like a weird sex machine. That's actually for. <laughs> Those holes are for your hands to go down into and hold the stuff inside the bleed blaster while you bleed blast the guns. It gives it that nice satin steel finish. It's not a brushed finish. And you're deciding what type of bead you use. You can get anything from a lighter satiny look like this to just a complete dull finish, you know, like on the like the Rugers use. Hey, uh, Strict Nine, you uh, heading out? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go and spend some time with the wife. The kids uh. asleep. Hey, dude, uh, I'm going to have to send you an invite again for another live chat down the road or something on one of mine, too, because I uh, yeah. keep making those videos, too, brother. Oh, okay. yeah. Some people I've sent uh, chat links to, yeah, the, so uh, there's an opening coming open here. Hey, so. Yankee, i got a cruise as well. Thank you for okay. letting me come out. I'll probably be listening and commenting a little bit later, but I won't be on. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, the awesome. best time is, is late night. I'm work swing shift, so, so later, everyone. Is, Anybody that's still got a uh, link can come on in. Hey, Dan. Links out yep. I'm about to put this Mosin back together, and I forgot which damn, which, which, uh, the long screw, which one does that go into? Oh, let me think here. Um, long screw. The uh, long hole. Yeah. The deeper <laughs> of the two that? holes. <laughs> There's going to be two holes. It's going to fit in one of them. If you're talking about the magazine, um, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, it's been a minute since I pulled that apart. Um, 
It's going to be going the one that it fits in. <laughs> it's significantly longer, so... It should That's be the okay. front, I think, of the trigger, if I'm not mistaken. The big one will go in the front? I believe so, yeah. It goes in front of the trigger on the magazine well. Okay. I'm almost positive of it, but I, I, it's been a minute since I've torn my completely well, down. I, I just, I just uh, trial and error... You're, you're not going to mess it up. You'll know when it doesn't... In the chat, they're saying it's the one in the back. Oh, is it? Okay, oh, okay sweet. Then it's the one in the back. <laughs> I'm see. working my way up the list here, so if your name's down towards the bottom Aluminium of the list, you should have gotten sent that. links. It's been a long time since I've had my completely stripped down. You know? Yeah, somebody said you can't mix the screws up. I'm like, yeah, they're too different for it to not thread, I think. <clears throat> the gentleman that just came in, who are you? So I don't send a link to that person again. Uh, I am uh, South Carolina Mike. Oh, okay. uh, I got a YouTube channel. Appreciate the invite. Oops, it looks like somebody else got in already too here. So, all right. So. Oh, hey, South Carolina. I'm uh, I'm supposed to be taking a trip to Myrtle Beach in July, and I want to know if South Carolina is reciprocates Georgia's carry laws. Why Why are you going to Myrtle Beach? Uh, Did you think it was 1988 again? <laughs> Myrtle Beach is a shithole. I mean, uh, it's a great place. Whoa, whoa, wait Can a minute. Can you make it all wait 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 uh, we've actually cleaned up Myrtle Beach a lot, actually. There's a lot of green space. They've uh, done a lot to uh, remediate Myrtle Beach a lot. Actually, it's actually a lot nicer than it was uh, about 10 years ago. But, uh, no, we do not reciprocate Georgia's uh, concealed carry permit. But if you do like I did, like Georgia doesn't reciprocate South Carolina's permit either. So what I did was I got Florida's uh, non-resident first. That's what I got. And then... I, and then I got Utah's next, so I've got South Carolina's C D uh, we call it C W P concealed weapons permit. Then I got Florida's non-resident, and then I got Utah's non-resident. So, but Those you can you, now can you I get can a, go, uh, go ahead? I was going to say, can I get a carry permit for South Carolina not being a resident? Uh, no. Now, but if I got a Florida permit, does South Carolina reciprocate Florida? Yes. Okay. okay. Who's getting that feedback through there? Okay. I think that's Michael. I think you're getting some feedback through your mic, uh, Michael. You familiar with a with a uh, with a hotel called the Ocean Reef Hotel there in South Carolina in Myrtle Beach? The hotel. Mm -hmm. No, no, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, not familiar with that one. Uh, I used to stay there all the time when I was a kid when I was younger. So. You got to mute yourself when you're not talking, because I think I'm getting. Let me see if that's you. Yep, that's you. <laughs> you're in a real hard static through your mic. Okay, usually I'm the one that's fucking up, so I kept muting myself to see if it went away. Nah, yeah, it's it's Zulu. Zulu. Uh, I'm I'm muting myself when I'm not talking, so. Yeah. See, so like right there, we can hear it real bad. And then when your yeah, microphone right. is dialing a 56k modem. Yeah, it sounds like that's what it sounds like. No, I'm just kidding. I have cable. Okay. Anybody? Any topics in the chat, or uh, anybody in here got a topic they want to talk about now? I'm just curious what everyone's favorite bolt gun is, or bolt cartridge rather. Favorite what? Uh, bolt gun cartridge. Caliber, go, I would guess. Let's go would. left to right. Yep. Yeah. Um, seven six two by fifty four R. Three three oh eight for me. British 303. I don't got a favorite. Go to cop out. You should have made up something. You should have rattled <laughs> off some weird numbers that none of us know. You would have thought, wow, he knows a lot about guns. I've never even heard about that one. 9.7 Swiss. Yeah. What? I could have just... Well, like, like I like the Swahili 8749. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good round. 54R, done. My brother. Yeah, 30-06. Uh, 308 for sure. Trader. Uh, I'm going to be the oddball. I'm going to say uh, Thor 408. Um, 270 for me, Winchester. I'll also be uh, cast my lot with the 308. I think you like the 270 because you're scared of all that moose up there. <laughs> I like the 270 because it's still available. <laughs> it shoots flat, too. 
I bought some for my 270 the other day just because it was there. I'm like, well, I've got a 270. I might as well buy some ammo for it. I don't know why you guys all like flat shooting ammo. I like mine to curve because I'm shooting so far. I need to deal with the curvature of the earth. And I stuff. like mine to curve around the things that are in front of the stuff I want to hit. We call that horizon effect in the tactical world, by the way. The Coriolis effect. <laughs> hey, speaking of that, Yankee, uh, since you're talking about buying, like, since it was there, uh, have any of y'all noticed uh, any particular ammo coming back in the stock where y'all live. I know most of y'all are on the West Coast. Uh, we've 45 calibers coming in like crazy over here in the East Coast, which is really? nice for me. I'm a, I'm a big South Carolina, uh, big 45 caliber guy. So, um, I mean, I've got a couple nines too. Uh, the nine millimeter. Are the prices just... higher than what you used to pay? No, no. Fortunately, uh, no, it's not actually. A lot of the uh, 45 caliber is a lot of Hornady stuff coming in. The uh, the only full metal jacket I can get in nine millimeter is Takashi, which I can't really complain about. I've been shooting it the last couple weeks. The first time I've ever shot it was like three weeks ago, um, and haven't had any problems with it at all. It's slightly, uh, I'm, well, I don't know. I wouldn't even say it's dirtier than let's say Federal or American Eagle. Um, I haven't had any issues with it, but uh, it, it, it's a little dirty. But I wouldn't say any dirtier. <laughs> I've been what price, Iowa, you know, I mean, the ammo price is going to get so high that it's worth it for the drug dealers to just start smuggling in instead of the like drugs that they smuggle across the border. And, but I have to ask now. And that's how we win the war on it drugs. It is here, practically. Thanks to because of Mike's fashion sensor, I just have to ask: Do you only smack your life up when she deserves it, or just <laughs> <laughs> make me a sandwich, woman? Get back yeah. in the kitchen. I love it. Only when she deserves it. Good. That's always nice to hear. <laughs> uh, I have a question, I guess, since there's not much. What would uh, What's everybody's uh, next gun, if they could purchase one? You know, what would the next, the next gun on the list be? Yankee Marshall uh, 650 double action. <laughs> I'm worried about a 10, 10 gun max, so I don't want to re get over that maximum, so I'm not going to buy any more guns. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, right, right. I can't Just think of anything I want right now. I'm kind of trying to decide between getting myself a nice stainless pair of six shooters for my gun belt instead of the fake case hardened ones I have now, or get me a. Uh, I really would like to luck into finding a Broberg, but I'm not going to find a Broberg anywhere. No one's going to. So. I'm, I'm saving up. selling my Broberg, but. Yeah. I'm, nah. I'm, I'm saving up for a Springfield M1A. Uh, that's that's a nice actually that's a nice rifle. Uh, I, it's so hard around here. I gotta say I'm I, I hate to say I'm taking advantage of people around South Carolina for the crisis that's going on, but there's probably three firearms. Uh, one being a HK USP 45 full size stainless. Uh, then there's a HK, which that's why I was trying to comment earlier in the comments. Uh, if anybody had any experience with it, but it's, it's, it's called a, it's a H and K 45 USC. It's a rifle. It takes 45 ACP. Um, and then also, there's another deal lately that I've come across on a set me, uh, not an HK 91, like an original set me, and it's a really is good it a Century Arms set me? I don't think it's a Century Arms. It's uh, I mean, I, I've only got to take a couple seconds to look at it. I'm taking another look at it tomorrow, actually. Yeah, because um, if it says Sentry Arms, I'd stay away, personally. Okay, well, that's good to know. Like I said, those, those are the three, which, I mean, I've already got an HK-45 compact and an HK-9 millimeter full-size USB. So the stainless is just kind of like, I don't know. It's just pretty. But the the... The USC 45 rifle H and K is overpriced. Very <laughs> well. It, it goes for 2200 around here. Yeah, my brother-in-law's got two of them, and I just think they're overpriced. Two of the well, H and K rifles, I think they're overpriced. But see, the guy that I'm talking to is willing to let it go for 1400. It's still so. Worse. How many? Ma how much are the mags, and where can you buy the mags? Oh well, that, that I haven't even done the research on, but it comes with three. I would much so. rather have had like a. Beretta CX4 that I would spend the money on the HKs. 
Yeah, I'm I'm kind of an HK junkie ever since I got on them. Um, I I got a late start in my plethora of firearms building, and I've had a got few. lucky. And I I just I just think that the the workmanship and the way they just I mean I've taken like my my HK USP 45 compact. I mean I actually had to do a complete rebuild on it, and when I went to go do a rebuild on it, it was. And mine dates back to '98, yeah. and I was astonished how well it held up. So, well, see, my problem is uh, with the H and Ks. I've owned a couple, like the the, the P2000 SK and the, a couple of USPs, and I own a Phytone uh, USP right now. And my problem with them is they're very well made polymer guns, probably top of the line polymer guns, as far as I'm concerned. But to me, even the top of the line polymer gun isn't equal to a moderately made steel gun. So I'd rather spend the money on a good steel gun than have a polymer when, that I spent that much money on. When it comes to uh, duration, this goes back to the 40s and still fires. Yeah. So get a if you want to get a you know, if you want to be a fan of a the company. Yeah. It's yeah, I mean, I guess it, for me, uh, and to borrow the phrase, the POU, philosophy of use, um, yeah, I'm a TMP here. Uh, you know, basically okay, it comes where's down... Where's the kick button? <laughs> 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 so, oh, it disappears. Uh, come on, really? really? No, but I mean... Oh. <laughs> really? We'll have none of that heresy in our chat. <laughs> I said I started as a TMP. Okay, I was gonna say he. We'll just refer to him as he whose name shall not be spoken. <laughs> hey, the guy does decent reviews. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I always fall asleep at about the thirty-five minute mark before he gets to his point. I will so what's say the it, application it, of a of a fourteen hundred dollar rifle that shoots pistol ammo? Like, what's where does you know what I'm saying where does that fit into your scheme or whatever? Okay, well, if I have a full-size USP as my sidearm, and then my backup is a USP 45 compact, which I have on my plate carrier, okay, then I can use the universal ammo for all three of my for all three of my weapons, basically. But the mags are still separate for the carbine, right? They are still separate. That is the one downside. But I mean, if if you're if you're wearing a battle rig on your plate carrier, then you're wearing at least three magazines on your plate carrier. You've got one in your rifle. If you're wearing a, a war belt or a battle belt, okay, then you've got your sidearm on your battle belt, and then you've got at least two more for your primary, which would be your rifle, and then you've got another two to three for your sidearm. Right on. I mean, I'm not going to debate somebody on their loadout, but now you've got that loadout for an engagement. You go out there, you roll around, you get a bunch, bunch of them dented and scraped up empty, you know, you bring back some, but you're going to lose some, so you're going to have to have some in reserve. So now you've got to, you know, add the cost to those that you're going to use to replenish those once you ever use them up. And then, uh, well, I don't know. For me, that seems like an issue when you're, you know, not sky's the limit on a budget. And then think about replacement parts. You're not going to be able to go to your buddy, in, you know, next door, or, you know, down the street or something and say, hey, you got a bunch of spare parts for this HK? So no, no, I, your own replacement yeah, part. Mercedes just saying, yeah, it's you have to call Europe to fix it. And it's not like HK sells replacement parts. You know, their philosophy is where HK go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you're not, you're exactly right on that. I They're mean, honey badgers. Well, they don't give a shit. It's hard for well, like people hey. that buy, you know, like in agencies and stuff that buy their stuff to get stuff repaired. So I'm just saying, you're really getting yourself into a niche. Well, I, I mean, I, I, well, I'm to the point now where my collection, like, I, my AR is done. It's it's maxed out. I mean, it's it's. I can't even honestly think of a part that I don't have on it. I mean, it's not like craziness. I'm just saying, the AR that I have is completely done. So, I have that. I have all my mags that I need for that. Um, that, the fact that the deal just came around, it's just stuff that I'm, I'm perusing around that, that comes around because of the crisis that we're going in. There just seems to be a plethora of, and, and apparently nobody around here has any money to buy guns, too, except for... You uh, lost this whole crowd when you used the word plethora. 
No, I agree with you. There's tons of guns hitting the market, but that's the other thing. Is it's a buyer's market right now. Everybody wants to sell their stuff and everyone's you know, like and change plethora. things around. Everyone's like, plethora, is that like a Scandinavian rifle? What is that? As long as there's no plethora marriages, I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah, plethora yeah, and Guardian. More or less, the HK USC is just something that I think is cool. But... Well, I'm never going to crap on somebody for just buying a gun they think is cool. I'm just, just saying I wouldn't call it a practical gun at all. Unless I don't like, agree with that gun, then I'll crap Cadillac. on it. Not a Cadillac. Something from Europe. Someone listed me a site here that has Bobergs in stock, but I, they got them in stock at full MSRP. So. You know, Yankee wants his guns cheap. Well, I don't want to pay full MSRP. We don't pay that MSRP. Uh, why can't I say MSRP right now? M. Although I would you probably keep ducking almost, off screen to drink beers. Although if I would find if they if this uh I guess they consider the two tone the standard I don't know if I could find out if that was the standard two tone I would probably call them right now and buy that. What would you guys call say? Them Monday and see I mean, mean, honestly, I'm debating whether or not to drive like an hour tomorrow to go to the Florence Gun Show, which is an hour for me tomorrow. Apparently, there was a guy in the chat that went there today and said they had a Glock 30s, which is on my hit list. I have to have that pistol. Um, in I my experience, 30. I am disappointed less often than more often when I go to gun shows. I, I am more often always pleased that I go to a gun show. I'm always disappointed. As far as what I'm buying, I'm always, but I'm always happy I went because I go there with the intention of I'm going to eat some peanut brittle and eat a five dollar hot dog and just walk around and talk to people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. that's pretty much it. <laughs> Sell some guns. And now that I'm and now that I'm gun show famous, I actually get recognized at gun shows. So it's, it's you all go to <laughs> flea markets and are like garage sales and like, well, I hope I can buy like some dishes that are like brand new on the shelf, except for a cheaper price than Kmart. That's what I expect at a flea market or a garage sale. Where do you go there trying to buy something used that's like hard to find and collectible? Maybe it's, something that's well, you know open, and you're buying nine of them instead of the full ten, so it's a, a discount. I just go to go, I just go to uh, yard sales to feel better about myself. Estate <laughs> <laughs> sales. That's where I go to feel better about myself. And to buy clothes. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna jump out of here, Yankee. I do appreciate the invitation, um, but it's it's been a long night, and I've. Uh, there's no Walking Dead tomorrow. No, but there is Game of Thrones. Oh, that sucks. I just got the sad, sad. a little bit. Very I just sad. made myself sad. Uh, all right. Well, hey, is, is anybody my... watching uh, Vikings? It was good to see you guys. I you mean that show that's yes, not Game of Thrones? Awesome. You, you mean too, that show that's not Game of Thrones? You too, Dan. Take it easy, brother. Yes, it's not Game of Thrones. Okay, I'm going to send out some more links here so whoever gets in first. So what are your guys' opinions on... I've got a rifle coming in that already has an optic on it, but it's like a close quarters optic, and I'm looking for um, a scope for my AR-15. But not is like... Is it a one-times? Is, is it a one-time, or is it like a one-and-a-half, two-times optic? Is it just like zero magnification? What, uh, what I, what I, what's coming in the mail to me? Or? Yeah. My FFL, it's it's no magnification. It's just a red dot. So you so want to you want a, a, you want a regular a scope, AR. A regular huh? scope or a red dot? Oh no, I want like a regular scope. Uh, Nikon two, uh, the Nikon two two three. I have one on those on my AR. It's uh, it's turrets are set up for the fifty five grain, uh, you know, bolt tail, uh, bullet, and it's about a. About two hundred and twenty-five, two hundred fifty dollars. It's a fantastic scope. That's what I would recommend for you. Nikon two two three. That is a good scope. However, I have I have a question to your question. Uh, what kind of yardage are you looking to actually shoot at? Uh, I mean, I think I'd, I feel like at least like to reach out to the maximum effective range of an AR fifteen. No, well, I mean, okay, uh, but, but oh, what? Wait, like when you go to the range or the whatever range you have available to you, what are you going to put your target at? Mm, I probably, I mean, as of right now, I have no outdoor range to really consistently go to, so I couldn't okay, really tell Okay, well, that's 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 going to be an issue because depending on what kind of optic, whatever you decide to go on, 
you're going to need to train with that optic. And if you're talking about maximizing the potential of an AR, and I have gone all the routes, and I came, I went way long with an ACOG first, sold the ACOG, came back to CQC, and now I'm kind of mid-range, and I'm running a EOTech with a magnifier. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that was the thing I was going to suggest. If the dot isn't that large, like if it's a if it's a one or two MOA dot, I like I have an aim point comp M4. Uh, just get a twist mount or a flip to side mount and put a magnifier on it, and you can have both. Plus, a magnifier will be cheaper than a new scope as long as you're not buying like aim point authentic or EOTech authentic gear. Get like a third party company like Sun Optics or something. Hey, I'm all the way over to the left. I don't get to be over the way over to the left very often. Lonely over there. Okay, we've been Lining gone for political. we've been going for two hours now. We'll go ahead and keep going since we still have over 500 viewers. So, so we'll keep. I call for new questions right in the chat, so. though. Yeah, give us okay. something to chat about. Yeah, let's we didn't finish the ideas. last one. My uh, my next purchase is either going to be if they bring back the threaded barrel option by the time I have the money to get it. A um a two uh, a two two six mark twenty five, and if not, uh, I like the feel of it, but I haven't fired it yet. But uh, Yankee Yankee's uh, endorsement of it has shoved me in the direction of the oh, FNX yeah. Tactical forty five. Yankee's just on FN's payroll, though. I like the FN's. I like, the, I like having a. I like the idea. I like the idea of having a, you know, a. a Combat pistol that's a double stack 45 with the threaded like all the you know all the things that you would expect in a combat pistol, but in a 45 because I'm used to I'm used to them being in you know nine. I was in the military you know I had the M9, but I actually want a 45. I still have 45 ammunition because I sold my last 45. Okay. What did I miss something? What did I get? What did I endorse that you're buying? The, my next pistol it'll be either be if they bring back the threaded barrel option for it. The Mark twenty two, uh, the Mark twenty five two two six, or your uh, I like the, like as I just said um, I like the feel of it, but I haven't fired it yet. The uh, your endorsement of it pushed me in the direction of the uh, FNX forty five tactical. Oh yeah, that one's a nice one. I like it. I mean, it's not as nice as like the H and K forty five, but it's still for the price. It's a nice. It's preposterously expensive, and it's still half as expensive as an H and K. Yeah, so I mean, I like it. It does. It'll do anything. I can't think of anything this gun wouldn't do that the H and K will do, except for impress certain groups of people. <laughs> and I'm not going to impress those people anyway. So I I can't stand the uh, what is it the uh, is it the safety or is it the actual uh, the hammer the hammer drop on the F N X. The I think the decocker is fine. I mean, I'm not I a big fan of a single. the way it looks, though. It looks just like the Berettas. It's like on the, on the off side. Okay, so if you're right-handed and you use the left side, then it looks okay. If you look on the right side, then it, it looks just like the Beretta, and it's got like that flat bar look. And if they could have just done a little bit more to it, well, it I mean, I don't know. I mean, it looks it's pretty pretty substantial, the decocker. The one thing I don't like is I don't like the way they did the slide release, like a cheap Glock slide release. They could at least put a little bit nicer slide release on a gun that they're charging this I, for. I mean, I like the pistol. Don't get me wrong. One of my best friends just got the FNX 45, and I really like it. I love the trigger on it. Well, the trigger feels my great. feelings if you don't like it. But, no, I mean, it, it, it feels good. I mean, I shot it a couple times, and it feels great. I just It's just when I look at it, I see that distinctive. It, it's the same thing as the Beretta. If you look on the right side, which I'm not left-handed, you know, maybe there's a way to take that off. I, mean, I know on the Beretta there is. I understand it's like what you're... that. It's like that 90 degree flat angle bar, and it just it cosmetically. I just think they could have done I'm a little. I don't understand bit more. what you're talking about. Are you talking about the way the safety looks? Because the safety is horizontal. Okay, I've got it right here. Tell me what. I hate that magazine. The way it sticks out at the bottom. I like that. That big old fat magazine. I like mm -hmm. that. Well, I mean, if you take the, okay, if you what, could get something that'll be flush that. with it, it would only take it. I would only take a round off. You gotta lock it on your screen, Yankee. You keep slipping off. Is it locked on there now? Not yeah, yet. it's the it's, it's the it's the ambi side, Yankee. The ambi side. Yep. What part are you talking about? Uh, yeah. See, I I guess I don't know. Is it the slide? The the slide release. This I, I don't here. know. I guess yeah. Yes. That's that, it right that's there. The slide slide release. Release. Yeah. 
I just that's can't the stand the way that looks. I just yeah, I don't like, stand that's the, the only thing I don't like either because that's kind of cheapy, like done like a Glock slide release. They could at least put like a more three dimensional slide release that I'd been happy. What's good about the, uh, that FNX is it, it has suppressor sights on it, like suppressor night sights. Yeah, they're already on there. But the HK one, the, the new tactical, yeah, HK-45 tactical. Yeah, that, that's... It's even uh, drilled in the top if you're the type of person to put a reflex sight on your pistol. Yeah, it's already got the plate you can take off right here. Oh, that's cool, yeah. And the, the nice thing about these is the slides are stainless on all the FN guns. So if you start to wear, you're not going down to a vulnerable material. It's going down to stainless steel, so you're still protected. That's the thing with the HK-45 How do you justify such a long barrel? What are you trying to compensate for there? Small penis. Yeah, there's actually a couple of those around my area that have the reflex already on them, uh, the tactical version, and they're for sale. I think one of them is going for like 1450 and the other one's for like 1600 And they come with, uh, the, so the one for 1600 has got the, uh, the nice little case. They're both olive drab. They got the nice tactical ballistic nylon case and the magazines and all that junk. That's not you can buy a lot of Jennings. Oh, my thing, my problem, for that price my problem because... is, my problem is I bought this gun and I'd already ordered, done my paperwork for my suppressor for a nine millimeter for my uh, PX4 Storm, and now I'm wishing I had gotten a 45 suppressor that could go on this because it's already set up for it. I don't have to buy the barrel like I do for the Storm. Um, I've heard and I've seen a video where this was a problem, but it may be just company to company. I saw a video out of Silencer Co. where they had this issue. Does the rotating barrel of the uh, P series... Oh, they said like, it wouldn't, so uh, we'll see, because I called them even and talked to them, and they're like, nope, nope, no, it won't have any effect. The, 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 uh, they said the, the, the power of the barrel twi tilt it, the spinning is actually requires less force to move the slot, the, the uh, can than tilting up, so it's actually, they say, works just as well, if not better, than on a tilt-up barrel. It may have just been because of uh, the weird shape of the silencer go silencers, because they're not cylindrical. No. So we'll see. If it causes me trouble, I'll be pissed. Well, of course, I always just got the excuse to buy a Yankee. different 9 millimeter gun to put it on. Did you get the, uh, you the, like the cylinder type? Did you get the cylinder type, or did you get the Osprey? It's uh, flat Oct on the sides, so and it's got a, it's probably the Osprey. It's got like a like a Germany looking bird on the side of it. So yeah, that's the yeah. Osprey. That, that thing looks thick, though, man. That thing would look awesome on a it's, USB. Well, I'll put it on. I'm going to put it practical in its quality. I'm going to put it on this because I thought the shape of it looked the best with the shape of this gun. So I thought it would look cool on this. I've ordered the barrel for it with the threading, which there's a. If I had the information on here, there's actually a company you have to order the barrel from. But I think it'll look good if I ever get my paperwork back. It's almost eight months now, still nothing. So I was about to ask if you haven't, if you've heard anything yet. Nope, nothing. Because yeah, I know we've been, like, been talking about your suppression as long as I've been in the live chats. So. And I, I right. asked recently, and they said, well, if you'd have done it like before the rush, you'd have had it by now. But now there's like, they're telling some people, and the guy that I bought from is telling me that I used to tell people six to eight months. He said, now I'm telling people ten months to two years. This one, Yankee? Yes, that's it right there. Got that little German. Wow, that is a really that cool That thing is freaking sick, man. <laughs> God, it's a little more expensive. A than, it's a little more expensive than the than the than the round one, and I kind of wish I'd have gotten the round one now. But wow. I made all kinds. Well, of that one is their saker. I I love their Rainbow innovation. Cops gun. I mean, I got no problem admitting I made lots of mistakes when I bought it. I didn't know enough about what I was buying or what I was buying it for. Or... That thing looks awesome. I think yeah. that thing looks absolutely just sick, nasty. I love that silencer. I bought it in a moment of weakness, and now I kind of regret it. But. I wouldn't regret it. It's a cool one. Well, also, the nice thing about Silencer Co. is the the way they, uh, the way that they, like serialize their suppressors, where like the 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 backmost plate is the registered part. So if anything's wrong with their suppressors, you just send in the actual broke. You can disassemble it, send in the broken part, and you don't have to worry about any paperwork, sending it back and forth, because the part, any part that would ever be damaged is not the part that is registered. God, I'm just reading the comments. With all these pauses. Never enough ammo chats never have pauses like this. I was reading it. <laughs> yeah, they have pauses. That's because never enough ammo never shuts up for two minutes, so of course there's never a pause. 
So since since the last chat I was talking and uh, I'm thinking about getting the uh, Kimber Ultra as the uh, next firearm for myself. I don't know if anybody had any thoughts on that. Mainly because it, 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 it has a ten thousand round breaking period. No, <laughs> a ten thousand round breaking period before um it's reliable. I think. <laughs> I, I love my. Oh, the chat stuck on Tango Zulu. By the way. Oh, is it? Was it? Who's Tango Zulu? Oh, All the way to the right. All the way, yeah. This is the bird. Yep, that's my uh, Kimber Ultra Raptor. Oh, could you hold it? Hold it there for a second. I, your camera's a little. There we go. Oh, yeah. We're sounding just like seeing the silhouette of a gun. Anyway, against a white wall behind us. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, white wall. The light behind the, uh, you is going to cause a problem. Yeah. yeah. Got the oh, easy grips. I would definitely recommend uh, like ditch the stock grips, whatever come on it, and go with easy grips. Uh, it makes a humongous difference. Like so much of a difference. Like I would never. Like I've already sold the original grips. I would never even think about putting them on there. Uh, Timber Rap Pro Raptor too. Oh, yeah. I will say. I will say. Uh, I, I did um, a thorough Dremel. Uh, polishing the feed ramp again, actually two more times, uh, and the barrel itself. I never had any feeding issues. I did do the proper break-in, uh, like they said to do with full metal jacket for the first 200 rounds. Um, I've only had one stove pipe, and I've got 500 rounds, right at 500 rounds. Oh, uh, now, ultra. Have you have you been uh, putting multiple different types of rounds through it? I mean, is it favor one over another? Or is it... Yeah, what I've run, and uh, I've run the uh, Hornady Critical Duty, 200, and, uh, 200 grain plus P and 230 grain plus P Hornady. Uh, that's the uh, jacket of hollow point, and then I have only ran American Eagle 230 grain full metal jacket out of the Kimber. I forgot, that's earlier today... One, two, Earlier today, I was uh, trying to deal with YouTube buffering issues, and I clicked exactly to this moment in one of Yankee's videos. Dang, Yankee's got a lot of guns. What? <laughs> it was one uh, of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> what? How is that? Walk, is that a walkthrough? He said you have a lot I, of I, I will say also uh, with the uh, with Kimbers. Oh, people ask me, I want to address that real quick because people have asked me that all several right. times in the chat already. Where am I at? I am in my garage, you idiot. That's a green screen. <laughs> <laughs> it is the same one that is behind him right now. It's right there, and you're asking me questions about it. I'm like, there it is, right there. It looked like you had 20 Lorsons. Yeah, no. What were you saying about the Kimber there for a second? All right, I People were saying, I wish I had all them guns. I'm like, wow, <laughs> they're all like $25 crap guns, most of them on that wall. I, I, I would highly recommend when you get the Kimber, Kimber to just completely ditch the Kimber mags. Um, don't even use them and just go ahead and get on Wilson Combat right now or go to every single local gun store that you can go to and pick up at least three or to five. I recommend five per gun, every gun you have. But get the uh, seven round Wilson Combat uh, mags and because uh, that's all I run. Like, I see, like, absolutely Wilson Combat all the way. Um, I, I wouldn't run any other mag in a 1911. In fact, I've even got full-size 1911 mags where I can run eight rounds in their Wilson Combat also. I would not run any other mag. Kim Pro, TAC Mag, Dunham, uh, what's uh, what's the other one? The Pro Mag, uh, 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 I can't even Chip McCormick. Brown. Chip, no, uh, Chip Chip McCormick. McCormick. Chip, I've done Chip McCormick. Uh, Chip McCormick's are great when they first start off. And I don't Cobra. know if it's the Cobras are good. But, but I'm telling you, Wilson Combat, dude, it's the best. Thirty-four ninety-nine per mag. I know it's kind of expensive. Actually, it's not expensive right now, uh, you know, according to the market. But thirty-four ninety-nine mag, you can't go wrong. You'll never replace them. They're awesome. They last forever. That's, that's, so that's glad I'm over nineteen elevens. Number one, one recommend. Some people are asking some questions in the chat about retention holsters, locks in a retention holster, blah, 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 specific level. I forgot what level they asked about, but I will state my opinion on retention holsters, and then everybody else here can chime in in the chat and in the text. Uh, retention holsters, they, people say, well, they got to be good because cops use them. Well, you know, a law enforcement officer is much more likely to be involved in a physical scuffle with someone who might try to take their gun than you are, so there is a reason that it is worth having that es extra liability of having retention on your holster to where that could you could 
possibly have a failure when you try to draw because of forgetting to do something. It's worth it to them because there's a high likelihood they're going to be wrestling with someone who might try to reach for their gun. You as a civilian, nothing more than a decently holding holster, like a regular Kydex holster, is necessary. I mean, unless you're doing, unless you've got a job where you're regularly doing somersaults or something. But otherwise, retention holsters that have like push buttons and things like that, you know, are not necessary for civilian carry. I think they're a liability. I don't think there's anything positive about them. I think it's an extra something to go wrong in the event you actually have to draw your firearm. It's um, like a safety on your uh, <laughs> holster. It's like a safety. Well, it, it's a safety for an additional safety on your gun, kind of to a degree. Right. Just, you Just know, get could, yourself could a decent you holster that it clicks in and out of, and don't worry about having buttons to push or snaps to do or. Yeah, well, the one thing. Uh, Nate, Nate, we're tactical, professional series all the way. No, I, I, had, one of those right and I, return, I had to return mine because yeah. I didn't. I couldn't get used to that twisting. Yeah, everybody uh, do twist left to right. I already did mine. David did his, and then we'll go to David Brown here and go on. Which he was already talking. So, okay. David oh, oh, well, for, uh, what was the question? I'm sorry. Or D. I was, Cooper, your your. Yeah, DB Cooper. David Brown's not my real name anyway. No. If you're jumping out of a plane, you probably need a retention holster. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, would I like a retention holster? Hell no. I mean, I buy really good Kydex holsters. When I push the pistol in, it clicks, it snaps in, and that's all I need. I think if it saves just one child, then we should have some sort of a gun lock that puts a lock through our trigger on our holsters, and then some sort of a biometric thing that gives us some sort of a communications link so we can say why we would want to draw our holster on another human being. So if it saves just one child, so like but, what if, but what if it saves one ugly child? It, it might be like child. carrying a large metal box on our sides, but it's worth it. Unless a bunch of kids get clunked in the head with our holster. <laughs> I only use holsters for scissors. Um, that's about it. Everything else is Mexican care. I knew you were a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's sexy, Stone Guy? No, I just... <laughs> All right, G Wiz, what about you, brother? What you said? He said oh, you did. Okay, did it's uh. We're to help. I think we need extra retention. T T J J T. He wants to save all those ugly stupid children. Ah, uh, no, I really don't care for any retention. Uh, the only thing that I have that has any retention is for when I open carry, I do a serpa, but uh, that's it. Well, that would be and uh, which would be retention. Yeah, I don't do retention except it's for when I carry my one that's got retention. <laughs> no, it's only for open carry. Uh, the question was CCW. Well, still, so. even with open carry, so how likely is it someone's going to wrestle you to the ground for your gun? Let's see. I only do that because when I'm open carrying, I'm usually on the quad, so I like that little extra. Well, so it doesn't bounce out. Let's see. That makes yeah. sense. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. I've lost kind of a gun under that before, so. <laughs> I've had a rifle. I've, I've had to do that fun thing of going back through the woods at night with a flashlight, <laughs> trying to find out where your rifle fell off the back of the three wheeler at. I prefer a flap though, so that I can take the flat like that. What is it, the Bianchi holster? You can take the flap off if you want. But if you're gonna be horseback riding or something, or riding a quad, you can put the flap on for retention. Uh, well, well we I, going uh, left to right. Yeah, I guess I saw me. Um, I, I, you know, I, ca I do. I carry outside the waistband every day, and I just got used to uh, to carrying uh, a level two, level three retention holster. Um, so I, I do carry a Serpa, and a lot, a lot of my buddies, you know, screwed with me about it. But I can draw and have a shot on target. As fast, if not faster, than anybody without a retention holster. As long as your, uh, as long as your holster operates properly. Or as long as you push the button. As long as you stress, don't forget under stress, you push the button. Well, if you, but if you think about it, when you go to grab for your gun, your well, finger so automatically comes to, to that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really not that big a deal. But like I said, from you know, past uh, past career, it just got used to, to carrying that. So. Hey, Stone Guy, have you seen those? What are the uh, um. Not DeSantis, 
Th there's like a thumb lock one. It's just like yeah, a Safari, Safari Land. Land makes a thumb yeah. lock one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the one you had to have yeah. at the department. It's it's a little thing that actually holster that comes over the top of your slide. That's the reason a lot of people like the thumb better is because you don't have that index finger pushing towards your trigger on your way out of your holster. <laughs> I tried one at a store and it was it was awesome. I, I don't need it, but if I had to have a retention holster, that's that's the one I would try. Alright. Just for everyone's rec yeah, reference here I'm is, running right there. Here is a be here just for reference for everybody. Here is one of the Bianchi ones that has the weird offset lock on it. So, you, know, you push that when you go from like the eighties? No, this is still one of their current holsters. It's got it over here because you know but it's real weird because you got you know you can do it with your off finger or, or with your draw finger. But it's weird. I don't like them. The only reason I got the Yankee makes is, good holsters though. I got I bought this holster after a bad experience where my gun bounced out of my holster running across the road because I was carrying a cheap holster. Oh, your great black hawk holster. Yeah, and I had to uh, fish my gun. Not only did it fall out in the road in public as I'm running across the street to the comic book shop, but it slid under the car that was stopped at the red light, and I had to be fishing under someone's car. For my gun. That was when I was first concealed carrying as a civilian, and it was embarrassing, so I overreacted and bought holsters with locks on them. So I've got like four different models of this holster. Who's next? Good. Oh, my bad. We're going left to right. Uh, as far as holsters, I guess we're talking about straight CCW or CWP. Um, Mine's particular for each individual pistol. I mean, honestly, I mean, if I'm doing, if I'm doing the G26, I like the Kydex. Uh, I've done a custom skeleton that just kind of slips right off. Um, this is the probably the, and it's like kind of like a Mick. If you guys are familiar with the Mick holster, but it's a full skeleton. Um, All right, here's a couple of Mick holsters. Yeah, I mean, I I started with the Mick. The Mick is cool. Uh, but I like the full skeleton holster. This actually sits really well uh, with the G26. I wouldn't recommend it for anything bigger than a G26 um, or like on. 27. Put that back up there again because I had the screen locked off. Oh, of you, so. my bad. Here, hold on. Yeah, it's... Uh, hang on, let me move my head out of the way. Now, how does that it's attach a, to your body? All right. It, it's, just like it's just okay. like a mech. It's just like a mech. It's just like a mech. And And actually, what you do is when you tuck it, you put the string behind it, and then it just kind of, let me get my, and it just sits. I mean, it really works really well. And I actually, I've been doing this at, at about a 4, 4.30. Um, in shorts, I actually have a tendency to move it up more to a direct 3 o'clock or a straight appendix carry. I like the versatility of it, and then it, I've got to go a lot of places where I actually can't carry, unfortunately. Uh, my workplace, I can't carry. So I need something that I'm able to easily, like, while I'm in the driver's seat of my truck, able to take off, put it in my center console, lock my center console, go to work, come out of work, get it back on, put it in while I'm in my driver's seat with anybody really noticing what I'm doing. Um, now, when I'm in, when I'm able to carry, and I know that I'm not going to have to be going the whole in and out, in and out scenario, uh, I do like to carry my Raptor and my uh, Nate Squared uh, Professional. I really like the Nate Squared. Um, I had one for the G26, but... If you have to take it on and take it off, it is it is more cumbersome. It's one of those where once you get it on, you want to leave it on. Um, if I was carrying with the Nate squared and I couldn't carry it in a place, I just ended up like taking my taking my pistol, pulling it out, and leaving the holster on, and then going in with just an empty holster, and then coming out and then just reholstering my weapon. But uh, but other than that, I mean, as far as open carry, I've got a G-Code XST, but that's more for, like, IDPA and, and range days and stuff like that. So no retention? Well, the XXT... The retention uh, was a big deal about this. Well, I mean, I, I think the uh, Nate Squared's got a pretty decent retention. I mean, I know some people can't get used to the whole twist. Um, for me... It just happens naturally, I guess. I've never, I mean, since the day I've had it, I haven't had an issue with it. But yeah, if you don't twist, it's too. not going to come out. Yeah, it, it's, just, it, it's, it's just the way I draw. The pressure I put, yeah. I draw straight up, so it twists right out for me naturally. Yeah, exactly. For me, for me personally, but I mean, even, I did demos with it. I mean, obviously with it unloaded. Um, and had my buddy try to grab it and jerk it out. Um, and obviously he was knowing that I had it there. 
Uh, you know, a regular person wouldn't actually know exactly where my pistol would be, and it's not going to come out. I mean, you're going to grab, you're going to, you, you have more likely to pull the whole gun and holster out than you would just the actual pistol. So, and I mean, that would be like with me not trying to stop you. But uh, as far as like retention, other than just Kydex and the Nate, I mean, I guess I have some sort of retention. I mean, I wouldn't do like a no retention at all. I mean, I, I did the Remora. If any of y'all are familiar with the Remora, uh, it's just basically like a Uncle Mike's, like a glove. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that for anybody. Okay. Retention so, usually means the holster gun won't come out of the holster unless something is released, like the lever is activated. Like, yeah, like a button or taking a snap off or something like that. Right. Yeah, I will tell you though, of all three that I use predominantly, uh, the G code XST that actually has a flip up. Uh, it's like a like a collar it flips up, and it's more of an open carry holster. And if we pass South Carolina, if we do constitutional carry, which is in subcommittee right now, if they pass that, I, I will be using that holster predominantly. Okay, next. Where I'm in Canada, I don't uh, conceal carry or anything like that, but there is a push on to actually get some concealed carry, and if there is, I'll be looking to uh, uh, conceal carry with a retention holster for a uh, gun store. I would say that you guys should push for having, like, what the Mounties have, that kind of crazy, like, leather holster with the shoulder strap, and then it's on a giant lanyard so you don't lose it in the snow, and then once <laughs> they see everybody can walk around with those, no problem, conceal carry will be right around the corner. Yeah, I, I think probably the, the better bet, because a lot of the gun violence in Canada is in Toronto and Montreal. The the better bet, because Toronto, Toronto uh, people will see that more, would be um, getting it so that business owners can conceal carry. And that would be something that most people would say, hey, yeah, that just makes sense. And then from there, that's Unless starting. Chicago. Well, well, you, should just, you should just make everybody Mounties. Yes. Well, there we go. There that way, go. everybody gets to wear those fabulous red jackets and flared pants. <laughs> I love how you said, though, that makes sense. Like, that's the kind of common sense gun laws I can get behind. Yeah, I mean, you know, it just just what I'm thinking. Like, you know, everyone, like, you know, who's who's not going to say, hey, the guy that's been knocked over 12 times, he can't defend himself. But, you know, you or me, most people Chicago. in Canada would... City of Chicago, the state of New Jersey, state of California. Yeah. Well, pretty much all of Canada, too, except for the gun be Yeah. You should what be able you? to defend yourself with those gravy fries. All right, what about you, you Zane, on the, to finish off the holster thing real quick so I get that? Um, I 100% of the time, Gary, in a, in a crossbreed, I do not use retention. However, I did buy one with a molly mount just in case I ever needed to do something that would involve me being in a fast-moving situation where I, you know, I want my gun on me, I'm not concealed carrying, and I'll be on, like for example, like earlier, four-wheeler or something like that. I have it just in case, but I never, ever use it. No, I mounted one in my car that is one of those retention holsters with a button, but if you notice in the video, I filed off one edge of the button so that it clicks in, clicks out. You don't have to actually push the button. Now, uh, David Bloom, you said here, Colin Warr had a real clever Mick holster usage bit about. I will say right now, do not put your gun in your car the way he said to with that Mick holster. You slam your brakes on, gun goes forward, snaps right out of the Mick holster, Hits a brake pedal, fires the gun. Not a good thing. Not a good way to carry. That was an irresponsible video, as far as I'm concerned. If you want to put your gun in your glove box with a Mick holster on it, great. So it's not flying around the cabin of the car with no holster on it. If you're ever in an accident, but just sticking it between the seat with a Mick holster. If you're ever in an accident, that gun's going flying. Mick holster won't stop it. The trigger is exposed. Yeah, I totally agree on that. That Mick holster is not going to keep that weapon secure like that. Was, I mean, wasn't he covering it with his hat? He was yeah, the idea was. Oh, if you put a hat on it, then it's going to stop. Yeah, well, I know when Pumpy had a ball cap on it. Of course, it's totally Well, the hat's on. obviously not going to stop it, but the idea was to be able to have the gun readily accessible because in Texas it's illegal to have a handgun openly displayed in your car. Well, not, not right. one but it's your, also not one Yankees console. and it's responsible to realize you're right. moving things. So. Yeah. No, it makes it, sense. It even make if sense you had to just stop. slam your brakes on because someone stopped that, that inertia, you know, things don't stop moving until they're acted upon by an outside force. So that gun's gonna go flying. Mick yeah, well, going to snap tactically, right it's off. not like you're gonna yeah. like. Oh, I got a phone call. Yeah, I've got an appointment for a gunfight coming up here in the next. 20 well, that that, that brings me, 
That See, I have one. I have one mounted in my car, but I have it mounted to the center console. Where when I stick the gun on, even if I ram someone, the gun's not coming out of that. Okay. See, that's that's where I was going to go. That brings another interesting question to the to the group. Um, when you're riding in your vehicle, okay, where do you keep your do you keep your pistol on you, or do you put it in your wanna, center console? Let's answer, let's answer that real quick uh, in a second. I want to answer one question real fast because this guy's been asking for a long time for this answer. But that's a good topic. That'll be our next topic. Uh, someone's asking about living with a roommate who is a felon. Check your own laws, but usually if you, are, if you contribute in any way to him being in possession of a gun and you know he's a felon, you're a criminal. Yeah, you, you are, just yeah. allowed a felon to have access to firearms. So. That means even if you just leave it late. That means even if you just leave it in your sock drawer and go to work, and he gets it, you knowingly provided access to a firearm to a felon. Yep. And some That's some places will say that there cannot even be guns in the home if a felon is in the residence. So know your state law. That's why I have a don't ask, don't tell policy with all my friends. So you don't tell me a felon. That's what it is. <laughs> Mm, I, see, I always like assume everyone's a felon. I don't let them have a gun, one of my guns. It's kind of like the same thing with herpes. I like to assume that every person I have sex with has herpes because that way I don't have to tell them about my herpes. Exactly. And if I if I catch it, then it's like you know, yeah. well, I kind of use them as a, a test. And well, if I have it, right. they don't get it. You know so, I mean? let's, so let's go to that. his question. Here, how do we carry in our car? Do we keep it in our holster? Do we have special setups? Uh, I will start this one. We're going to start from right to left this time, so that I can go last. Okay. Um, also, this this picture is just uh, G Web's comment about have, sending a transmission to uh, to the police to justify removing a gun from your holster or whatever. That that's it. Reminded me of this picture that I've had in my phone mm -hmm. forever. Is that a real gun? I was just about to ask what kind of gun that is. I've it's never like seen that before. It looks like a styre, yeah. That's what I was going to say. It looks like a styre. Yeah, it doesn't look like it had been, the, the like been crudely joke. rendered. Yeah. But uh, I just I keep it in my holster. It's a zero retention at when I'm sitting. It's at 3 o'clock. So albeit it's not perfect, it's still not difficult to access. Um, in If I'm driving through like the inner city at 3 in the morning, I might put it on my passenger seat. But that uh, underneath, like a book or something. But that's very rare. Usually, it's just in my holster. But when you're going down there to pick up prostitutes, doesn't that get in the way? Yeah, but see, the thing is, it's like Grand Theft Auto. I beat them afterwards, so it doesn't make a difference, and I get my money back. Oh right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, I don't know why else you'd be driving down in the ghetto at 3 a.m. or whatever. Well, you have friends who live on one side, and you live on the other side, and you can't be fucked to drive 40 minutes for a 50-minute drive. That's where the drug oh. goes, too. Right to who? Right to left. Canada. Canada. Uh, yeah, Canada. Oh, you, sorry. You should be, you to, at the end, you're supposed to say A, and then he knows he can start talking. Sorry. Um, a? I don't actually, I don't actually uh, carry a uh, gun in my car, so, yeah, no. I uh, can't really answer that question. What's this all about? <laughs> uh, real quick, since this is my question, uh, uh, if I'm carrying, it, de it depends on the two. The two primary weapons that I carry is a G26. If I carry the G26, I actually do leave it in my waistband. Uh, it sits quite comfortably. I drive a Tundra, and uh, it's fine. However, my other carry pistol, which is the USP 45 Compact, isn't quite nice to my leather seat, so I do have a uh, G-code that I've mounted the uh, RTI wheel in the center console, so when I'm carrying that, I actually have a holster that I mount inside of the center console, so it has retention in there. All right, well, I, uh, I always keep it on my side. Um, I do have a small little, uh, one of those little hand, hit, like, where you put your fingers on the safe, and I'll keep that in my trunk somewhere if I have to go somewhere and I have to lock it up. But if I'm in the car, my gun is always on me. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> He's next. Yeah, I just do a, a, an underdash holster for when I'm in the truck just because uh, 1911 really isn't too comfortable sitting in the seat. So. 
Uh, I just wear it like I or wear my. I don't reposition my gun when I get in the car, and it's still accessible. So I don't. I think if I had to, I would try wearing my gun a different way because I don't think I'd want to have to reposition my gun every time. <coughs> a. Hi. Uh, I'm in California, so I don't conceal carry, but uh, I do keep a gun in my car. But it's under strict California guidelines, which is uh, I have a small safe. Um, disassembled, disassembled barrel in the trunk. The tactical <laughs> condition frames, butterscotch. Can this frame yeah. frame yeah. bolted yeah. under the hood. We can't it load it. It goes up at, at home. It's uh, it's conditioned butterscotch. Can be loaded right? Right across the car. Yeah. Uh, no, it cannot be loaded. This is what it is. I I pretty much clearly unload the gun. Um, the the gun itself will go in the safe, which attached to the car. Um, underneath the seat, so I have to slide it out, and it's like got this weird loop hook chain mechanism, whatever. And the uh, magazine can't be in the same lockbox as the gun. <laughs> so it's the Carrie Butterscotch. The magazine <laughs> goes in the, uh, it goes in the glove compartment because both of them have to be able to lock. So I can either have two safes under my seat, one for the magazines, one for the gun, or I, what I do is to keep the gun in the, in the safe, the magazine in the glove compartment, both of which have to be locked. So I have a separate set of keys detachable from my car keys. So in the event that I need the gun and I have 10 minutes to spare, I slide the safe out, I unlock that, and then unlock, you know, you get the picture. Well, luckily the bad guys have a limited magazine capacity because while you're wiggling all around trying to get your gun assembled, they keep shooting yeah. through the window and they always miss you. Exactly. And then you place the barrel into the slide and then you slide into the frame. It's, yeah, it's I mean, it's a good thing, too, because it's illegal to carry a, carry a gun in California, so the criminals just won't do it, so you'll be fine. Uh, I hope you carry a big knife. I don't. I well, care. the blade has to be in the trunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the handle Jesus. has to be in a safe that is attached to the car. <laughs> I just carry whatever I'm carrying that day. It's usually inside the waistband, Kydex holster, and... About uh, 4 o'clock, I'm carrying it on my waist, but, you know, that's about it. If I was Same, just a really long road it. trip, I'll, I'll put it in, like, a laptop bag or something in the, on the passenger side. Yeah, same here. I just carry my gun normally, as I always would. Um, occasionally, I'll put it in my center console if I'm on a long drive, but that's it. All right, I'll say I one of the people that I got so tired of, one, sitting on my freaking gun all the time, having my seatbelt jab it into me, or two, getting up and seeing the big dents my gun was putting in my leather seats, wondering, is that going to come back out, or is that permanent? So I actually mounted one of the Black Hawk holsters, as you can see here, uh, to the center console of my car, and I'll show you another picture here so that you can see what it looks like from when I'm sitting in the car. When I get in the car, I just take out the my gun, snap it into that, when I get back out of the car, take it out of that, snap it back in my holster. That way I'm comfy and cozy when I'm driving around, especially if I'm making longer trips. Looks well, so like the button's on the wrong side, though. Is it easy button, to get out of there? The button, the button is made to where if you watch the video, G-Webs, I don't watch your never videos. watch Come my on. videos. I took the button, and the way the button works is it's got an indent on one side and it's flat on the other, so it snaps down, but when it hits the flat side, it doesn't come back out. If you just oh, file, right. If you just file an indent on both sides, It'll snap in, snap out. Now you've got to grab it and yank to get it to snap out. So that's what, so it won't come out while you're driving and you have an accident. But if you pull straight up, it pops right out. Yeah, you'd have to like roll or something yeah. to yeah. have it fall out of there. I would love to do that with the RTI, but unfortunately in South Carolina, that would be illegal. See, we can do that, but if we leave the car, it has what to be covered. Over it? it has to be covered. So I'm actually. I actually have bought the material, and I'm going to have a friend of mine sew me a little leather cozy for it. That's like a little shower cap that you just pop over it when you're not in the car. If I ever left it in the car, but I don't ever leave it in the car. But. That'll yeah, do good. Then you can use that like a do rag when you got product in your hair too. Mm -hmm. yep. that, would be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that form would be illegal in, in Texas. We couldn't. See, that's legal here. You'll know it's Yankee because he's driving around the in the in the leather. Uh, shower cap. Yeah, our, laws, <laughs> our law states that the car is if you're if you have a gun with you in the car loaded, it has to be within your control. Doesn't say on your body. Uh, if you leave the car, however, the gun has to leave either leave the car with the person that owns it, or it has to be out of sight. So it would not be legal to leave it in that and then exit the car. 
Mm-hmm. But it's legal to be in the car with it with that. Hmm. That's something that I'm just kind of interesting in that you can... They should always yeah. add a caveat to that. It can be in plain sight if you are hunting and you have to be within gunshot range of your vehicle. Well, we have a, lot of, it a lot of states have laws about even hunting you know, within a certain range of your vehicle. Yeah, South Carolina, actually, if uh, you're going to and from your fishing and or hunting property or in the action of hunting or fishing, you that's the only way we can open carry. Unfortunately, until this, hopefully this passes, like, we've actually got it. It's in full committee right now. It passed subcommittee. It's going to full committee. That's Florida's loophole, too. If you're fishing, you can technically open carry. When's that supposed to be the vote finished on that? Uh, they were actually supposed to vote today. Uh, they were actually supposed to vote today, and apparently there was some rewording they wanted to redo, so they pushed it off. And uh, Maybe they'll get all... it done before I go down there. Yeah, well, and another thing I, I thought I was going to mention on Yankee, um, like with us in South Carolina, uh, the only way it can be on your person is if you have a CWP. Well, you have to have a you have to have that uh, you have to have a concealed license and yeah you have to carry it like that too. Yeah, you have to have a CWP. Now, if you have a CWP, you can carry on your person. If you don't have a CWP and you're just a regular Joe, you can still carry in your glove box or in your center console without any permit or license or anything. Um, but you cannot have it anywhere else in the vehicle. Now, if you have a long gun. It has to be in the rear word of the vehicle or in the trunk. But that is a very sketchy situation because uh, I had a friend coming back from a gun show and he caught a Mauser and ended up in really bad trouble. And, you know, just like law enforcement doesn't know the law any more than the regular Joe does sometimes, so you really got to educate yourself. And I keep actually keep a cop- copy of the state statute in my car, just like I used to on my motorcycle. I used to keep a copy of the state statute in my motorcycle at all times that said motorcycles can turn left on a red light after stop simply because I got pulled over three times for it. You know, until I had to explain to the police officer, no, that's not an illegal act in the state of Washington. A motorcycle can turn left on a red light after stop. Because a lot of red lights are on sensors, and if a motorcycle's at the front of the line, you won't activate the pressure sensor in the concrete, and the light will never change. Yeah, so back up behind yeah, you. Actually, well, yeah, actually, that's that really good you mention that. Um, uh, actually, when I took my concealed weapons permit class, the guy that taught the class actually gave us all a copy of the law and recommended that we keep it in our vehicles at all times. And I've kept that in my vehicle, and actually there was one time... Uh, where I was writing. Now, if it's not on your person, I actually, at this one particular incident, I actually had it in my center console. Now, if it's on your person, you have to legally tell the officer when he approaches you, you have to you show him your CWP, you show him your driver's license immediately. Now, if it's not on your person and it's in your center console or in your glove box, then you don't necessarily have to tell the officer that you actually have a firearm because you're not carrying it on your actual person. And uh, the, law, the law enforcement officer that I was actually in contact with was unfamiliar with that part of the, the law. And I actually to told him... A, never hurts to have a copy there that you yeah. can go over with them. But. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I was more... I actually, I told him, I said, look, I've actually got the law behind my driver's seat in a little pocket, and I'll be more than happy to pull it out and uh, show it to you so we can review it together. And at that point, he was like, no, that's okay, I'll let you go. I want to address two things people said about my uh, system I have in my car. One, that's not my, it's not the Prius. I don't drive the Prius. I just own the <laughs> Prius. <laughs> and Mazda does have other seats. Uh, and uh, as you can see in the picture. Uh, and two, they said someone said something about, oh, I'm damaging my seats. I'm going to do holes in my center console. That piece of plastic for the side of that console is sixty dollars to replace. My seats are seven hundred dollars to replace. And plus, you can just put little snap divots in them, and you can't tell it was ever there if you ever take it down. I think I may end up doing what you did as far as that holster and just cover it up. Yeah, you can make a little, just make a little slip-on cozy for it. Yep. Yeah, actually, uh, next uh, this week coming up, I'm actually going to do a, a review on the uh, XXT and the RTI mounted in my center console, and I'm going to put it on YouTube just so that way people can see it and stuff because it's actually a pretty cool.
today with a uh, bipartisan agreement that. for um, what did they come up with for nationwide? Uh, I hit the wrong. Reckon, you know, like a national rep reciprocity. Reciprocity. Yeah. reciprocity. I said yeah, that right. I said that right in a video the other night on the first try. First wow. time I've ever made a video where I didn't have to edit out the first three attempts to say the word. Let me try again. Reciprocity. There you go. I did it. But um, don't we already have that with most states? That I mean, you, do they it's think most, that's going to work universal. in New There's some states that don't recognize it. I'm from Connecticut. I need to get a Connecticut permit. There's like 20 states yeah, that recognize um, Connecticut. Connecticut. New York City it. will never recognize it. I mean, like New York City be, will be told to eat a silo of dicks. No, that, oh hell no! <laughs> New York City. <laughs> none of the states. Well, is, a lot of the states didn't law. recognize travel through their states, and then the uh, Gun Owners Protection Act of eighty of uh, eighty nine, uh, nine yeah, was it eighty nine, uh, whatever it was, uh, said that you know it told the states you are going to allow people to, the right to travel through. So well, what's gonna, it's what's gonna happen is someone possible. was arrested like last year in New Jersey because their their flight got delayed and then they, yeah, they had to yeah, get off the plane. Well, there was actually no, there was a lot more to that than what. If you read the whole story, they went to recheck their gun in New Jersey after they had been delayed in New Jersey, which means they claimed their gun and was walking around with it in New Jersey for two days. Oh, okay. And tried to recheck it when they went back to the airport. So all right, I wouldn't. Do what'll that. happen is what'll likely happen, DB Cooper is. Um, the, well, the way it is right now with reciprocity is they'll be subject to the local laws. So New York City ha will have preposterously restrictive laws, and you'll have to obey them when you're there. But you're still going to be able to carry if you're not in violation of any of those laws. Like if there's nothing against you carrying in your car, if you drive through New York City, you don't have to put your, you know, disassemble your gun into 72 pieces and put it in your trunk in order to get through the city. Right. And even then, you probably break the law. So yeah, I still, I still don't trust. Even it. then, you get arrested you because they'll never, because the New York City Police won't get updated on it for like three years. Like, yeah, I just don't I'm go sure. places I can't carry, or if I go, I understand that I'm taking a calculated tiny risk by not carrying. I just have a problem the way they report this. Um, like even on, I was watching Fox, and like the way they're reporting this is like it doesn't already exist in most states. Like most states that have a concealed carry permit, we you know we're good to go already. They're just acting like this is a brand new idea. Like on the media. Uh, well, in the news. In, well, in the limited it is. It's an it opportunity is. for us to bring that out. Over the last few years. Well, what's yeah, so, this what's is a so relatively new thing for most people. Most people don't think about this ever. The Concealed carry in, in general is younger than probably everyone in this room. Like, the, yeah, already already about about the, the new wave of it is. Except well, yeah, we were yeah. talking about South Carolina, or you guys, and then the part <clears> of non-resident permit. I want to get one of those too, but like, you know, when you first get your permit, you, you always want to know what states you can drive to on a, on a road trip or whatever. Ooh, someone just asked a really hard question on the yeah, chat. Yeah, actually, actually, that's uh, that's the main reason. Uh, I used to, I'm a big Braves fan, uh, baseball, and uh, I, I've been carrying since 2005, and the reason I actually ended up getting my non-resident Florida was so that I could actually go to Georgia and carry. Uh, because we do not have reciprocity with Georgia, and Georgia does not have reciprocity with South Carolina. So that was the main reason for me getting the uh, Florida non-resident. Now, how, I, could, how, I was going to say, how difficult was it to get a Florida non-resident? I mean, what do you have to do? What is their prerequisites or requirements? Pretty simple. Uh, uh, honestly, if you're in the military or law enforcement, it's actually well, even simpler. You just need an ID, a, and they're like, yeah, you're smart enough to handle a gun. Here's your permit. Yeah. That's how I did it. Yeah, actually, I was uh, I was still active duty when I applied for my Florida non-resident, so it wasn't very hard for it at all. But now I'm a veteran, and even when I applied for my Utah, the only thing I had to do for my Utah non-resident was I actually did have to shoot again. Their shooting restrictions are a little stricter, but it, for your average gun owner, I would say they're not strict at all. Uh, I think you had to get like 75 out of 100 within the silhouette, and uh, that. It's not very difficult at all for the decent pistol. So. Um, on the note of... Uh, we got one hour of warning on our chats. we got one hour to go. With uh, reciprocity exploding, um, when I moved to Pennsylvania four years ago, I had already a Connecticut and Florida permit, and then I got my Pennsylvania permit. And it gave uh, the Florida permit gave me an extra, like, 15, 20 states. My permit lapsed uh, last year in June. I didn't feel like renewing it because the only thing I lost was Ohio. Oh, I got gotcha. you. So I have, I have, to, I, have to, I have to because where I live, Washington, Oregon, even though we're bordering right with each other, we don't honor each other's permits. 
So I have to have a permit for both states, plus I have Utah and Florida on top of that, just to, to cover as many other states as I possibly can. Yeah, you're pretty much your whole southeast. If you get your Florida non-resident, you're pretty much set. And as I told do? people before, the best thing about the Florida permit that I have is Charles Bronson signed it because the commissioner's name <laughs> is Charles Bronson. Oh, sweet. Now, do, do you do all that via mail, or do you have to go down and actually yeah, it's mail. physically? Mail. Yeah, yeah mine was all, all mail. Florida, if you contact Florida, so you didn't have Florida, to take the will Florida course for the Florida carry permit? No, you no. have to have a course. No. Yeah, just a course. I actually sent them a copy of my military ID and uh, my CWP certification that I took here in South Carolina with a $50 uh, money order, and I was good to go. Mm -hmm. And it came back really fast. Mine did, too. It was like three weeks. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I, I think it was to eight weeks, but this doesn't take that long ever. Yeah, yeah mine yeah, was uh, 2007. I think it took about two and a half weeks. Probably take a lot longer. Now. I don't know, though. I, I wonder. I, I still want to see numbers about concealed carry licenses because the last time I spoke to our local <clears throat> sheriff, he was like, or not sheriff, but a representative of the sheriff's office. So I was talking about, I wonder if, how, like, how big has the spike been in concealed carry licenses since the big spike in gun sales? And they're like, We've seen no increase. So oh, like, that, that is so not true for South Carolina. Uh, yeah, we actually, speaking. our local news just had a huge, like our local, like Watch Fox 57, 19, mm -hmm. 10, just had a huge, huge thing. Well, this was like a couple months ago. So I was wondering well, if maybe it was going to be delayed. Like I was like, well, I wonder if in like three or four months or three to six months you're going to see this huge increase in CC people. I mean, they said last year we had 42,000 applicants, and this year we've had double that. And they're actually – actually they're about to up the fee here in South Carolina from a $50 money order to a $75, $75 money order so they can add a second shift. Yeah, so they can add a second shift. Um, this is entirely uh, this, this is entirely like you know uncalculated in the sense of some people have multiple permits, but I've heard it is somewhere in the vicinity of seven million permits are out. But then again, I have two. Four. Yankee uh, has four. Yeah. yeah, I know. In here in in, uh, in my area, they used to A be able to walk in. Florida. <laughs> yeah, Florida has yeah, over a million you, permits that have been issued. There's 17 million people in the state of Florida. Obviously, a lot are out-of-state permits. Well. What I'd also love to know is I would love to know how many people that – and there's no way to know this, and I'm glad there's no way to know this. Actually but carry. But I'd be curious to know how many people have permits to actually carry because I know of – let's say of, of the people I know locally, I'm not talking about people like Luke and stuff from the gun forums that we know carry. I'm talking to just people that I knew personally before I got involved in the YouTube gun community. Uh, I know five people that have permits. I'm the only one of all five of us that carries a gun. Same I was going to echo that. I, I have uh, five friends offhand who I know have carry permits, and I'm the one, the, only, the only one, actually, myself and one other are the only ones who carry regularly. I have a friend who regularly leaves uh, her gun in, uh, in her glove box locked uh, in her car, but uh, everybody else who has a permit that's my friend but doesn't carry, I'm the only one who regularly does myself too. I regularly let my CCW permits fall out in front of chicks because they make that they think it's, you're like a private detective or something cool. <laughs> and I got to use. I actually did not have my driver's license on me the other day at Lowe's because I had bought something offline. And whenever I take anything out of my pocket at the computer, I can guarantee you I won't have it later because I just leave it lay here. So, so I got to Lowe's and needed my ID for a tax free th for a uh, tax free status because we get tax free status because we donate all of our proceeds from. My YouTube money goes to my LLC, which donates all the proceeds to charity, so we get tax-free status for our long story. Uh, so, but I had to prove who I was Team to taxes. get the tax-free. I had to prove who I was to get the tax-free. Hey, I wasn't paying taxes on that barbecue grill if I didn't have to. And uh, <laughs> they let me use my Florida carry permit because it is a picture photo ID with my name and had my address on it. So. When I had I to do know. my uh, IT certifications at my college, that's what I, they needed two forms of ID. I gave my driver's license and my carry permit. Yep. I've used my carry permit to get into bars locally because they would assume my ID was fake, my actual driver's license. So like, I am of age. We can't use our Washington permits as ID because there's no picture. It's just a piece of paper. Is that even laminated? No. No, I, wow. I, put, I, put, I put tape on it so that's, it wouldn't fall apart, but it's just literally a little piece of paper that you. That's crazy. 
<laughs> you get it at a Starbucks and they punch they? little holes out of it every time you carry into the right. store. I wish they'd punch a hole in there and get a free, a new gun. Get free coffee. Do yeah. they um Let's see here I wasn't lying. Do they actual. take your photo for that to, for the Washington carry permit? No, they don't take your photo or anything, but so I don't know if you don't focus in, but uh, well, Yeah, we don't have we I didn't have Charles Bronson on Charles my Bronson. I have um Adam H. Putnam, which is see, not your really sucks. exciting. So now Oregon gives you uh, a nice, a nice, a nice the fuck is photo right? ID too, as I look like a criminal in that photo. But which one is that? That's, that's <laughs> Oregon. This one right here is Oregon. Mine looks uh, like straight, a criminal. Uh, like he, a, he, like he a, straight up looks like a convict in that photo. That is a straight up convict photo right well, there. That's worse than the mullet picture. My well, they do it Connecticut from, permit looks like a goddamn domestic fucking terrorist. Well, they do it from in a way that I don't understand why they're they don't do it this that. way. They do it intentionally. What they do is they sit you in a chair. The camera is up here, and then they say, "Look up at the camera, and we'll take your photo." And they do that because it's a MySpace photo. It's when no, it's when you when an officer is looking at you through a car window, they're usually looking down at you. Huh. So they take it from the same angle that an officer would be looking at you when you're sitting in a car. And I'm like, why don't they do that with driver's license photos? And she's like, I have no clue. But it makes you look creepy because it makes you look like you're looking up at the, like the ceiling while you're taking your picture. Makes me All right, guys, I'm gonna they, should hold your, they should make you hold yeah. your driver's license number up on a card in front of you like it's a mug shot. Yeah, yeah I'm going to head out, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's getting late. Yeah. Hey, you got, guys, take it easy. Thank All you, right, man. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks once. for having me in the chat, Yankee. You're yeah. Anybody in the chat wants a link, send me a PM now. I don't know if I've gone through the list or not yet. But... Better all. Send me another one if you've already sent me one, because I've lost my page of PMs. <laughs> That's what I do. I send you one every hour whenever I'm not in yet. <laughs> All right, so I got another question. Uh, does any Did anybody see where Remington was actually saying they were going to leave New York? And then I actually have the Senate. Oh, uh, yeah, but the government. Yeah, we talking about they got cost, a contract. No. Well, no, yeah, they got a New York million said dollars. said they were going to leave New York, uh, though. They never uh, said that. Did they never say they were going to leave? They or never they said. They've they always said they're staying there. They've been there. They're one of the oldest co companies in the country, let alone gun companies. They're not and moving. I, and I chewed right, up because, Hannibal last night because of that, because of that whole, I'm never buying the thing from again. But there's because nothing wrong with them. From, there's nothing the reason, stopping them from moving out of the state and taking that land and turning it into a nonprofit museum so that the state can never pull property taxes on it and exactly. leave the state anyway. There's, they, well, they're choosing to stay there and do business, so I'm not backing them. I'm just saying I know that they've never said they were going to leave. I mean, I, I heard they, they actually met with uh, Senators James Seward, Hugh Farley, and Joseph Griffo, and then after that meeting, then they announced they were not going to leave. And I'm just curious if, you know, it just seems confusing. Oh, well, not confusing, but it yeah. just seems that maybe they were threatened that they were going to lose that $80 million contract if they were going to leave. Or maybe I just they worked out a deal where they don't have to leave and leave all the employees that have worked for them for 15, 20 years destitute after they walk out of the state. Because who can afford to follow a company on a factory worker's job? Right. I just thought of something like none of their products really qualify as an assault weapon. And if you count like Bushmaster and stuff from the Freedom Group, aren't they in the same group? Well, well, yeah, yeah. Remington's yeah. actually own EMS. Yeah. But all of Remington's real products, like the 700, the 870, even yeah, outside like, of magazine capacity, almost nothing they make. Nothing yeah, they but make that factory, G-Webs is probably going to school me on this, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, Remington, that factory is actually owned uh, by the company that actually makes, and I, I can't think of the name right now, but they actually don't even own the factory in New York. So for them to say that they were going to leave, I don't know. It, it's kind of confusing. In the, uh, Remington's in like uh, Illini, New York or something? I-L-Y something, New York? I-L-O-N. Yeah, there. But, I mean, it's an old factory. I've seen photos of it. It's a big company. They're not just there. They don't make their ammo there, I don't think. That's just where they make some guns and stuff. Yeah. I say don't buy Remington's. If you don't want to. Right, anybody, who free for, anybody who asked for a link, check their PM box. I just sent some out. Actually, thinking of gun companies and laws and where people are in Connecticut, because 
that one company is leaving, and then you have a couple that are contemplating it. Yeah, and actually, I mean, the reason the reason I bring it up and is is because I was actually thinking about buying a Remington 870, and then I saw the article. Nice, love that ringtone. Uh, the reason I was actually bringing that up is because I was actually my next firearm among the couple that I'm looking at, other than the market value that's come up. Uh, you know, is, is a shotgun. You know, other than the uh, Kel-Tec KSG, I was actually, you know, looking at the more reliable Remington 870. And then I saw that article, and I was like, well, I'm not going to support a company that's, you know, going to back a police state because that's what New York is. Well, well here's here's something that you're going to kind of have to hinge on when you're, when you're thinking about that because Remington is staying in New York, but Mossberg's main headquarters is in Connecticut. So the two major shotgun manufacturers are behind the eight ball when it comes to that. Just by mm-hmm. they both sell to the government. Turkey. Winchester imports from Turkey. Oh, well, I mean, well, I mean, other than Remington and Mossberg, I can't really think of a great shot pump shotgun that Benelli is ma- made in America. Yeah. Benelli. Oh, oh Benelli's Benelli is a subsidiary of okay, Beretta. Is okay. Benelli's factory in Maryland? They have a they have a factory in Maryland that I know makes ninety twos, but I don't know if they make shotguns there. What's the yeah, uh, the automatic? What's the what's the automatic Benelli that's like king right now? What's it? The uh, A the M one Field is a nice one. I, I forgot the Army one. M one. Yeah, M two. Is that the that's the automatic? That's like Red Jacket's been modifying them. Yeah, they're sweet, but I mean they're not four hundred dollars. I mean if you're looking for a Remington or a Mossberg, I'd, you know, yeah, I mean, oh no, no, definitely the Remington you know what's a good 70. one in that price range. Um, the Benelli pump, the H two uh, No or whatever they call it. It's like Nova nickel. Yeah, the nickel the plated. Nova. Yeah, it's polymer um, encased uh, aluminum receiver, I guess. You can yeah, still buy their, anything used. Budget, the companies right? don't make anything when you buy a used gun. That's true. Yeah, very There's true. So many very good p- police magnums out there used that are really good deals. Yeah. Uh, what I was saying initially was uh, now I have to read a 138-page document to make sure I don't get arrested the moment I walk into Connecticut because all of my guns have normal capacity magazines. Because that's get how long the new get fucking a revolver. Is. You know what I mean? Get a revolver for these situations. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download all of my magazines. To Anybody seven. out there that's in the chat that wants in that just sent me a PM? I just sent out links to everyone, so... I'm going to download all my magazines to seven rounds, and I'm going to carry four magazines to compensate for the fact that I usually only have to carry one spare mag. Yeah, all right. I know I've asked a lot of questions tonight, but this one's probably the most important, and and I, and I'll start it off. But honestly, I mean, I don't think the House, whatever the Senate passes, I truly believe the House is not going to pass it. But not me. I, I, I'm going to tell you, yeah, see, D.B. Cooper already knows where I'm going with this. If they do, I, I'm. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not complying. I, I'm, no, not I'm going to comply. I'm going to comply. I'm not, not going to buy I'm any comply. guns without a background check. I'm, I'm definitely buying guns. <laughs> no, I. I will. Yeah, exactly. I won't be buying any new guns. But I'm saying, like, if they come out with some. I mean, look these these guys let. I mean, I say these guys. Don't, I mean, don't make a James Jager statement over here. Well, no, no, I'm not don't making a James Jager statement. No, I'm we're not making going a mistake. Here. No, we're what I'm saying mistake. is, what what I'm saying is, is the fact that you know these people allowed this to come to a conversation without even reading the legislation that was even proposed. Well, we've I answered mean, this uh, question before, and you can just abstain from answering if you don't want to. I mean, yeah. If you don't like, like a month ago, we had this topic. I remember I mean, well, specifically if they being like, magazine, if question. they pass magazine restrictions as an amendment, uh, aren't we all going to be grandfathered in? So, what's the problem, right? I mean, well, I, here's, here's here's a t- let me tell you one what? thing about the amendments. What's the problem? <laughs> if it, let me just say this right now. If you're worried about if you're worried about the amendments, stop worrying. There are not going to be any amendments added to the bill. The amendments were removed because they were toxic. They're not going to stick the toxic items back on the same bill and try yeah, to vote for it. But isn't that how they did the crime bill? Like in no, 94, they passed that is, the crime no, bill? No, that's not at all. They added additional stuff to the amendment after they had written the official bill. 
You can so always amend saying, a bill, but this is stuff that was already in the bill that got removed because it was toxic. They're not just going to go and stick it right back in. Wait, you're saying that the universal background checks and the and the magazine capacity things are toxic and they no, removed them when they're not well, used? Well, the talking of gone. The background off. checks still there. No. I mean, so to I, me, the assault no. weapons ban was removed, and I believe the high capacity ban has been removed because they were toxic. They are not in the bill that was voted on. Well, so the way I understood it is the high capacity and the universal are the two things that were left standing after all the others, and they are left to be amended to or added to other bills. You can have other stuff amended, but people understand, people make the mistake of thinking that they're just going to add back on the assault weapons ban and stuff. They're not going to. Well, that's what it Feinstein thinks. Can't say add already, on the, no, Feinstein doesn't even think that. She, she doesn't, she doesn't have to just to put that back on. She either. knows it's done. Okay. Because every single senator said, no, we will not vote if this is in the bill. So that's why it had to come out. So that's that's not going to change from then till now. If it goes back in the bill, they will vote no. I mean, well, well, the the two, the they should the vote yes to it. The Republicans should vote yes to amend it in there and then vote no to pass it. It's, the universal background check portion has been watered down so heavily in this bill and it's filled with other stuff like national reciprocity and expanding the definition of the Firearm Protection Act. So really, I don't think the gun control people want it any more than the pro-gun people do. I think this bill is going to die before it ever reaches a floor vote. Well, well it's no, not no, a bill. No, I mean, it's that to me. Amendment is a Toomey amendment to S649. S649, as it stands currently, is it's still Schumer's uh, universal background check bullcrap. The Toomey amendment is, you know, basically waters down all of that. It basically only says, you know, you have to have a background check if it's a private sale at a gun show or if the sale originates through the internet or some publication. So it's still an amendment. It hasn't been added to the bill yet. But still, though, how many private sales? Do not add, do not originate through the internet. Well, the, uh, the vast majority. Yeah, of them do. yeah. I mean, it's it's. Well, know, how can a sale that starts through the internet not go through an FFL right now anyway? If it's in the same state. Well, it's it's rare. No, no. I mean, most every most every private gun I buy that doesn't have an FFL check originates on the internet. I mean, honestly, G well, in the same way in South Carolina. Actually, the way the law reads, you don't even need to do due diligence. Now, me as a responsible citizen, law-abiding citizen. Every private sale I have ever done, I have drawn up my own on word, like that you are not a felon, you do not use drugs, yada, 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 and I make them, and I, all of my private transfers have, have been done with CWP holders, and I have their CWP number, they got a copy of it, I got a copy of it, and I've got them in my safe. Well, I did but one that private is, but that is not, that I found is, that the that is guy not, off, Craig. I'm saying I did one private transfer in which I found the guy off Craigslist. Literally, it was before Craigslist took down the ad. I got to email him, and we met at the parking lot of a local supermarket, and I handed him 250 bucks and got a Winchester yeah. Model 12. I guess if you're talking about local forums like that, then yeah, I still, I, how are they going to enforce that? Well, that, that would ever? still be, that would, under the law, that would still require a background check. I mean, well, look, I understand yeah, that I mean, if they're saying that, that, how are they going to know if it I'll if cover it up this guy's personal information, but you can see here on, on my phone, every time I I sell someone a gun. I take a photo on my phone of their that their of their carry permit. I like living in the country where we don't yeah. have to do that though, and we don't I, have I to don't, do that I now. We don't have to. Everyone in this room is against that. That, say, yeah. no, that isn't. Let's say that that this isn't the law. That's me covering my ass. Yeah. And if you don't like exactly. it, you don't gotta fucking buy my gun. You can move exactly. your ass on down the street. Yeah. Yeah. That, you that's what I'm saying. Right. You got the right to say I don't want to do that, and I got the right to say fuck you. Move along. I'm not selling you a gun. No, exactly. I'm just saying exactly. that it, you know, like I say, that's just that they're they're crazy. Like if it initiated through the internet, there's just literally no way to enforce that. Well, so you either have to enforce all transactions, or you're you're just dreaming if you think that somehow there's going to be like, oh well, we actually started this conversation on a forum, you know, as opposed to you know, we decided to meet up in a parking lot, and then all of all of a sudden we decided to make the transaction now. Well, what it really means is that the government wants something to mail you on. They'll just subpoena your IP to see if you. If that amendment about the internet goes through, you seriously think the government's going to start reading emails to see who bought guns over the internet? The thing though is, the the internet thing is so vague. If I advertise a gun on the internet, then that's initiated on the internet. So it would have to read something like, and I would still vote no for it, but it would have to read something specific like, if the transaction occurs through the internet with no contact between the seller and the buyer, that's different. 
Well, if, the, I, if I started on the yeah. internet, and then and I that's go interstate, meet the guy, though. But yeah, well, I mean, once you're talking in-state, well, no, it then. could be in-state. I, I, I have sold guns to people in Seattle before and mailed it because you can mail it to. So, well, it goes hey. beyond the internet. It's it's written publication, so it, it's also written publication. So if if there's an ad in a newspaper or oh, yeah. something like that, you know, it's, we're talking it's about not that, just the we're internet. Talking about selling it through. Well, no, not only that. If you've ever done right. anything through Arms List or Gun Broker, all of that's done through email. Yeah, well, it's not just. Well, I was thinking Gun Broker when I first said it's going to have to go through an FFL because 99% of the time you buy stuff on Gun Broker or whatever, it's out of state. Well, so yeah. Through an FFL. yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it's, so look, it's covering the intrastate sales, not just interstate sales. Uh, yeah, uh, which is basically what they're really trying to do, probably underneath all this, is just collect more revenue when they think that there's all these untaxed gun transactions going on. There you that go. They can somehow slap a tax on and they're going to get some juicy income from it. But there, no one's like slapped them and said, "Hey, idiots! There's really no way to know about this unless you create some." Now, where are we creating like cyber police that are gonna, you know, search through every forum and then go, "Hey, wait a minute! This guy posted this handgun six times. He didn't reload this at the seventh time, but he got 12 emails between the la the time when that auction ended. Let's go read all 12 of those emails and see if one of them is code for I'm gonna buy that gun in a parking lot." Well, see, you webs are not gonna do a dragnet going through people's email. They're gonna wait to find someone. That don't like, and then they're going to jack them up with that as <laughs> attack. No, 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 no. Well, if they don't do 100%, no. every gun has to have a, a transaction, then I want to know how they're going to be able to tell without reading your email if the, the well, decision to make the sale was done through email or in the parking lot. If they're already, if they're already oh. looking at you, they're going to find everything by warrant. See, that's the problem. Come on, All dude. Right. That's CSI talk. No, 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 real no, no, life. No, no, no. They don't even hardly do fingerprints when people get killed in real life. They don't do all that. Potential problems. The reason I was talking about the, the the reason I do like a bill of sale, let's just call it a bill of sale, okay? Is I I have a friend who's been with the local police department here where I live. He's been there for ten years. I went to high school with him, okay? And he's the one who originally recommended if I do any kind of like arms list, gun broker, whatever, if it's private sale, that I do one of these forms. And the reason that that is is because if a crime is committed with a firearm, okay? And they pull that firearm serial number. Whoever the the next check is done, okay, it's going to come back to that person. So if now, obviously, that might be not not the my like register, records well, are you know, well, now here's the thing, though. If that original owner, they go to that original owner, right? That original owner says, "Oh, well, I sold it to South Carolina Mike, and here's his name and number." Okay, well, then they come to me, and I was like, okay, well, yeah, I traded that firearm to so-and-so. That's why I keep that piece of paper, so that that way I can prove to law enforcement when they come to me, if that, was, if that firearm was used in the commission of a crime, that I am not in possession of that firearm anymore. And that way it's my basically get out of jail free card. Hey, I South know, Carolina, I've never Mike. actually sold a firearm private party. But if I was selling a handgun, I think I'd always consign it through an FFL or do one of those things. Don't let us stop you. It's $50 when you do that. Don't let us stop you, Kipton. You go ahead and eat. Yeah, it's $50, you know, to do that. So You want me You want me to mail you some there, Yankee? I don't know. What is it? No, I mean... It's sliders. $50 is cheap compared to legal bills. No, I mean... Right. I'm Hold on, Brady. You, know, you can no, do that all you want. We're not talking about that. You don't need... We're talking about a theoretical uh, uh, restriction where only guns that are tra that are transferred through uh, uh, initiation on the internet, but not guns that are face to face. That's what we're talking about. The well, fact that you want to do some kind of extra no, 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 gun no, 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 initiation no, no, no. for your sales is great. That's awesome. You can do that all you want. I totally understand why you want to do it. But guess what? We live in a country where you don't have to do that. Exactly. There's no law at all that says you have to do that. And guess what? I, it, let's say that exact same thing happens. You're, you sell a gun to some guy, he sells it to some guy, and it's used in a crime. Let's say that crime is in South Carolina or whatever state you live in. Well, unless you just happen to be in a bad neighborhood and have like so, a ton of coincidences happen, you have to be standing there with like all the right circumstances to be you know, jabbed for that crime. You're going to probably be at home sleeping. And the crime was probably done somewhere where the bad guy was. So oh, right. I can understand exactly. wanting that and trying to make the ATF's life easier. But you don't have to have that. There's no law in this country that says you have to have that. No, and I no, don't want to live I'm in a country where we have to have that. 
No, so I kind of what the, 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 the talk equated. we're having here is why there's a difference between a, a transaction that takes place on the internet as opposed to one that takes place in a parking lot. It's well, no, the reason, the reason is that there's no way that government is going to know when the decision to be to make the transaction was made, either online or in the parking lot. It's you smoke and mirrors. I want to go look. No. Your gun in a parking lot. Okay, great. You just made that initiation on the internet. Now you decide to sell the gun in the parking lot. There's no need to have a transaction. Well, it gets even that's more. So that's why that. That's why that wording, wording is vague, and that's why exactly. I don't like that. It's, it's worthless wording. Well, and as far as, as far as I'm concerned, just to be clear about doing those extra steps, like people get on me all the time about doing those. You're violating someone's those extra rights. Steps. I'm, I'm not violating anybody's to rights to do those steps. That's me being a responsible seller. The way I look at it is, I look at Thank it the you. same way I look at it is, as helmet. I don't get on a fucking motorcycle without a helmet. I see lots of people that do in the states I live in where there's no helmet laws, and I'm like, hey, that's fine. That's their brains on the pavement if they wreck. I don't force them to wear a helmet, but I'm going to wear a helmet, and I'm going to think, yeah, that's a poor decision on their part if they don't, but I'm not going to force them to wear one. All right. Well, but I have a question I'm to South Carolina Mike. Sorry. South Carolina Mike, you were saying worst-case scenario, it gets past the house. You said it did, you don't think it'll get past the house, but if it does... That the way it stands awesome. now, um, the only thing, you know, what we're all scared of, I think, in this in this room is that it'll be very difficult to prove, well, hey, this gun I bought like five years ago, I don't have any proof that I went through a, an FFL with it. I don't have a receipt for it. I don't have a 4473 or whatever. So now I'm, I'm in, I can get in trouble for a gun I got, I bought from my brother or my cousin. And that's the main problem with this law. So if they can figure out a way to... To, to calm our, you know, uneasiness about that. Like, how are the, you know, how can we prove it? You guys were talking earlier about mailing yeah. yourself a notary, you know, public uh, notice and having it stamped and all that stuff. I don't want to go through it at all. No, uh, I, no, no. I, I, but if this law, right if this law passes, you. but like he said, though, if worst case scenario happened and this law passed, I'd be typing that list up fucking tomorrow. And oh, me too. Notarized but I, have list of all, I have a list of everything I have, serial numbers and everything, and I email it to myself. And I know no. that's not like, oh, okay, that won't stand up, but at least I could show five years from now I can show. Well, it's got a email. date and time stamp, so it should exactly. stand up. Look at this email. Well, not only that, but it's another point of YouTube. I mean, I don't know if any of you guys have watched my YouTube channel, but I pretty much show pretty much every firearm I've ever owned. Okay. I can pretty much, if anybody were to come to my house, I can pull up my computer and say, look, I have owned this handgun for X amount of time. Well, yeah, okay? I know not I can do that, that too, but I don't you know, assume not like only everyone that, has that. But, but I, I saw this coming. I mean, I, I, you know, I hate to say this, and I am a conspiracy theorist, and I will admit it, but I, me and my best friend, we saw this way early. I mean, last July, I was ordering bulk 5.56, because I knew this was coming down the pipe, okay, and I, I and and I went through due diligence to make sure that I have documentation. Now I'm not talking about Nick's checks. I'm talking about private bill of sales that I can show to a law enforcement officer that shows that I legally obtained this item from this person. Here is their information, and I have and they signed right here that it was not stolen. They are not a felon. They are not on psychotropic mm -hmm. drugs. And yada yada yada. Now, now I've went through those processes, so I feel as though if I were able to stand in front of a court of law, that I was, I, I, I feel honestly that I would be able to defend myself. However, That's good. Well, here, I mean, here's another aspect of what he's saying, though. I do that. I make sure someone shows me their license, their carry permit. They have to let me take a picture of their carry permit. Blah blah. blah before I sell them private gut. And there have been times in my life where I'm glad I did because I've had people come up. We get the transaction all agreed on, we're ready to change money, and I say, oh, and I need to see your driver's license. And they're like, oh, well, well, you know, I still have my Kentucky driver's license. Is that, you know, but it shouldn't be a big deal. I live here now, though. I, You know, I live here now, and I'm like, I can't sell to you. And this kid was really shady, you know, so I didn't sell to him. Now, what if I had not bothered to go through that extra step of checking his driver's license? He'd have bought exactly. my guy committed a crime with it. I got, I mean, I got all of them. So would you Everybody rather have another bunch of stupid laws that tell us what we can and can't do, or would you rather just have, like, kind of or ATF? Not. Or would you rather have an ATF guy go through gun shows and try to buy guns from people out of state and bust people that are selling guns without due concern to where they're oh, selling them? I, I, I have no problem. I think that the, the latter is the best. No, neither. the, 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 the best one. No, I have no problem. 
to enforce no the problem. laws we got, but I have no, no problem with either. legal authority no. doing enforcing. They the should law. be out there doing what they have to do to enforce what we have. Why don't they do go. it the same way they do with anything else and just do it once or twice, make a big stink about it, and scare all the people that are doing the crap? There's not well, that many people doing they, the crap in the first place. What they need to stop doing is letting these repeat criminals out of jail or prison who are the majority of the crimes that are committed are by repeat offenders, and they need to start enforcing the law and, and not allowing people to go into jail and get bail and commit repeat offending. Well, you get can't bail, be a repeat straw purchase a person because you wouldn't vote. be able to sell them again or buy them again after you became a felon. The okay, problem is well, they don't, I'm going to tell you right now. People say they don't arrest shooting. enough of the straw purchase people. All right. Well, I think, I think if you commit a problem, if you, if, you, if you do a straw purchase for someone... I have got no problem with you being prosecuted to the full extent of the law. You I agree. A criminal with the youth and you say, well, I did it on principle because I don't agree with the law. Don't care. You knew the law. You violated it. Go to jail. Right. So shouldn't I agree. they just be going out and making big, big nuisance about all the couple of people they bust doing that and then actually bust some people doing that instead of the 50,000 people that actually got investigated out of the 700,000 well, people that got denied on Nix or whatever, well, like, suspected for straw. You know, how many successful prosecutions have there been for straw purchase in the last year? It's like the ATF... Well, the how many have they tried we've had, we had, we, You should know that there were several from a couple of gun shows not too long no, ago here actually, in Portland. No. Because I just like looked 50. up. The, I just. I know. I just looked up those stats. Actually, it's 356 failed the Knicks checks within the last year, and 155 of those were actually uh, felons trying to obtain weapons. I we're just saw that in your we're state. Talking, Is that in your state or in the country? We're, that talking, was no, we're in, not talking about that. We're talking about. Country, because it's how only many like people have for the whole history of Nick's. What he was asking is how many people have committed the, the act of a straw purchase and got prosecuted for it. That's we've what I'm had, to. We've that actually happen. had a couple here recently, not too long ago. But here's how di what they had to do: the police are constantly seeing the gangbangers going to the expo center here in Portland, having their girlfriends buy guns for them at gun shows, because their girlfriends have clean rec clean uh, criminal record. Well, what they were doing is they staked that out the tables. They had police officers dressed in plain clothes working the tables. And then they saw these things, you know, the guy come in, guy's girlfriend, three or four gangbangers looking at guns. And then they hand the gun to the girlfriend to buy it. The, you know, the retailer doesn't notice because he's not watching everybody looking at the guns because they're on cables. And uh, she buys it. She leaves. The police follow them. Police pull them over two or three blocks from the expo center. The guy's got the gun in his waistband already. And they they arrest her him for possession of a gun, fire illegal possession, her for a straw purchase. Well, there was a, I read a I read a story in Ohio there about a gun dealer who still has his license, and they they figured out routinely like you know they'd have like some girl come in and she wouldn't know anything about guns, and she'd ask like to buy twenty guns with cash, and they didn't see anything suspicious about this, sir. I mean, I think there's a lot of unscrupulous gun dealers. Is not the majority of crime guns come from like the same? What if you work years? till seven o'clock and you want to buy a gun or twenty of them, and your girlfriend gets off at four o'clock and she can go get them for you? That's so, illegal. Uh, that, that's that is illegal. Yes, that's illegal. I understand it's illegal, but that's why is it automatically a, a some crime if some dumb chick buys a twenty? Because it's a crime. If you want to go get those twenty, get, buy 20 guns. if you want to go buy those twenty guns for yourself, I, that's one thing. But if you want to have someone act as an agent, is it illegal I, because it would be gifted? Because of the nineteen sixty gun control, control act, that's the case. No. Yeah, I agree, but, but that's only technically. I don't agree with you in principle. Okay, at all. but G Webs, you're you're talking about we're talking about different things. I'm talking about if I was a gun store proprietor. Okay, and some girl comes in and she's like, I just want 20 guns. And I'm like, okay, well, what type of gun do you want? A Glock, a SIG? And she's like, I don't know. What's the difference? All the guns. guns. Well, see, because I kind of That's agree the... with that law in principle because I always say a law has to be able to actually stop something or have a good chance of doing what it's intended to do. What is more likely if someone comes in and buys 20 of the same gun? Is it more likely that that person is a collector who wants 20 of the same gun? Maybe they're or going to it, business engraving that kind of thing. Maybe they're going to start building new stuff. Maybe they're going to build gun racks. Maybe they're going to make Maybe gun racks. Maybe they're going to make Maybe gremlins are going to shoot out of my ass in a second, but what's more well, likely? Well, you know how much that guy made in 2004 by taking a bunch of wassers and turning them into lamps? We're not asking. You're being dead. No, I'm using a true thing. That guy bought hundreds of wassers and turns them into lamps. And he's one out of what? Out of all the people that have done multiple purchases for illegal means to ship to Mexico. He's one free how, person in this country who had the right to many, do it. But how many people did that and committed a crime doing that? 
I don't know. Do we have stats on that? As far I as I know, we've I had a mix check yes, since the yes, 90s, it's and it's, it's done second, something like it's 3 the billion second checks, highest way and we have 70,000 people that have been denied out of those many decades. We've had well, a couple of decades, 70,000. We're not talking about people Right, and out of that 70,000, we've had something like 50 that were actually... Not talk, but we're not Followed talking about people that actually felons that were dumb so, enough to go through a NICS check. We're talking about people that went in, mass purchased guns, even though they purchase. were illegal. Not, not, not just a straw purchase, but just mass purchasing, period. Well, I don't think, I don't, I think we can so both US, agree that not very if, many if people go in and legally mass purchase. Exactly. So, exactly. So if someone is coming in and making a mass purchase like that, that is, there is just cause for that to raise a red flag because that is not a common or normal activity. I have a, I have a red flag. flag. I don't there's, care. If they no... want to go knock on that guy's door, that's fine. But I'm talking about it shouldn't be automatically assumed that when someone buys 20 of the same gun that there's criminal intent. You're making the US. mistake of saying that's automatically criminal. It's not automatically criminal. That's what they do. Well, it will they be. Do go, no, they do go knock on your door and say, hey, you can go knock on your 20, door. I know plenty of people that have bought the same bought, guns. Exactly. They can come. It's not a crime if you didn't commit the crime. That's only the crime if you did buy it through as a straw yeah. purchase or for illegal means. Right. And well, all I'm trying to get at that that is that if, if you look at the numbers FFL from the dealers, FBI and the if I were the yeah. employee at the gun shop. Well, give me a second scrolls. to say what I'm saying, dude. Come on. Well, you keep I'm saying if you off. look at the actual numbers, it's seventy it's out of the three thirty billion or three billion checks they've done since Nix has existed. They brag about this on the ATF website. Just go look. Then there's 70,000 people have come up with a denied, and out of that, like 50 have been prosecuted. All I'm suggesting is why don't they prosecute the people that this NICS is supposedly stopping? Because How many of the people that stops is because people that don't understand that, that they had a misdemeanor somewhere or another, and it gets removed. See, and, yeah, everyone and then everyone it's worthless. Fails. Everyone who fails a NICS check is not necessarily a criminal. They get exactly. false reports. But we're not talking about failing a NICS check. We're talking about passing a NICS check, committing a crime by straw purchasing a bunch of weapons for someone. You try to portray that like that's a normal occurrence. My girlfriend went in and bought me a hundred No, guns. I'm trying that's to say that that's almost in, that it's never prosecuted. And that how can hey. they know if it's a normal occurrence or not if it's not prosecuted? It is that, that You're is asking how many times does a criminal do it? APF, they don't know. That is, that is the number two way criminals get gun and the number two way that they and that's one of the yeah, number see, one that ways that people definitely seems like it differs with the numbers so, if you go to the ATF website and look at what they brag about you're denied Nick. by Nix and caught in a crime that passed Nix. So this is, have, these are people that passed their Nix checks and committed a crime beyond that. Nix I've checks have nothing to do with that. I have a I, I wanted to add something okay. too before your question. So we're bringing it back to South Carolina, Mike. The bill as it stands right now, it's, already, it, it's just what we were just discussing. It sounds almost impossible for them to prosecute uh, people for this universal background checks. It just sounds impossible because you can say, I bought the gun five years ago, I bought it like two years ago, one year ago, whatever. So basically what it is is just making it very difficult, as difficult as possible, as difficult as they can get it, for us to sell a gun to our brother or our cousin. Oh. And, and basically, listen to me, and basically what they're trying, I've heard politicians say this, I don't know if it was an ATF agent on the television, but was saying, this will be even good for our FFLs because they'll get, the, they'll get $25 from the seller and $25 from the buyer and ha look how yep. great that'll be. There'll be yep. a line, look at the gun stores now. We can't, I can't even get to the counter to buy like, you know, a magazine or something. Like, imagine yeah. if everybody who was selling their gun to a brother or a cousin had to go to a gun store. It, it would be a nightmare, but I'm just saying, if, so no, worst case scenario, yet. no, no, I'm, well, I'm glad you brought of, this up. There are a lot of FFLs who would love to see it, because, I mean, who wouldn't Absolutely. want a business where you had a line out the door every day where you were making 50 bucks every time you said oh. next? Let me tell no, you something, I, if this thing gets I passed, I want to apply, I want an application to be an FFL. If this thing does get passed, yeah, it's going to be but, a cash cow. I mean, it's going to be like everybody has to come to me but, for their uh, transfers. Uh, to answer your question, I'm going to tell you right now. I was in the biggest firearms dealer in South Carolina today, Palmetto State Arms. I go there every weekend. I have been there every weekend for several months, okay? And I talked to a buddy of mine that works there, and we're on a first-name basis, and he has already told me flat out, okay, right now, as for a transfer, it is $25. If they pass 
an upgraded background check. They have already planned on upping their transfer fees to fifty dollars. Of course, well, they, they might not to be able to do that because higher... under that, under oh, these, under say. the under the regulations, the the federal government would set a maximum charge. So okay. it would be but dependent still, upon no, what the federal government. No it doesn't even matter. They would need to hire more yeah, employees. They already say that that would be illegal. They cannot instate a maximum charge. But there's only so many people doing it. How much paperwork that's going to take? Gun shops aren't going to say fifty dollars. They're going to say no. You're gonna to have to get little FF, You're gonna get little guys popping up that are gonna be like these uh, accountants and stuff. It's gonna be like drive up FFLs, like the coffee shops. You're yeah, they're not gonna do guns. They they're just gonna do paperwork, and it'll be some sort yep. of like bar absolutely or something or another. There's yeah, there'll be a lot of money. My area and because a lot of people are saying like, oh, that's horrible. FFL would raise his price to fifty dollars. Well, if he's gonna be gonna serving happen. his customers, he's gonna to have to. They just well, spend so I mean, much time doing FFL paperwork, he's going to lose out on No, a regular things, gun shop so. won't be able to do it. Yeah. Not you won't even need to be a gun shop. I'm going to tell you right now, I've already investigated at getting an FFL just because that way I wanted to get deals on more guns. And, and, and here in South Carolina, I don't know about any other states, the only thing I have to do out of my residence is prove that I actually have a business in firearms. Well, if I offer a gun cleaning service, that is enough for me, all I have to do is offer a twenty-five-dollar gun cleaning service and show that that's what I charge for a gun cleaning. I suggest service. you do a little and bit then, more research. They don't like people that just get FFLs for their collections, and they especially well, uh, they obviously, I'm not gonna, I'm not collection. gonna. I mean, I'm not gonna suggest the fact that the only reason I'm getting an FFL is for my collection, but I'm going to advertise that the fact that I own a gun cleaning. No, I'm suggesting business. you do more research. I believe that they require you have an income coming in that's substantial enough to meet it, the requirement. I've known plenty I of people that have to ditch their FFL. I'm not familiar with this, but I think it's six sales a year. Or something well, I like know that. people that ditched their FFL because it was too much of a pain to keep the business yeah. going. But if but if it came to where you could charge fifty dollars per transfer, exactly, that's going to change the ball game completely. And you could, you could do exist yeah, just to do that. And they're going to have, and have people with yeah. uh, you know the uh, non-transferable. Uh, six hundred dollar eight, you know, full auto eight keys floating around all over because every third person is going to be an FFL. So the moral of the story, I think, is that they know that they can't enforce this. It's just to bust our balls. Everyone in here is a law-abiding citizen, and guess what? We're all going to be online, <laughs> waiting so for transferring it of something to our brother or cousin or whatever. Like I said, it's practice. actually way more nefarious than that because it is something that's not. Not even meant to be enforced on everybody. Well, it is is what they call a pocket law, where when they want to get you for something, they've got it in their pocket that they can always use that if they don't have anything else on you. Yeah, but a lot it, of it, 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 it might not be intentional, but they're going to cause chaos in the industry. Well, I think it's intentional. I, mean, you, I think they definitely want this oh, law in absolutely. their pocket. That if they like, well, there's this. We've been even after we've been not liking what this guy's been saying for a long time, but we've never had anything we can pin on him. Let's go in and check out his collection and see if he's got a gun he can't prove that he bought after. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. and don't even think they're not going to test your kids when you take your kid to the doctor and they ask you. <laughs> don't don't even think the doctor's not going to ask your kid, oh, you you feel uncomfortable? Oh, little Tommy, does your dad own a gun? I think they does already dad, do that. Does yeah, your dad, dad that, clean right? his gun after he drinks a beer? Mm -hmm. I'm saying that right now. <laughs> The thing that I don't understand is if straw pur purchases is already illegal, why are they saying that they need to make a law to make straw purchases illegal? I, I, that well, is the argument I don't that's understand. That's what I'm saying. They want to make another law, and everybody's down with that. I mean, it's already uh, illegal. Why, 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 why is there a bipartisan movement That was Yankee's video. Now. We already have laws on everything. Like that was bunch yeah. of, if you watch the video that I put up last Last night, which every one of you motherfuckers better if you came in my room. <laughs> <laughs> there should be no prerequisites. Mother, what? It, it, it's very clear, I state. It's like, oh, they state that, you know, here, let's talk about the real ways guns get in the hands of criminals. Well, that's already illegal. Well, that's already illegal. And that's already illegal. So why would we create another law that only targets less than 1% of the way guns get in the hands of criminals and think that's going to solve the problem? Because the well, biggest I'm just problem saying, is to answer your question is the harder. fact that none of the people that are debating this have anywhere near a quarter of the gun knowledge that any of us in this room have. Well, I guess my question, you know, they're talking about this trafficking law, you know, the making this tra trafficking of guns illegal, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, what is the purpose of that law? What does it do that is it's already not already illegal? illegal? All it's basically, what they're saying is, let's make a law that states we can enforce the law that already exists. <laughs> We're going to make it more illegal. Or, is, or are they just basically doing...
It's giving them a chess piece. They're, they're making the sale between two private individuals trafficking. They're able oh, to take another no, no, thing. That, that's, that no, that's not, 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 the, not the background check portion of it. The, the, the other portion of the amendment where they're talking about the, you know, the straw per purchase, you know, they're actually you know, putting in the language, they're adding something in it that says, okay, it's, it'll be illegal to commit a straw purchase. It's like, well, why do it's you need to put illegal. that in? It's already yeah, illegal. Well, the thing with that law is that there, it actually doesn't say directly in federal law straw purchase is illegal. The theory they use is, well, you lie oh. on the 24 no, 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 It does whoa, whoa, very whoa. clearly say straw no, purchases yeah, are exactly. illegal. It even defines what a straw purchase is. Yeah, Go I'll ahead. tell you right now. In South Carolina, straw purchasing is illegal. I actually saw it almost trying country. to be performed so. several weeks ago. And I'm telling you right now, straw purchasing is illegal as defined. Well, you didn't let me finish. Well, you just then, said straw purchase isn't illegal, and it's not, yes, the straw purchase is illegal. Well, I'm not saying it's not illegal. I'm saying the theory they use at it is they say you lie on the 4473 form. You've committed um, perjury on the form because the federal law only says to conceal the identity of who purchases the firearm, and then they get straw purchase through their wording on the form. I'm not saying it isn't illegal. I'm saying it's illegal. illegal. <laughs> I'm saying that the wording on it makes it difficult for well, It's like saying possible. murder is only illegal because the person that you shot dies. It's still illegal. If you are buying that firearm for any other person other than yourself, then you are straw purchasing and you are breaking the law. Unless you're giving oh, it to them as a gift. gift. I guess is the question is, is does does is there an actual federal statute that specifically says straw purchase, or are there are there you know? Yes, there are statutes that say straw purchase and okay. go on to define the term straw purchase as to what it means. And let's take so, this chance right here to clear up some misconceptions for people what they have about straw purchases. Two of them I'm going to mention right off the bat. A lot of people say what's well, not a straw purchase if the person that you're buying if you're that you're buying the gun for. Is if you're actually acting as an agent for someone, as long as they can legally possess it. No, it is still yeah. a straw purchase, even right. if they can legally possess it. If you're acting for their agent as their agent, it is illegal. Uh, another one is people say, well, you can't buy a gun and give someone as a gift. If you are not receiving anything for the gun, you are not acting as their agent to purchase the gun, and it is truly a gift that is legal. You can do that. Well, I guess my I'm not I'm not bringing this up to argue about straw purchase. I guess my point I'm trying to. Wonder is oh yeah you are we are these po no 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 I I, I know what a straw purchase is let me troublemaker <laughs> no the, is these politicians I think is are they just making an argument for the people who don't know that it's already illegal just so they can hold this yes. Trump card and say <laughs> way, hey look what we're doing yes they are yes in they way, are it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. chest yeah. thumping yes. it's chest thumping but it's it goes beyond that it's nefarious because these people who write these laws. Are not stupid. They have 15 lawyers going over every bill before they write it, and they know, hey, this little loophole here gives us this little thing in our pocket that we can use against, you know, Joe Blow when we he gets on our wrong side later. And all it has to do is give them just cause to get involved in your business. It doesn't matter if you're right or if you could even win. Even if a lot of these people will say, well, well let them take me to court. I can beat them in court. Well, great, you can beat them in court. Three hundred thousand dollars later, and, yeah. six months and you've lost New York Safe Act. New York Safe Act, prime example. They're already confiscating guns from wrong individuals in New York State right now. Uh, people that are on psychotropic drugs or have been within the last five years. That's in the Safe Act that New York passed right now. Did, did I, yeah, I haven't read the Safe Act, but isn't is there a language that says they have to have been? You know what is it committed through due, well, there's you know, no way due these process even, and all that There's stuff. no way these people should even be knowing this. These it, records are supposed to be private and not open yeah, to the government. Exactly. So where's the New York has a long this storied history of violating doctor-patient privacy. Yeah. yeah well, this yeah. is what this is. This is what my wife does. My wife called this before I did because this is what she does in her work. She's HR, and she said it's a direct violation of HIPAA. Number one. You're breaking all kinds of health and personal information laws according to HIPAA. And then on top of that, within any anywhere within a five-year period, if you were ever prescribed anything which falls under the guidelines of their SAFE Act, okay, which, by the way, which I may say that Benadryl, okay, Benadryl, if you've ever been prescribed Benadryl, okay, has multifaceted uses. Benadryl uses. at the drugstore the counter. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And you know what? If you look up Benadryl, guess what? It falls under the Safe Act in New York. Uh, New York's dumb. <laughs> Hence why I'll never live there.
the kingdom of Bloombergia. Ooh, Ooh, I like that. New York is used that. to serve the big wealthy and the rich corporations. It's like Singapore. They claim that they're all big pro-business and pro-freedom all stuff. They're pro-freedom if you got cash. If you're poor, you do not have any freedom in those. Well, there's definitely something to say that, you know, it disproportionately affects, you know, people who are of lower income, and I kind of wonder if there's a constitutionality issue as far as that goes in and of itself. Of course well, it people does. Don't look at, look at the so people with mortgages and insurance in payments and mm -hmm. jobs and, and pensions are free, but people that don't, that can just wander and do what they want, they're not Donald, free. Donald Trump That's has a license to a pistol in New York City. Oh, listen, my, my, oh, I had another uh, point was that we're, we're about to get sold out by, you know, gun people who are like, oh, I'm a Republican, you know, Republicans this and that. We're about to get sold out. And when we do, their excuse is going to be, we got national reciprocity. <laughs> if you have a permit from Georgia, you can carry in Florida. Like, like they think we're that stupid. Because you know California and New York is going to get an exemption, and Connecticut, they're going to do some sort of way to like, oh, we have national reciprocity now, except for California, except for New York, except for Massachusetts. Except for any state where someone's been shot in the last yeah. well, for I don't, I don't except think except the federal government has yeah, authority to control that anyway, so I mean, that shouldn't be a national reciprocity. You've got to understand what reciprocity is going to mean, too. Well, I actually yeah. think yeah. there should be. I want to address that issue, that the federal government doesn't have the right to enforce the, se the Second Amendment throughout the states. I think they do have the right to enforce Especially the Especially in the wake of McDonald's. Throughout the state. So they should be able, the federal government, that should be exactly under their powers to tell states you will not infringe upon a person's right to keep and bear arms. So if they have a permit, if they are licensed by mm -hmm. their state to carry a gun, you cannot stop them from carrying a gun. Just be like, it's like they, they, one state can't tell me my marriage license is only good in Washington. It's not good in Nevada, and make me have to get another one. Well, they, 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 they already do that. I'm just, they I already just do think that. that New York is going to get to. They're going to get a you know an exemption, or like New York, New York, at least New York City, California, no Los exemptions. Angeles. I don't know, like city well, exemptions. They're going to get an exemption. But what they're going to do is it's going to be like when Leosa came out, the law that says police officers can carry in every state. Immediately after that law passed, New York started arresting off-duty police officers in Pennsylvania and Delaware and tried to jack them up before federal courts smacked them down. But they'll put you through the ringer and make you spend a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars on Mr. Goldstein, Esquire, to get you out of jail. Yeah, but I've talked to several law enforcement officers, and they're able to, uh, as long as they call in advance, let the local PD know where they're going. And they make arrangements with them. They usually, you know, as long as they call them, give them a heads up. I'm going to be in town, blah blah. And they, you know, they let their officers they aware. But they shouldn't have to do that. Yeah, they shouldn't yeah, have, they shouldn't to, have do to do that. that. It, it, it's more of a of a, a courtesy. Just let them know that, you know, I'm more in. More of a fuck know. New York. Well, there you go. Well, I'm not talking about New York. I'm talking general. If you're going to travel and you want to carry your piece on you, and you're a cop. Yeah, um, it's like those stupid just, laws where you get an extra charge if you commit a crime yeah, because yeah, you didn't. Yeah. And now you're going to come on a crime when you came into the town? Yeah, I've got, I've got an email here from someone uh, asking a question in the chat we can address real quick before we leave here in like seven minutes. We've got like seven minutes left. Uh, they want to talk about concealed carry under the age of 21 or open carry under the age of 21. I don't know of any states right now that allow it. Does anybody know of any states that allow no, concealed carry um, under no. the stage of 20, Idaho, age of 21? Idaho allows open carry under the age of 21. So does Montana. And I believe concealed Oregon carry, does. I don't think anyone. No, you no, you can't in Oregon. You will be. No, no, you cannot carry concealed carry under twenty-one. They, uh, they just made Montana. it. Montana, Montana yeah. will issue you a concealed carry license at age eighteen. You can look up Montana DOJ's website. They say that right up there. No, 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 no. You cannot even leave. Oh, you, you can't even leave. Well, pan gun you can carry because that's yeah. Okay, eighteen. I thought we were saying under 18 for a second there. But I was no. saying you'll issue a license starting at age 18. Yeah. Now, in Montana, yeah. the law, in Montana, Montana law says that you can start carrying a pistol on you at 14. Federal law says otherwise. No, the federal so law says under, otherwise. There's a federal law that says you have to be at least 18. But, you know, I suppose if you're willing to take the chance that the feds are never going to bother to deal with you unless you commit a trouble, you can... Now, for, for what it's worth, I'm on the Nebraska's uh, State Patrol website, their FAQ, and it says the following states have standards equal to or greater than the standards contained in Nebraska statute, but only to the extent the permit holder in that state is 21 years of age or older. Mm -hmm. California, Maine, Montana, North Dakota with a Class 2 permit, and Texas. So 
I kind of does that. Does that mean that in those states that they can get permits at eighteen? Then does that I get, possibly? No, no, no. no. We gotta stand like you mentioned in North Dakota class two permit. North Dakota issues two classes of permits: a class one and a class two. A class two is for reciprocity because they have very strict standards and will issue that to people over twenty one who completed a class. And a class one permit is basically anyone who's at least eighteen. So that's the differential there on that. Okay, so. But read what you read that statute again. Well, I was just on the FAQ. I just said, you know, the 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 following states have standards equal to or greater than the standards contained in Nebraska statute, but only okay. to the extent the permit holder in that state is 21 years of age or older. Okay. What that means is that the state of Nebraska chooses to recognize those states because those states have similar issuance criteria for licenses. Well, I, under, I understand that, but as I'm, I'm, I'm referring to is basically... It's unique that they would mention an age if it was universal. Yeah, I mean, the point yeah. I'm saying is obviously yeah. it, the possibility is, you know, these states allow concealed carry for young, younger than 21, but Nebraska will only recognize those concealed carry permits if they're 21 or older, I guess is kind of the way it sounds to me. So it sounds um, like North Dakota allows for 18-year-olds. Does Texas, Montana, Maine, or California allow for 18-year-olds? No, California no. does not. No. In Texas, okay. you, you can own a, a handgun, but you can't buy one. Well, in can't Washington... Can't even carry it half the time. Well, in Washington, you can carry a handgun uh, under the age of 21 if you meet some certain limited exceptions. Like, I can carry a handgun being 20 while I'm hiking or doing something like that. Can you get a concealed carry permit at 21? No, I cannot. Okay. No, not in this concealed. state. I know that's why I'm starting to find mm. a uh, state that allows you to conceal carry under 21 other than those couple, and I'm not finding many. This is well, why I moved to a free state. OpenCarry.org <laughs> open has an age map that shows the minimum ages for... I can look this up right now. I don't here. want to open I want to say conceal because again, this question was addressed yeah. was addressed as concealed. So yeah. well, I think you said open or concealed. Well, I'll leave it here. Mm -hmm. So Yankee Eggs for invite. I'm gonna prep a uh, after chat if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, hey, is an, F is an SKS a good rifle? Yeah, I don't see why not. Only if it's a Norinco. Only okay. if it's a Norinco. I saw one in the shop today for uh, for three ninety nine. I don't know if it was a Norinco. But I'm telling you right still? now, my buddy's got a Norinco, and I thought he actually, of my complacency, would have assumed, which I did, that he knew how to clean it. His idea of cleaning it was basically running a bore brush down the barrel, and that was it. Uh, I actually got a chance to look at it, and I have known this guy for 10 years. Okay, the first time I saw this rifle was 10 years ago, and his idea of cleaning the rifle was running a bore brush down the barrel. He has never taken it mm. apart. Mm. Does it, it have about, a detachable mag? I, I know a lot about guns, but not about... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yes. You're kidding it's me, fixed, right? isn't it? It's fixed. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no. It actually, it's a detachable magazine. Um, but I'm telling you, like, I the could not magazine. even get... It's not designed I, could, I could not even get oh, okay. the... the, uh, re the the receiver cover to come off. Like I couldn't even get it to come off. It's hard it, to see it. But it's hard you to know see what? That, uh... But you know what? It fires, and it and it, it still fires today. And uh, you know, so if anything, if anybody's gonna say SKS, I'm gonna say get a Noriko, because at least the uh, Chinese got the SKS right. And so on a positive note, every store that I went to today, I went to um, three stores. Every single one had Magpul mags. They were all under thirty bucks, and uh, they had good tons of them. My order from Brownell still hasn't. Another sold. good good thing. One store I went to had mm -hmm. like at least six or seven um, Colt M4 styles, sixty nine twenties, and the, the new one like the sixty nine hundred, and they had um an, one store had a Noveski, and they weren't price gouging. They were like thirteen fourteen hundred bucks. So I mean, you know, there's still some time to buy some stuff. Yeah, the only P mag, the only P mag that I will say, you're not going to get them with a dust cover here in South Carolina. You're going to get what they call the uh, Gen Twos. Right. They mm -hmm. uh, they are in the package. You're not going to get a dust cover, but they are selling them for seventeen ninety nine here in South Carolina. You can get them all day long. You should buy I them. I used to get Gen Twos with dust covers. It's yeah, they changed. Like it sometimes now. They, they weren't. Made, sometimes they made it with, and sometimes they didn't. Like later on, they didn't. 
So yeah. if now they make a Gen three and a Gen two. They used to just be called D Max. Yeah. Mm. The Gen two costs a little well, bit less. Yeah, now the, now the style is is sufficiently different enough for them to care. So how much time so, do we have before this? We have so about one minute. So probably about <laughs> time for everybody to say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.